What up, my people? Guess what? This is a night stream. What? We never do night streams around here. But hey, the BMW's down. I've been trying to figure out ways how to, you know, stay in touch with everybody. And plus, it'll be good content. Like I said, I've dropped about two, three videos a day <laughs> since my BMW's been down. But hope you guys are out there this Friday night, December the 1st, making some real money. If you're in Phoenix, make sure you get downtown. Duh. What do we got? First Fridays downtown. First Fridays. Logan Block, what's good? William Silver Fox, my man. Greg. Hey, Logan, you out driving right now? You out doing deliveries out in Vegas right now? What, man? Because like I said, it's a lot of times we don't have night streams, man. What up for you, my man? Happy December the 1st. Let's go out and get this money. Oh, he's here. Yeah, I'm out here making this money right now. Dom, what's good? What's good? Stand the man. Hey, man, like I said, we don't get night streams as night drivers because I'm I'm a night driver. So now that I'm, my BMW's down, I'm actually like, hey, I can actually be out and do some live streams and check on everybody tonight. Make sure people are out making money. Oh, Greg, here at the airport. Which airport you at, man? Oh, traveling man. You guys got snow up there in New York or what? Because I've been watching some of the news out there. Man, it is crazy, crazy. JJ said, yo, Jeff, it's still kind of slow. Scott Harbor. I was just up there earlier because I had to do a private ride. So I'm from Chandler downtown. And then I swung through the airport, go use the bathroom, hang out, look on the board. I always look on the board when I get to the airport. They got this uh, black Mercury. Uh, what, I think it's an MTK. It's an MTK on their little black SUV. They want like 7700 bucks for. So I was like, man, I be looking at stuff like that, man. Oh, the Jeep's running perfect, man. It's running. I put that... Uh, yeah, you saw that? Yeah, man, that's a nice little car. I looked it up online, man. It's got some miles on it and everything, but I don't mind that. I, I was thinking about giving that guy a call to kind of look it over or whatever. I was like, hmm, I always go check out that board up at the airport because somebody, I shot, I shot it over to my man, Chad, and I told him, hey, man, here's the MTK right here, or MKT. Get a guy calling. He's got, you know, Chad's like, oh, man, I don't know about that, man. I like, whatever, I might call his ass myself. <laughs> no, but the Jeep's running fine, Louise, man. I had a... um. I had to put an alternator in. So I'm, I was driving like yesterday and I heard it whining. I don't know what the deal was. So when I got home, I let the engine cool off. I popped the alternator out. We got a you know 24 hour auto zone. And then we got a um one was open till midnight. It was like 11 o'clock. And I got the alternator out, ran it up to the auto zone, had them test it. As soon as they put it on the tester, I heard it like I heard it grinding. So the barons went out. So I was like, how much y'all got one for? He was like, yeah, something like 270 or something weird like that, like 270. And I was like, okay. Or no, it was like 217. I was like, okay. I said, you know what? Check the system to see if I didn't, um, see, to see if I don't have a warranty on this. Because I got it from AutoZone. He raises, oh, yeah, this is warranted if you want another one. I just put it on in like June of 2020. So I guess it had like a limited lifetime warranty. So I got a free alternator last night. Got home, put that shit on the Jeep. Everything's fine. <laughs> man, man, man. Coming from a black young man. I know you coming out tonight, Greg, man. The BMW still down, still down, man. And I don't have the Jeep on the platform. I use the Jeep just for private rides. And they were so cool, man. So I picked this, this lady. She hit me up. She was like, hey, come. Uh, it's my boyfriend's birthday. I want to surprise him. Come pick us up. Now, they've never been in a Jeep. They were only in a BMW. That's where I gave him my car at. So I went to go pick him up. And he came walking out. He had no idea it was my Jeep because he's never seen the Jeep. She knew it was because she the one who set set the ride up. So they come walking out the house and he was like, yeah, yeah. They opened the back door. He was like, oh, Jesus, what's up, man? I said, what's good, brother? Happy birthday. He was like, man, this is crazy. She didn't tell me it was you. She just said she already got us a ride coming. <laughs> I was like, yeah, dog. And I got the Jeep. And she he was like, oh, this is sick. And he's the rider a long time ago. He put me on to Don Tolliver. So, Because he was like, yeah, man, this is Don Tolliver, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, cool. So I've been listening to him for like a year at least, easily a good year. But he was like, yeah, so we played Don Tolliver the whole ride. He was like, man, this Jeep bad as a motherfucker. And the system is loud in the Jeep. And it's got the big overhead speakers hanging in the back, the big boat speakers hanging in the back. He was like, man, this shit's so loud, it's making my head hurt. <laughs> I was like, I know it, man, this shit gets loud. So I couldn't turn. We turned it to like level five. Usually I can go up to like level seven. I went to level five. That was enough. That shit was banging. It was hitting. So we played Don Tyler for his birthday all the way downtown Phoenix. You know, when they got there, it was cool. And like I said, these are these are my people. You know what I'm saying? They had my number for a long time. They never requested a private ride from me. And I don't for my people that I trust that I know like that. 
I didn't set a rate for them. You know, we got downtown, you know, we had a good time and everything. I never set a rate. And she was like, okay, so what do we owe you? I was like, I don't know, like 40 bucks. I'm down here, 40 bucks. She was like, okay, I'll Venmo you. I was like, all right, bet. So she got out the car. They went, and it was from Chandler all the way to downtown. So they got out the car. They doing this. I'm driving. Then I got down to the airport, Greg. I was at the airport, and I went to the bathroom, looked at the board, seen the cars and everything still up there. A Venmo came through, 100 bucks. I was like, what? So you know I was on that show. I was texting. I was like, I, hey, thank you guys so much, so much. Love y'all. Appreciate that energy. Damn, I appreciate Because I've been down, dude. My car's been apart for like almost a week. They're taking forever to ship me this part. I ain't made no fucking money. I got to pay for this car. I still owe $30,000 on the fucking car. <laughs> and I'm like, if I don't drive this car, how am I going to pay for this car? I still owe 30 Gs on this motherfucker. Plus, I got to pay the mortgage on this house. I'm like, shit. Man, so I was like, I'm I'm happy as hell. Something's come up. I'm like, thank you so much. Because it's shit like that, man. We're drivers. This is what we do for a living. And I tell motherfuckers, man, we not giving up. What up, Bighorn Kev, my man? And I tell people, we not giving up, man. We not giving up. And I know the apps are giving up on us. The apps don't want to even pay the people in, in Minnesota right now. They're arguing. I saw on the professor's channel, you know, and I, I read it on the thing, and I didn't know what was going on. And so I saw it on the channel. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, this motherfucker right here, the people in Minnesota are, are really fighting. And Uber and Lyft to myself, well, we're going to pull out of Minnesota if you guys want these requirements, which makes me think Uber and Lyft are in fucking bed together. Because if, if Lyft was like, hey, man, if Uber leaves, we can have all this damn market share. That's what I would think. If Uber left, Lyft can have all the market share. If Lyft left, Uber can have all the market share. Now, both of these motherfuckers are like, well, we're going to leave. So y'all in bed together or something? What the fuck? Y'all gonna leave the party? If y'all, if we don't get what we want, y'all gonna leave the party. That's fucked up. That's all James is. Hey, what's the monthly payment on a Beamer? I think it's around about 670. I don't know. It's about, but it, it fluctuates with me because some months when I have a really good month, I'll send them like a grand because that's how I paid off my Jeep. I took out a 60 month loan on my Jeep, but it I paid it off in 24 months because I was sending way more than what the note was. I didn't care about the note. I care about the fact that my interest rate is like 4%. <laughs> That's all I cared about. I didn't give a shit about, you know, what's your what's your uh, note? I don't care. What's my interest rate? Because every payment I make has to go toward the principal. If your interest rate is too high, every payment you make is going towards that damn interest. So always focus on your interest rate. Don't worry. Get the rate. Get the get the payment later. Don't worry about the payment. You worry about the interest rate. Because because like I said, I'll send a thousand dollars a month for the Jeep. I was spend like two G's a month. I think the note was like three hundred. I was spending like two G's a month on a Jeep just to get it out the way. But that's back when COVID first started. I bought the Jeep in 2019, like September 2019. I started driving Uber December 2019. And all of 2020 was all that crazy money coming through. $2,000 a week was easy. That shit was easy. $2,200 a week, $1,700 a week. Shit was crazy. So I was paying two G's a month. And that's how I paid off my Jeep in 24 months instead of 60 months. I was making $2,000 a week. I could work one week, send that shit to pay the Jeep, and it was no big deal. But with this shit, I can't do it, man, because it's so fucking slow. I'm like, man, I'll pay a grand one month. The next month, the note will be like, instead of it being $672, it'll be like $320. So I'll send them $600. And then the next note will be like, instead of you know $672, it'll be like you know $505. So I'll send them like $600, and it just kind of fluctuates because they're trying to keep it at that $670 rate. But I always send more than what they asked for. So the payment's lower. Yeah, man. Pandemic money was money. Cake. JTB was good. Yeah, Louise, man. Like I said, I was I was trying to kill it back then. When I was getting all the money in, I was taking care of nothing but expenses. That's it. Paying off expenses, getting rid of debt, knocking shit out like crazy. Because that's what you do with this money. I tell people, as drivers, we're not balling. You ain't going to catch us in no motherfucking club getting turned up behind no VIP tables and shit like that. We paying off like whole goddamn daycare bills. We saying, okay, how much is daycare a month? All right, this month, I'm going to pay three months in advance. That's what some of these women are doing. How much is daycare? Okay, this is my lunch plan. Okay, I'm going to buy my kids six months lunch out. That's what we doing with this money. And I tell a lot of people, if, if you know, I tell these riders too, drivers, I know we got some nice cars and stuff like that, and we kind of dress nice. We do it for the job. But don't think we're rich. We're very far from rich. We got more debt than the average person has. Plus, we got more expenses. And most of us are farther upside down in our cars because I got a 2019 BMW that's only four years old. So it should have about 60,000 miles on it at the high level. It should have 60,000 miles on it. 
I've got 102,000 on it. So I'm 42,000 miles more than what I should be at. If I go trade this motherfucker in, I got to come up with 15,000 to kill the negative equity plus the depreciation. I got to come up with 15 because they can't sell that BMW at no dealership for what they can sell a, a 2019 that's only got 46,000 miles on it. That's only got 52,000 miles on it. I've got 102,000. So Uber and Lyft have to pay us and compensate us for the depreciation. We're really getting eaten up out here. We're getting eaten up because this debt's killing us. Depreciation is killing us. A lot of expenses and repairs are killing us. A lot of shit's killing us. So no, I wouldn't trade it for a Cadillac. No, I already got a Cadillac already, man. I love my big 6.0 Vortec. I got it sitting outside. I, dro I drove that last night to the auto zone. Because my Jeep was down, my Beamer's down. <laughs> I'm like, everything's down around here. What the fuck? <laughs> Luckily, I got multiple cars, man. I fucking just jumped in the caddy and drove up the auto zone. That's why people are like, man, why you got so many cars? I'm like, because I'm a mechanic. I take my shit apart just for the fuck of it sometimes. Like, shit, man, you got to, if, if something's breaking, I'm going to take it apart right there on the spot. A lot of people was telling me, well, because when my, BM, my BMW was leaking and I said something about the leak on YouTube. And I think I said it on IG, but it's been leaking for about two and a half, three weeks. And when you got a coolant leak in a, in a small engine like that, it leaks fast. You don't have to have a lot to leak out for you to get air bubbles and air gaps in there. And that's how you end up overheating that engine too fast. So when it's like a little puddle up under the car, that's a lot for that size car. Cause as you're driving it, it's also leaking in the street. So you're coming on the highway, it's leaking the whole time. You're going up and down ramps, it's leaking the whole time. So a lot of times you see there and you see this little puddle up on your car, that could have been all that was left in the area that could have leaked because you just leaked out shit the whole time you've been driving. So what up, Simon, my man? Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you. So I had this little cooling jug in the back of the, the trunk of the BMW for the past couple of weeks. So I would do a few clients, drive around, whatever, sit in the parking lot. And while I'm scouting rides, I'd kind of take the radiator cap, let the air out some, open it. And sure enough, you'd see it below the level again, fill it back up. So I was doing that for the past couple of weeks with my car just to protect the engine. But after a while, you get tired of doing that shit. And you don't want to do that because sometimes you're driving and you're not getting heat because it has to go through the heater core. And because my car wasn't producing enough coolant to get that heat to come through the heater core, people be like, oh, man, it's kind of chilly in here, man. Can you turn on the heat? We turn on the heat. It would only last like about maybe a couple of minutes. Then it start blowing cool air out because the coolant's like leaking as we're driving. So you don't want to drive a nice car like that. No heat. End up blowing up the fucking engine and everything like that. When I'm thinking I, I got money to replace the engine, but I'm doing everything I could do not to replace that engine. Because I know at about 250, 300, 400,000, I'm gonna have to replace that engine. That money is my engine money. That it's gotta be replaced. You can't use the engine for infinity. It's gonna blow. It's gonna have to be replaced. So I had to tear the car apart, get the thermostat out. Sure enough, I saw the leak and everything else like that. But that's the point. What I tell people in rideshare, man, we're we're not there yet. We're not rich. We don't have enough money to say, hey, I'm retiring right now. We still got loans on cars. We still got rents and mortgage. We got a lot of shit to pay. And we've got to keep coming out there, driving every night, making profits. Because the day will come when that car won't drive. I've been out of work for a week, a week, right after Thanksgiving. I said, let me hurry up and stop this shit before I blow this engine. So the private route was all I did. Yeah, small leaks can turn into big leaks. And then the thing about the small leaks, what a lot of people don't realize is that these leaks will start eating away at the, because the heat is generating. You'll start eating away at the, the hoses and the little small rings and the O-rings and the clips and all. If you don't have coolant pass to do keeping all that shit cool, it'll fry. And once it fries, you created a whole lot of issues. I mean, head gasket issues, everything. So I had to park the car because I knew I was filling it up more frequently. And I'm like, it's leaking worse and worse. The leak is getting worse. Let me just park this motherfucker. And now I'm, I'm you know, I'm sitting. It, it's a really good time because, like I said, it was what? First Friday, downtown Phoenix right now, early December. But everybody right now is covering rent. Everybody's paying bills on the very first of the month, including me. I mean, every first of the month between the first and the fifth, I got about almost three thousand dollars that I have to have to just pay in one shot. Three G's gone in one shot. So if I don't at least have that. Like people wonder why my bank account ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere because I got to keep paying the same bills every month and I'm not making the money to replace that shit. 
That's when my bank account's going down. It was going up. Then it started just leveling off. Now it's going back down again. Because if I can't keep making that money, I'm going to, like it said in the news, more Americans right now are living on savings than they're living on their earnings. I'm one of those Americans right now. I'm living on my savings, not on my earnings right now, because the apps ain't paying us what we should be making right now. Luckily, I did that private ride tonight because at least that covers my fucking $85 phone bill. <laughs> it's like, shit, that's one less thing I got to worry about. Man, this is how long am I planning on doing it since 102,000 miles on it? I think I want to do a ride share in that engine until at least 250 to 300,000 miles. Because my Jeep, I got 270,000 miles on that one, just about 257, 257,000 miles on a Jeep. I bought it at 112. I'm at 257. The Escalade, I bought that at 88,000 miles. I'm at 224,000 miles on that one. But like I said, all my cars, I replace all my own engines, all my own transmissions. I do that. I do all that shit myself. If I can get this, you know, BMW to go at least 250, 300,000 miles with no engine failure at all. I want to pull an engine out myself, put it in the garage because I know it's a good engine. If it's still running at 250, 300, pull it out myself, put it on a crate in the corner in the garage and order me an engine that's like I only got 15,000 miles on it. Excuse me, that way I know somebody had a salvage car, you know, 25,000 miles, maybe 10,000 miles. It's just a salvage car that maybe they wrecked it and insurance bought it and said, well, we'll keep it. I'll buy the engine out of that for about five grand have them ship it to my house. So instead of me going out buying another 30, 40, 50,000 dollar car, I'll just spend 5 grand and get another engine, take another week off of work, install that engine, test run it if it needs to be tuned, take it go get it tuned or something like that. But I'm like I said, I'd rather spend 5 grand on an engine than 30, 40,000 dollars on another car. I don't have 30, 40,000 dollars. I mean, I barely have 5. Cuz all it's going to take is like I tell people, especially do delivery people, you know, Logan and all you guys out there Nicole, everybody out there that does delivery Y'all are one. What up, Tony? Y'all are one twisted ankle away from working. One twisted, twisted ankle. You walk on the curb the wrong way. Somebody not have some shit lit up. You step on a stick or a toy in somebody's yard. And you twist your fucking ankle. Your ankle going to swell up about this big. You ain't doing delivery no more. That's it. You're done until your ankle's not swollen no more. And if you break it, that's even worse. We ain't got no workers compensation and shit like that. Every day, y'all doing delivery. I'm hoping y'all get out the car and don't step in no motherfucking oil spot and slide and bust your damn elbow because you can't work. You don't get workers comp for that shit. Yeah, man. Hey, too tall. I do that, man. I'm always in the garage, always. But, man, yeah, driven is a no doubt. That's what happened to me, but I worked through it. Yeah, and that's sad, man. Look at us. Look at us. We look like wounded warriors and shit walking around this motherfucker. We all walking around fucking, you know, you in a goddamn sling and shit motherfucker and patch on your eye. You, you order motherfucking chicken boxes like, goddamn, this motherfucker, this beat up motherfucker just delivered our chicken. Motherfucker, we can't take no days off. We're gig workers. Well, yeah, exactly. Say like you failed twice last year, you love, man. That's what it is. What up, Glitch Dash? Glitch Dash, email me, man. UberGaz at gmail.com. I got something for you, man. Email me because, like I said, we got to talk about something real quick. But I'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow. But I definitely got to talk to you about something. UberJeepAZ at gmail.com. You looking like Nick Fury. <laughs> Who the hell's Nick Fury? I keep hearing that. Oh, yeah, Nick Fury, the dude with the patch on his eye from the Marvels. <laughs> Samuel Jackson and shit. Yeah, that's it. That's it. The pre is at 227K. Damn. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, we up there, man. I tell some, if you can, if you can drive a car to 300,000 miles, You've got your money's worth. Think of how much you paid for that car. Think of how much you paid for it. Divided by the amount of miles you drove it. That is how much you drove that car for. There's people out there buying cars for $65,000, $70,000. They'll pay $40,000 off of it and trade it in when it's got 32,000 miles on it. So you just paid $40,000 to drive 32,000 miles is what you paid for that car. If I'm paying $40,000, I'm going to drive this motherfucker 400,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> it's like i want my money's worth shit i'm gonna drive this motherfucker to the ground take it to the salvage yard they can park that shit out later sell the doors in the ho hood whatever i ain't trying to trade shit in i'm trying to get my money's worth is <laughs> looking like jim brown like what up jim brown motherfucking linebacker shit i put fifty five thousand miles on the mx what max it tesla is seventy thousand. Oh yeah but see and that's the thing about teslas most teslas out there they got you know 
they say they're you know half a million to a million miles easily if because i mean it's low maintenance when you do maintenance it's only breaks something like that so it's like you know i'd i'd rather i like to maintain cars i really do and i always say i'm always fixing my own cars i like my cars but ride share man it the maintaining you save money on labor but then you lose money from not working by having that shit parked in your driveway so you gotta weigh it i'm like i'm knowing if i would have took this car to a dealership to have done what i they would have probably charged me over two g's i had to clean the valves and everything else they would have probably charged me a little over two g's so the most i can be out of work and and it still be like a, a positive net gain is about a week and a half to two weeks and that's it because i already spent 300 like 400 dollars total on parts supplies and everything else so i only got 1600 dollars left i'm averaging about six to eight hundred dollars a week right now so that's about two weeks worth of work so i'm like if, if i'm work if this shit takes me longer than two weeks i was better off taking this shit to a repair shop that's what it'll be like <laughs> but it's like you gotta you gotta weigh this shit man you gotta weigh it the Benz at 147, bought it at 130. But that's the thing. Benz go half a million miles. Again, you got those cars, man. Half a million, half a million miles. And, and a lot of us don't mind high miles. I tell people I would rather have a car with high miles on it that somebody has the, the history on it because I know it's been tested. I know all the recalls have been fixed on it. It's not a zero mile car. If you buy a car with five miles on it, you're the guinea pig for that fucking car. And a lot of people like to be like, oh, man, I got a brand new car. It's got six miles on it. Well, you the fucking guinea pig because I wouldn't drive that shit across the country. I put about 10,000 miles on that motherfucker to make sure all these bolts is tight. All the adapters are in the right housing. The electrical is good. The ECU ain't going to fry itself on the, on the motherboard or some shit. I'm going to drive the hell out of that car before I take it across country. You give me a high mile car. Shit. Yeah. Is it, you give me a high mile car. Hey, I'm. I'm driving that shit across the country because I trust it. It's already had all the work done. Everything's done to it. The brakes are done. Everything's been tested. It's been run through the ringer and shit. I trust a high mile car. My Escalade, I drove it across the country twice already. So it went from Vegas. It's been all the way to California a lot of times. What up, Kim? What's good? And then I drove it out to like Wisconsin from Vegas. I drove all through Colorado, Missouri, Illinois. I was told shit up to Iowa and back. I went out to West Virginia, all through the Blue Ridge Mountains in that big ass Cadillac. That Cadillac is trusted. That motherfucker got 224,000 miles on it. It fires up each time. As long as the battery's good, fire that motherfucker up. It'll take off driving. I probably got to drain the transmission just to put new fluid in because I don't drive it enough. And I need that, that filter and all that shit not to be gummed up. I need that hydraulic pressure. So I probably drain my transmission fluid, refill it back up one day, replace the filter in it. Easy shit. But yeah, like I said, I like high mile cars. If, if you got a high mile car that I can trust and you know the history on that shit, I might buy it. And I don't mind replacing the transmission because it's it's on the bottom of the car most of the time. You just pull it out from up under the fucking car, put a new one back in. You're good. It's like plugging a battery. <laughs> what design say? Hertz charged me 700 for a cracked windshield. Then four months later, trying to get a thousand for damage. They said I did. Nope. You know what designs? I see that. I see that shit like that happens all the time. They will sit up there and not, they will not tell you what damage is on the car. They'll tell you they fixed it already. They'll never take pictures of it. Never have you come in and expect it right when you drop the car. They'll fix it and they'll contact you and say, oh, we fixed it already, but this is what the bill is. So these people got to watch it with these rental car places, man. Rental car places are run by shady ass people. You think Uber is shady and Lyft is shady? Oh, shit. Rental car places are notoriously the shadiest ass companies on the market because they people get paid off of bonuses. They people get paid off of all this revenue shit. They upsell people. They sell damage. When you sell damage or you upsell gasoline and all that shit, you're getting commissions off all that. So they're going to sit up there. Look at that. 700 for a crack windshield. Windshields, depending on what kind of car it is, can cost 150 bucks, 225. 700 is a lot for a windshield. A lot. Yeah, I ain't man. I wouldn't pay them shit. Yeah, do an inspection before you return it. Yep, do an inspection. See, that's the thing. Devon, he knows. Motherfucker been through some shit. <laughs> if you, it's be people just going there and they drop off a damn car and they say, hey, here's the keys and they leave. Oh, you're going to get a call in about three days. Oh, yeah, we're going to bill you $760 for this and this will happen and this will. Then you find out it was not even the car you dropped off. It was a car somebody else dropped off. They trying to bill you for the shit. 
You go look at the car. You're like, wait a minute. I didn't have a red car. I had a white car. Oh, this wasn't yours. Motherfucker, you knew that wasn't mine. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, Tesla windshields. And I'm going to tell you about my windshield on the BMW. It's been replaced twice. Like when I bought it, it got cracked. So they came in and put an OEM BMW windshield on my shit for $1,400 because it's got sensors all in it. And all the sensors are what runs the cameras all over the car because it's like lights, all kind of crazy shit. So they replaced it for 1400 bucks. Drove that shit for about a year. Got cracked again. This time they sent me a, a aftermarket one for 1200 <laughs> They didn't want to do the 1400 no more. So they found an aftermarket for 1200 So it was like, man, these goddamn BM. Whenever they put sensors and shit inside of these windshields, it makes it way more expensive. My Cadillac windshield, I think it was like 125 Escalade windshield, 125 bucks. I was like, I'll just pay that shit cash. Fuck that. It was like, just report it. And you can send the insurance this much and blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, fuck it. I'll just pay it straight out because I don't have windshield on my Escalade. I think I only got liability on it because I've had it for so long. Yeah. Yeah, new car windshields are not cheap replacements anymore, man. Yeah, most of the satellite hardware, that's what it is. The satellite hardware where the mirrors are, that's where all those wires and shit are. When you look at my BMW right by the mirror, you see all this motherboard shit running all around the mirror. That's what it is, man. When it was on the OEM, it was tinted. You didn't see it because it was all tinted. The aftermarket one, they didn't tint it. So you see all this fucking computer looking shit all around my damn wind. So anybody that knows BMWs can walk up to my car and be like, you had the windshield replaced, huh? Like, cause you can see all the shit around the mirror now. The OEMs don't have that. It's all tenants, so you can't see none of it. So it's like, you right, man. All that shit is where all that satellite hardware right over the mirror. And it just looks like motherboards just going all over the place. And man, it's like, you, it's nothing you can do about it. I mean, your windshield gets cracked. Hopefully you got windshield with your shit. Cause if you don't, man, yeah, windshield insurance covered mine. It covered it. And I, that's why, you know, I had I got full coverage on the beam. So I get free windshield, like one free windshield every year or something like that. But, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. In, in Arizona, you get a lot of rock chips because we live in a very rocky place. Everybody has um like gravel in their driveways. They've got gravel up and down the side of the road land. All the landscape is desert landscape. It's not the big trucks in a Jeep. See, on my Jeep, I got real big tires with big grooves in it for mud tires. Rocks don't stick in there. Rocks just fall out. Like I can drive down the street and rocks won't be sticking on my, but when you take a passenger car and you got those real thin treads, rocks get stuck in those treads. It like pinches rocks in there. So when you're going down a highway and you hit a bump in a regular car, the rock comes out and it starts hitting the ground and it jumps up, bam, right into your window. So I tell people, I tailgate a Jeep before I tailgated a regular car, because the regular car has a rock stuck in the threads. When you Every day I walk outside, before I start driving, I got a flathead screwdriver. I will walk around my car and make sure any rock I see, I pluck that shit out, because I don't want to fuck up the car behind me. And my BMW is notorious for having rock stuck in the treads, notorious for it, because it's real thin tread on there. You can just go around and like pluck, pluck, pluck all the motherfuckers out while you're just walking around. Exactly. And I don't like that sound, Louis. I'm the same way. I don't like that sound. You driving down the street, you hear them going. It's like got a fucking rock stuck in my tire. <laughs> I'll pull over. I can't hear that shit. I'll be cruising. I'll be like, you be just riding windows down. You bumping the shit all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, fuck. Rocking the wheel. Pull over. Figure out which wheel it is. I'll be walking around. Get my screwdriver out. Pop that shit out. Because right now you saving somebody a windshield is what you're really doing. you helping out the driving community, goddamn. you saving somebody a whole windshield. They don't even realize it. Like, what this idiot doing over in the parking lot checking his tires and shit? I'm saving you a windshield. You should be thankful, motherfucker. <laughs> say, I might tell you to tailgate me, you idiot. Hey, man, why don't you fucking tailgate me a little harder? Shit. <laughs> like, do not tailgate cars. Because them fucking rocks are stuck in them treads. And as soon as that shit hit the ground, it'll hit the, the car, the ground, and just bounce the fuck up. Bam! Right into your windshield. And you can see them coming. They loudest clicks and ticks you can ever. It's like, crack! You're like, damn! What the hell? What William say? I put 25000 down for expeditioning, and now it'll be hard to sell. Yeah, you right, brother. You right. And that's the thing. That's a lot of money, man. It's a lot of money. But the only way you're going to get that money back is you know private rides parties of four and five that's it like i had some clients hit me up one time and they i used a bmw they wanted a bigger 
car. So I had to hit my man Dave up, Dave McGrady. I was like, hey, man, I got clients. They need a bigger vehicle. I got the Beamer. He says, I'll do it. So I just sent him the information. And, and if he converted those clients into his clients now, that's cool. Because now he's got the big people. Whenever they take a large group, he's got that group. When it's a small group, they'll call me. If they only got one or two people, I'm cheaper. I'm the Beamer. Jeff, can you come pick up me and my girl from dinner? Cool. They're not going to ask for Dave because Dave, he costs too much. He's the big black SUV. And like I said, I gave him those clients. Those were my clients. But I can't service people. You know, they need expeditions and shit like that. Big ass fucking. I don't have cars like that. So I didn't mind, you know, giving Dave my because that takes care of my people. And that's if we in this shit to take care of people, we in this shit to take care of drivers. And you know you can't carry that load. You got to be OK with pass that to somebody else. Because one day Dave's going to tell me, hey, Jeff. I'm across town. I got some people at the airport. Do you think you can get them? Because I took care of him before. I gave him four of my clients. And it's like, it. I had to take care of my people. These are my people. I had to take it. I only gave them a ride once. And it was all four of them in my little ass Beamer. They didn't want to do that shit again. And I don't blame them. That's a little ass car. So I'm like, luckily, I got the fucking message. I, I can actually message somebody with a big black SUV. I could still take care of y'all. But y'all got to pay him. I don't negotiate nobody prices. That's not my shit. So I was like, Dave, here you go, man. These four guys, cool as shit. They flying in town. Hook them up. Bet. I ain't heard from him since. I ain't heard from them since. So everything's fine. <laughs> nobody got any complaints. I hate when my phone rings. I'm like, oh, shit, what happened? Because ain't nobody giving me nothing. It's going to be, man, that motherfucker, Dave. Oh, shit, my battery. Hold up. Totally forgot I had this damn thing unplugged. Where's my plug at? Hold up. Oh, there we is. I forgot I had my laptop unplugged. Now I'm back in business. Yeah, I have my laptop in the kitchen. I totally, psh, I be walking around this motherfucker doing all kind of crazy shit. Was it stay away from gravel trucks and landscaping trucks? Psh, and they and they notorious out here, TN. They are notorious. You'll be coming down the own ramp, and as soon as you find a way to get in, it's a big ass truck went right past you. You'd be like, oh, I gotta be by. I will go all the way over to the fast lane, speed past their ass. I'm not messing with them. No. And these idiots be driving. They be right behind them and shit. I'm like, motherfucker, you already know already what these big ass trucks got in the back of it. Why are you just cruising and shit like it's Sunday driving? You're just like, no, 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 no. All of a sudden, <laughs> windshield cracked. I'm like, dude, you, when you see a gravel truck, you got a fucking much faster transmission than this truck got. You better punch it. Your ass would be like, you almost 70 miles an hour. Speed your ass up to about 95. Get around their ass as quick as you can because your windshield is going to be like, man. I'd rather take a speeding ticket for 200 than another $1,400 windshield that they might make me pay for it next time. <laughs> yeah, William, you're going to have to get private clients, especially for events or weddings or network with companies in your area. I'm telling you, William, man. And see, I think William said he's in what? You're in uh, Cleveland, something like that. You said you were in Cleveland. And I'm like, I would find, I'm telling you, man, if I had a black SUV, dead serious. I would go to a college, to a fraternity house, sorority house, and I'd talk to the house mom and be like, listen, this is what I do. Here's my business card. This, let me sit down and talk to you real quick. And they'd be like, hey, you know what? We actually got a guy with a black SUV. He can take four or five of us anywhere we need to at all time. Oh, cool. We got a social coming up. You know, we might have them run people back and forth to a place. They might just say, hey, dude, if we give you $250, can you just run like groups back and forth for about two, three hours? You might be able to do that. You got a black SUV. You can run groups back and forth instead of them having a charter bus. Instead of all of these people paying for Ubers and waiting and sitting and hoping they don't get declined or canceled. You got the black SUV. You motherfuckers are like buses. Y'all can make money. You got five, six people can jump in that shit. You 250 bucks in like two, three hours just running back and forth. They want livery license and fleet insurance. Yeah, I can see that happening. I can see that happening. But a lot of these parties, I go to these ASU parties I be going to, man, these kids be running up to my damn car. Hey, can you fit five? No, no. We'll give you $20. Nope. You motherfuckers ain't kicking my goddamn climate controls, tearing my shit up. Now I got to come up with $1,200 because I decided to make 20 bucks. It's like, you know, broke my client, my climate controls back here. And I take it to Beamer. And I'm like, yeah, it's $1,200. Like, damn, why'd I let them kids pack my car up? It's like, nope. Yeah, same with strip clubs. Negotiate with the house mom. Set a rate to take them next. Exactly. And that's what it is, man. Because they're using Uber or Lyft or whatever. And this is like 4 o'clock in the morning. 
And a lot of these girls do not like getting in anybody's car. My buddy Mike, he works at a strip club highlighter. Everybody knows where a highlighter is. My buddy Mike's, him and his family, they've been running that place for a long time. But he trusts me enough. Like when I come up, they be like, hey, what up, Jeff? What's good? What's good? It makes the girls feel better because I know all the doormen. I know all the people there. So the girls feel better about it. But usually for one of them strippers to walk up four o'clock in the morning, hop in some random ass dude's car. They don't feel too good about that because some of these girls got 20, 30 miles fucking drives, man. And they don't feel too secure. 20, 30 miles. And this dude, we don't I don't know, man. This is kind of sketch. So you always got to When you go to strip clubs, check in with the door people, man. Just let them know your face. Let them know who you are. So when they roll up, they're like, hey, what up, Will? What's up? What's good? What's good? The girl feels better now because the doorman knows you. So now you're going to get a tip. She ain't going to feel too apprehensive about it. Shit's different, man. Yeah, exactly. What is a Someone came by the channel the other night saying that the police will target gypsy cabs. I think notoriously cite improper license. Just wondering what your thoughts about that. Yeah, like I said, I don't know. Because in Phoenix, I don't know if they do that or not. So I don't have experience with the gypsy cabs. But I did see something on the news about California doing some stuff like that. They was trying to offer people. It was like entrapment. People offering you cash rides and stuff like that. Me, if I was an attorney, let's say I was an attorney, I would kind of look at the the chance of of like entrapment because that's like if I if I didn't know if you smoke crack and I walked up and sold you a crack rock and you bought the motherfucker because you thought well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn around and sell this motherfucker I don't know I just trap you you ain't been looking for no crack I walked up and tried to sell you some shit and you bought it and I'm like hey 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 we got a crackhead. Like, nah, motherfucker, you just set me up because I was going to get this shit and go, you know, sell it down the street for some extra cash. You telling me 10 bucks for a $25 rock, motherfucker? That's doubling my money. Give me the rock for 10. <laughs> I know some crackheads at Circle K. Yeah, and that's the thing, man. It's like, I think it's entrapment. You can't do people like that. Because if you walk up to me and you show me a motherfucking radio, you say, dude, I got this brand new radio. It's a Sony radio. I only want $100 for it. I'd be like, man, that's a, does it work? Yeah, it worked. It worked. Check this shit out. Motherfucker, turn it on and everything. I was like, all right, cool, cool. I'll give you the hundred. He just bought stolen property. He just bought stolen. Motherfucker, you set me up. That's entrapment right there. You can't do people like that. Now, if I'm calling you walking around going, this is crack. It's what's for dinner. <laughs> exactly, Jose. Crack is what's for dinner. <laughs> Motherfucker was in a <laughs> goddamn crack pipe and shit. He was like, man. California was doing it a lot, especially when they come in, uh, come in Vegas in my area. Yeah, and that's the thing, man. You can't entrap people to do stuff like that. I think that shit's wrong. That shit's wrong, man. And I'm one of those people that, that you know, like I said, if I was ever an attorney, a mayor, a governor, I look at my citizens first. People got to realize we're electing all these people. We putting all these people in power over our lives. And they're turning around and making us all criminals. It's like we live in a free prison society right now. We're, we're all really prisoners. They just trying to catch us do some shit. That's it. We're all prisoners walking around. They just want to catch us doing something. So we're really not free. They're just waiting to throw our ass in jail for anything. Jaywalking, whatever it could be. A warrant. You didn't change the address on your driver's license. You got a warrant out for your arrest. Motherfucker, I didn't change my... You're going to put me in here with a motherfucker that just killed some people. So I'm sitting in jails of people that just kill some people, and I just didn't change my address on my driver's license, but you had a warrant. It's like, this, hey man, I swear, this whole fucking country be like that. And so if we're going to elect people, we just start electing people and bringing people on that's looking out for people, like really serving and protecting the community, looking out for people, not trying to fucking pack jails with people. Hate that shit. Exactly. Felony jaywalker, felony lawyer. They're looking for any reason, any way to get you in jail as a free person. And that's why I tell people I love living in Phoenix because the cops in Phoenix got their hands. They got they busy. These motherfuckers is busy. Cops do not fuck with me. They've seen me run a red light because it's too late in the fucking night. I'll be sitting there at two, three o'clock in the fucking morning. It ain't no car in sight. The moment I fucking come out, make that motherfucking left turn at that red light. I look parking lot. Cops sitting there. I'd be like, I know he just saw me do it. They never bother me. <laughs> they just be like, this dude just ran that fucking light. But there ain't no cars around. I'm not messing with him. I did a U-turn one night with a passenger in the car. With a passenger. Oh, uh, uh, William Rogers, you can send it to my email. It's in the uh, description. So I, I'm sitting down there doing a U-turn on Priest Avenue. I was just south of Broadway. I just turned on Broadway. I was making a U-turn. Cop threw his lights on real quick. 
I pulled over it in the, like a parking lot. It was like, I don't know where I was. I think it was like an auto zone or something not too far, right from right down bro. It was a little auto zone. So I pulled in there and he was like, Yeah, man, we, I just saw you whip that U turn back. I said, Yeah, man, I'm an Uber driver. I got a passenger back here, man. I says, You know what? The map had me going that way. I had the U turn and go back that way. He looked in, he was like, Oh shit, my bad is all right. Man, y'all have a good night, dude. <laughs> I was like, if I didn't have a passenger in my car, he was about to get my ass. <laughs> and dude was like, damn, man, that was cool as hell. I was like, man, these cops don't care about ride share drivers. They really don't. <laughs> he he saw that shit on my dash. He saw my little Uber app on the dashboard. I was like, well, the map had me going that way. But then it, it kicked back, so I had a U-turn to come back. So I, got up, so I let the windows down. He saw the guy. He looked. He was like, oh, shit, my bad. All right, man, y'all have a good night out there, man. Be safe out there. Maybe watching them U-turns. I was like, all right. They don't care about ride share drivers. We're the least of their concern. It's so much shit going on. We're the least of their concern. Oh, Logan, Logan, stupid. Logan said, just like when I got messed with that day for no reason. If y'all don't see old Logan's face, this motherfucker was chilling in the parking lot. So he's chilling, kicking back, relaxing and shit. He recording the cop. He's like, oh, look at this cop over here. This cop doing some shady shit. Thanks, Rep. Come, Bodie. I appreciate the super chat, brother. Your vids are very entertaining. Keep up the great work. Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying. Like I said, I love my drivers, man. We be out here chopping it up and shit. I can't wait to get back on the road so I can do some money making videos, man. I want to make this fucking money. So it's like, so Logan was recording this dude and he was like, he was like this shady ass cop. Look at this old shady ass cop walking around and the cop walked behind the building and, and he was still recording. And all of a sudden the recording came back on. The cop was standing with Logan and the cop was like, yeah, what are you doing? He was like, man, I'm just recording. That's it. What up, Charvel? Thank you for the super chat. New driver here for Uber. How do I handle smelly passengers? Spray their ass with some ozone. Shh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but Logan, he was like, um, he was recording. He's like, I'm just recording this hanging out, man. He's like, I'm actually doing Uber. He's delivery. And the cop was like, well, this is an area of a lot of prostitutes. And Logan was like, motherfucker, I'm, I'm not delivering no bitches, motherfucker. I'm just delivering chicken and shit like tacos and motherfucking pizzas. I ain't delivering no fucking bitches. What are you talking about? No, man, it's, we think you're a pimp. You got a nice car sitting here. I mean, you could be a pimp. The officer was calling him a pimp, like making him a criminal. He was like, well, I talked to the guy in the store and the guy in the store said you was trespassing. You were, he was, Logan was like, I was just in the store. So you, he's like, you talking about the old dude in the store? He was like, yeah, the old dude. He says, Logan's like, I know him. He didn't say that. I know him. It's like I was just in there. And the cop was like, I don't know, man. You could be out here, you know, pimping. You could be selling dope. You know, this is a high traffic area for dope. You got a really nice car. And Logan was like, man, I got to get going, man. He was like, well, I need some ID. <laughs> dude straight. Dude straight made Logan a criminal on the spot while he was scouting rides in the parking lot. I was like, that shit's fucked up, man. That's fucked up. Uber drivers don't catch a break, man. We don't catch a fucking break. But no, Charvel, I'm going to tell you how to handle these smelly pads. This is what you do. Do you got cloth seats or you got leather seats? Because I got leather seats. So what I do is when a smelly pastor gets out, I got this concoction I use. It's got lemon cinnamonia. It's got um, laundry fabric softener plus a little laundry detergent. And I fill it up with water and I'll just, I just kind of shake it up a little bit and I keep it in the back of the car. I just spritz it. I spritz it back there because that ammonia inside of there will kill all that bacteria. If it's cloth seats, this shit works perfect on cloth, laundry, carpets, whatever. Spritz that shit and let that ammonia and that fabric softener kind of soak in a little bit. But you got to wait a little bit. Don't spray too much if you got other passengers coming and just kind of let it soak there for a second and then just hurry up and wipe down the top. And once you wipe down the top, the seats will start smelling like laundry. Girl got in my car the other day. Two girls got in. It was like, it smells like a laundromat in here. <laughs> it's like, bitch, I just picked up a fucking hamper. Leave me the fuck alone. No, but it's because I spray that shit all in the floor all the time. My car smells like fabric softener. So motherfuckers get in. It's like, dude, this shit smells like a laundromat, motherfucker. I got to wash some whites. <laughs> I'm giving motherfucker laundry vibes and shit, man. I think I got to do some colors that bleed. I don't know, man. I got to get home and do some laundry. This motherfucking car, it smells nice. What Mike say? Mike said, hey, Jeff, Uber's prioritizing Uber Green over UberX, making Uber Green the default choice when selecting rides. Now they're hauling any UberX rides available, which is the majority of the drivers rely on. So Uber, so they're trying to get all these Teslas. That's what they're doing, trying to get everybody to rent these fucking Teslas. They're pushing people. Like I said, man, Uber and Lyft are pushing people. They are pushing people into a position to where we have to do fucking private rides. And then check this shit out, talking about private rides. I'm glad you brought that shit up, Mike. Okay, you got cloth seats? Yeah. Yeah, Febreze and all that. But yeah, Mike, 
my homeboy Larry. Larry hit me up an email today. Check this shit out. So Larry was like, man, I've been watching videos. I decided to try some private private client shit. I got my first private client today, man. My first private client. $1,000 a month. $1,000 a month. This lady gets a ride to and from work every day. And he said, even taking her to and from work every day, adjusting his schedule to take her to and from work every day, saves her $100 per week. So he's saving her $400 a month. And he's making a grand a month on his first. I'm like, dude, all my clients together don't pay me no thousand dollars a month. <laughs> he got one just paying him a G a month. I was like, man, if you get another eight people that you just got to do some random shit to at that rate, you make it eight G's a month and you ain't doing shit on the app. You just sitting at home, you chilling. But that's kind of like what we the apps are forcing us to do this. And we don't want to do this. We want to drive for the apps. But if the apps ain't paying, we can't fuck with them like that. We can't fuck with them. We got to go out and we got to make money. We got bills to pay. This is a period of high inflation right now. Everybody wants to talk about high inflation, how the company is, you know, is costing too much for companies to operate. Well, what do you think about drivers? We're, we're basically small businesses. Most of us have only one or two employees. It's us and our spouse, one or two employee businesses. That's what we are. So our expenses are raising too. Like I said, I just had to pay for $311 for a goddamn water or a thermostat. The thermostat for a Jeep is like $25. For that being, it was $311. You know how many fucking thermostats I could have bought? I'm sitting there like, and the work alone on that motherfucker. I'm like, our, our costs are going up too. I went from spending $25 for a thermostat for the Jeep at O'Reilly to $311 for a thermostat for the BMW online. My expenses are going up because I'm driving a nicer car. I'm trying to do different services. And if these apps are out here trying to sell us, they're selling our services. They're like, oh, we got this nice Beamer. We got a five-star driver, great personality, this and that. Only $62. He'll come pick you up. And the people be like, oh, man, this is, we got a Beamer, cool-ass driver, five-star. He's been doing this shit for four years. Oh, man, hell yeah. $65, I'll pay that $65. I get $31. It's like, okay, so you selling me on some shit right now. Because I could talk to this guy and probably get $45. You charging him $65, I could get him for $45, and I could make, you know, $14, $15 more than what you paying me. So it's like we out here allowing these motherfuckers to slave us out to sell us for dirt cheap. They pumping us up. Oh, we got a nice, clean car. The wheels is always detailed. The motherfucking seats always smell nice. It's got LED. I mean, we got a nice-ass Beamer coming. Nice. That's why we charge you $65. And it's like... If you're going to sell me for that much, at least pay me that much. Don't upsell me. Then fucking when it comes time to pay me up, you oh well, you ain't shit but Uber X. You ain't, you ain't really doing that. No, well, fuck that. Don't sell me up then. Don't sell me up because you cutting into my tip. Like William said, no tips. You're cutting to my tip. When you charging this person $65 for a ride, you just killed any possibility of me getting a fucking tip. Most likely I'm gonna get a $1 tip. You cutting because they're going to say, man, I, damn, I paid a lot of money for that ride shit. Well, at least tip them some. Here's two dollars. Like, damn, man, that's all I get. Well, shit, I had to pay 65 for the ride. Well, I didn't know you paid 65 for it. I only got 32. Damn, you only got 32. Yeah. Damn, that means 33 dollars went just to use this motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, the fees were more than the ride itself. It ain't shit out there. That's more. Imagine. Imagine you bought a cell phone. And let's say your cell phone was $600, for instance, $600 you bought this phone for. But the fees every month for that phone was $650 to use it. You'd be like, what kind of fucking phone plan is this? Well, we're allowing you access to the Internet. We're allowing you to text people. We will call people. You can take pictures and send those pictures to people. You can video shit. We're, this is a lot. These are all service fees, man. But the phone already cost me like 650 bucks. Well, I mean, 600 bucks, well, 650 of service fees. That's how ride share is working out for people. Because imagine how many rides these people take every month, how much we actually get as drivers versus how much they're paying these fucking apps. And I show people on, on Thanksgiving week, these people paid almost 300, so over 300 something dollars. I got like $92 in fare, $92 in fare. If I didn't make the extra money and, and surge and bonuses, plus a couple of tips, I would have got my ass handed to me on that app. I would have got my ass handed to me. So I made like $227 total 
but it was like 90 something was in in the fair 50 or 60 or whatever it was was in the the bonuses and the rest was tips so i'm sitting there like they charging these people all of this money and they're not paying us. We have to fight for it, which is why we use Paw Patrol, which is why we go out there Uber petting it, using Uber Comfort and all these fucking EV things. We doing exactly what we can do to trap the money we make because they ain't giving us shit. They not paying you nothing. You got to go get it. You got to go out there and go because if you let that $15 surge go, that's on you. That's why we say use last ride. Because as soon as you start getting ready to drop somebody off, they're going to start sending you a ton of rides, ton of rides back to back. And you're like, why are they sending me all these fucking rides? I ain't even at the people's house yet. I still got a mile to go. All these rides coming down the pipe. Crazy, crazy. All of them is garbage. All of them garbage. But they might send you a good one and you take it. But if you drop the person off, you'll realize it's an $8 surge the next block down. That's why we use last ride. Because let that in that ride, let the screen go blank. Turn that shit to Uber Pet or something like that. And what you going to see? $8 sitting a block down the street. That's why they were sending your ass rides nonstop. They was dropping you off in a high surge area and they sending you rides nonstop. Don't be looking at them rides. Fuck calculating them rides. Do not even calculate them rides. Put it on last ride real quick to stop that shit. Because you know when you drop this person off, oh, there's going to be some money there. Either that or just throw it on Uber Pet. You throw it on Uber Pet, as soon as you end the ride, you'll pick up whatever surge you sitting in. And that's why I'm like, man, these apps, they're not going to pay you. Uneducated is what they want. Right, William? Uneducated. And on this channel, we try to educate people. We let them know these games, man. We let them know the games. What Claudio say? Four new tires, 170 bucks. Mark Smith and I paid two years ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they snuck in an Uber pet. <laughs> They'll do it, too. They'll sit there. You'd be like, man, I got to go pick up some fucking great dangs in a minute. Big, they bigger than you sitting in the back seat, motherfucker, licking you in the back of the head while you drive. And you're like, motherfucker, get your dog off me. Uber pet, Uber pet. <laughs> like, fuck that shit. They in the back chanting and shit. Uber pet, Uber. We got you, motherfucker. We got you. Motherfucker, get out of my car. Oh, badass dogs. Yeah, exactly. I'm telling you, you hey, Kim, you say your car look too nice to be doing Uber X. And it, it kills me, kills me to do Lyft. And Uber X with my fucking car kills me with it to the point where I'm like, I'm just going to go buy me a Chevy Traverse, a 2012 Chevy Traverse for like six grand and let that be. I'd rather have a 2012 Chevy Traverse get damaged and get banged on for Uber X. I can do Uber XL in that. I can do Uber XL, Lyft XL maybe in that. But Uber X in this fucking car, it's, it's a hard sell. Because these motherfuckers is walking around like, oh, man, why is UberX so much? UberX costs way too fucking much. Lyft costs way too much. Then they see a Beamer pull up. Oh, no wonder we get a nicer car. But we don't get paid no more. So you get a nicer car. We don't get paid shit extra. Who's winning here? Uber's winning. Because the people like, man, I used to pay $18 for this ride every day. I always pay $18. Why the hell is this ride $27 now? Oh, a Beamer. No wonder it's $27. Man, this is what I'm talking about. I don't mind paying. It's like we got a free upgrade, man. I love this shit. Hell yeah, $28 for a Beamer. Yeah. But what do I get out of that? $11, $12 for eight miles. Same shit. So it's like, man, yeah, UberX and share on top of that. Ooh, we get a Beamer for UberX share? Man, we only paid $23 for this ride. And we going like fucking 30 miles. <laughs> it's like, not in my car. Doubt it like a motherfucker. <laughs> Logan said, Lyft been throttling me. Hey, Logan, what you got to do, man? Like when Lyft start doing that shit, turn it on UberX or turn it into another app just to get that, that uh, Wi-Fi going. Because I turn that shit on UberX, I guarantee every time. Lyft won't send me a ride. I could be like wiping my car down, doing whatever. Lyft won't send me shit. The moment I turn that shit on UberX, Lyft be like, bling, 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 bling. I'm like, see? That's why I'm telling you, man, these apps are linked. They're linked. Why do you think they both threatening to leave Minnesota? They both threatening to leave Minnesota if these drivers get their way. And what is their way? Just being able to afford life. That's it. They just want to afford life. Motherfucker, rents are going up. These apps ain't stupid. These corporate execs ain't stupid. They're just out of touch with reality is what they are. They ain't stupid. They're out of touch. The mortgages on their mansions probably ain't never changed because the mortgages on their mansions are mansions they lived in forever. So they never seen an interest rate change. But a lot of us who've been renting and recently buying shit and everything else, our rents are going up. The mortgage rates are changing. Everything's all fucked up. 
So these executives, they don't see what we see. They only see life from their own perspective. They don't ever say, you know what? We should probably have some drivers in here and tell us how your life really going, man. How's your life going? Well, I get four bags of food from Walmart for 117 when I used to get like fucking a whole goddamn basket for 117. I get four bags now. That's it. I'm like, motherfucker, everything I buy, I go buy a goddamn a thing of sausage. Sausages cost $279 for a big old pack of sausage. The shit's $468 now. Same goddamn sausage. Motherfucker, pigs ain't more valuable. Same damn pigs. You go buy anything. It's everything. You go buy a pack of fucking cookies. Cookies used to be $1.99. Now those motherfuckers $3.19. I'm like, our money is getting chewed up by corporate America. So for drivers, for everybody to talk about inflation costs going up and everything, for drivers not to get a benefit of what we do for a living to get more money out of it. Man, that shit is fucked up. It's fucked up. Well, Uber pet, you can catch a surge and use it when you're doing Uber Eats. The thing and I did that shit by mistake one time. That's the drive I did. I caught that big ass surge. I think it was like a $24 surge or something weird like that. Then I got that Taco Bell. And that shit took, and I, it was like $42. For the Taco Bell, and it was like like an hour, forty two dollars, and I was like, I only got to go down the street. I'll take the forty two dollars for the hour. Fuck it, it's slow as hell, late at night. So I sat in the Taco Bell line, sat there, sat there, got both orders. It was a double order, kind of in the same area. As I'm driving, delayed. No, actually, I delivered the first one. I delivered the first one, no problem whatsoever. Pling, delivered the first one. I was like, on my way to the second one. As soon as I get to the car, the shit said order canceled. It went from like 42 some dollars down to $33 was all I fucking made. For that hour and 10 minutes of sitting in that fucking drive through with these orders, I made $33 instead of $42. They dropped that shit like 10 bucks that quick. And I'm like, and I had the surge on it. I had the $24 surge. All that shit was on it. I only got $33 for sitting there. And I'm like, I could have used that surge on a short ass fucking ride. I didn't have to deliver that fucking Taco Bell. But I used the Taco Bell food. I brought it home to my dogs. They ate all the motherfucking french fries and shit. And I ate whatever that little thing. I don't even know what the shit is at Taco Bell. I don't shop for that shit. So I don't know what it's called. But it was pretty good. It was like it was like a giant fucking patty. But it had meat and cheese and shit in it. And it was kind of flat. I don't know what it's called. But it was all right. And But the fact is that I sat there for 33 fucking $33. In like an hour, 12 minutes. I had this shit on one of my videos. I was hot. I was hot. Because I was not in the mood for no Taco Bell. I didn't want that fucking food. I wanted the money. That's what I wanted. I didn't want the food. I was like, fuck it. I ended my night. I was done. I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. And that shit pissed me off. Look at Mike. said, I drive a 5 Series too. Yeah, man. Oh, wait till you got to do a little small repair, Mike. I tell you what. Take a... Or I say, if you know... The thing about the 330i, so many years use different, different uh, thermostats. I had to wait. That's what it was, a crunch wrap. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I bet it was a crunch wrap. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. A, it was wrapped up. It was like soft wrapped up, but it had something inside that was a crunch, but it was like meat and cheese and shit all inside of it. Yeah, and I think it was a crunch wrap. That sounds right, because it was a wrap with something in it, and it was kind of crunchy, too. So that shit makes sense. A Mexican pizza, I used to order those when I was little. They come in the box. This crunch wrap didn't come in the box. It came in like a package, I think, like a regular package. See, motherfucker, you shop at Taco Bell. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Your ass be going to Taco Bell. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, man, that's a crunch wrap. Motherfucker, two nine nine. Motherfucker, options on that shit is cheese. Goddamn gorditas and shit like you can get all that shit on the crunch. How the fuck you know this? Because that's what I eat, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 it's like it's, I'm just I like I said, if you would have been describing me over this uh for a startup roster, I don't know. If you would have been describing this shit to me, if you would have been describing it to me on a live stream saying, Jeff, I just went to Taco Bell, I got this thing, and it was like meat and stuff inside of a cheese and stuff, and it was like wrapped around it was like a big ass patty, and it was just I'd have been like, I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, it was from Taco Bell. You know what they call? I'm like, I don't know. Your motherfucking ass was like. Crunch wrap. I'll take fucking Taco Bell for three, Alex. <laughs> you know all that shit. What is a crunch wrap? <laughs> Motherfucker, you on Jeopardy like a mom? <laughs> Yo ass got fucking, we need to have Jeopardy. We need to have motherfucking ride share Jeopardy. What is this on an Uber Eats menu? It's like a fucking patty. It's wrapped around. Motherfucker, what is a crunch wrap? <laughs> I'm eating one right now. <laughs> Yo ass straight said just had one. <laughs>
<laughs> Logan said, oh, Logan, that's real. She said, man, I don't shop for that shit, but it was pretty good, though. And that's one good thing about Uber Eats, man. I'm going to tell y'all something. We, we have a great job because we get introduced to restaurants. We get introduced to a lot of areas and places that I'd never go. I'd never go there if I just had to drive because I don't even know. This. I'd be finding like fucking barbecue places. I'll be finding like cool ass streets, nice ass houses. I'll be taking pictures of the houses like, oh, man, that's a cool ass awning right there. We kind of see the whole fucking world cruising around. and We just want to be paid right for it. That's all. We just want to be paid right. Motherfuckers act like we hate Roger. You motherfuckers hate Roger. Go get another job. No, we love Roger. We hate the fucking pay. We hate to be treated like this. We're out the ones doing the service. We're out here, you know, taking up the dangers. We doing all of this shit. That's it. We just want to be compensated properly. That's it. And ain't too much to ask a motherfucker. That's not too much to ask somebody to be compensated properly. If you're making record profits, record profits during a period of inflation, that means you're holding money back from drivers who don't have record profits in our fucking banks. You're holding money back from the people who are really doing the fucking work. That's what that means to me. So you can't sit around going, oh, yeah, this is a great company. We're amazing. We're making record property. Well, what about the fucking the drivers? How are they doing? How are they? Well, fuck them. We ain't worried about them. And that's why we like, well, we need to start worrying about us, y'all. Fuck these apps. We need to start worrying about us because they ain't worried about us. We need to start. Go get your business cards. Start trying to get some private clients. Talk to people. Figure shit out. Man. No. <laughs> Big on KF. He said, two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. <laughs> that's a, is that motherfucking uh, Big Macs or something like that? That's Big Macs. Oh, Kim, I'm telling you, beautiful. That's, we need to do it. We need to do it. We need to do a ride share Jeopardy. And see, this is what we need to do, though. We've got to somehow, I don't know if I got to use Restream, StreamYard or something, but I can get different people on the screen. So different people on the screen. So it'll be me asking the questions or whatever. And then the people on the screen can answer and the people in the chat can say who actually got that shit right. Because everybody, has, there's no buzzer you can hit. So somebody just has to say the answer. And the chat will be like, oh, Kim said it first. <laughs> oh, Kim said it first. Mom's like, okay, then we give everybody points and shit like that. Man, that shit's funny as hell. That's funny as hell. The whole lunch of a Russia driver. We should be <laughs> we should be uh, able to Afro's Cheesecake Factory. Exactly. Man. We'll be like, man, in Arizona, tacos are everywhere. Yep, that's the thing. You got these little food courts, like these food trucks and these tents everywhere you go. Simon, you already know. And I tell motherfuckers, you know you finna get a real good-ass taco. You know you finna get a good taco when the motherfucker really don't speak that good of English and the taco was burning through the fucking styrofoam. That's gonna be the best taco you've ever fucking had. I guarantee it. It's like, and you're gonna go back because it's like, if you when I get like 10 bucks, 10 bucks, I'm like, I'm gonna go get one of the motherfucking lava tacos. That motherfucker look like lava. It's molten lava burning through the fucking styrofoam. And I'm all like, hey, Give me dos tacos, uh, cuanto cuesta. I'm like, hold on, hold on. Ocho dollars. I'm like, cool, cool. Here's eight dollars. Hey, here's 10. Keep the change. Cool, cool. Motherfucker, take off. Man, You by the time you make it home, you take the taco out the fucking carton. It's already burnt a hole in the motherfucker like a big ass. He's like, this is going to be the best taco ever. He's <laughs> like, and it makes you not want to go to restaurants no more. Speedy taco. Yeah, I like speedy taco. We got that out here too. Man. I think the game is called Trivia. Yeah, Trivia. Yeah, that's what it is. Man, yeah, but you know you're going to get the best. And it's going to make you not ever want to go to a place like Taco Bell or Jack in the Box or nowhere else ever. Because like I said, these motherfuckers make tacos like they made it back, you know, wherever they're from. You know, Sinaloa, Mexico, Mexico City, Acapulco. They make it like there. They don't make it like a corporate American fucking taco that has like cheap ass fucking ingredients. They get their ingredients from like the Mexican markets, the fucking carnesarias and shit like that. That's what it, so when you eating this shit, man, you will never go to a restaurant again. You will start looking for these little pop-up taco shits all over the street. A burrito tacos, have I heard of burrito tacos, fire? No, I haven't heard of them yet. I'm gonna have to find them though, man. I tell people, if you are a driver, if you are a driver and you get cash tips, trust me, find one of these little taco spots in on the side of the fucking street, that is healthier, way healthier, I think. And you're going to fucking love it. It's the, the seasoning, the way it tastes. And they got these hot dogs, these Mexican hot dogs. Like, I don't think there's such thing as a Mexican hot dog, but it looked like a Mexican hot dog because it's like a hot dog, but it's a lot of stuff all over it. And it's like onions and all kind of crazy. Man, 
you'll be like, I'll never eat another American hot dog ever again. <laughs> it's kind of spicy and shit. I'll fight you in the comments. What's up, brother? What's up? Thank you for the super chat, brother. It kills me too. Mine is not a BMW. My Accord brand new, basically. I keep my shit super clean every day, but these fools get free comfort rides on X. Man, I'll fight you in the comments. That hurts me, man. That hurts. Because I know how it feels, man. I We be driving around and these people in the back bragging. Oh, I can't believe we got this. Oh, this nice ass car. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How many miles is on your car? Seven. Man, we only paid $8 for a car with seven miles on it. Oh, yeah, fuck Uber. Like, motherfuckers, they, they don't give a fuck about us. It's like, I'll never fuck it. Oh, yeah, they gave us a ride discount and everything. <laughs> Jeff spitting out Spanish. It's good talk. Good, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were so right there. And, see, and that's the thing, though. These apps know what kind of cars we got. They know the type of drivers we are. So it's easy for them to put these prices up there. Because they know it's going to show up and pick these people up. They know it's going to be a nice-ass driver with a nice, clean-ass car because most of us don't like dirty cars. I'll tell you right now, the most the people who I see with some of the dirty cars out there, honestly, are the people who will do, like, delivery. And I'll tell you why. If I did delivery, I'm not washing my car because these motherfuckers have you driving down gravel roads. Like, y'all see the video. Y'all saw the video on my channel where I had to deliver that motherfucking wing stop on the reservation and I had to walk through mud, drive all the way home in my socks and shit and wash my shoes off. That's the shit delivery will have you do. That's the shit delivery will have. You. I had to do that shit on videos. So I'm like, man, that's what I'm like. No, if, if I do delivery one day, I am not washing my car. I'm not, I'm not cleaning my car. I might have to put towels in my car because I know I'm be walking in mud and shit like that. That's how delivery month. And they don't even give you tips for that shit. They don't realize that now we got to go home. We can't drive home with muddy ass shoes and walk into the next restaurant with mud trails all in and trails out. It's like, no, no, we got rocks that just stuck to our shoes. So no, you do. And the people with the dirtiest cars are the ones that do delivery because they have delivery has beat their ass to death to where they like, dude, there's no point in me even washing my car. I'm going to go down two gravel roads, go through a fucking mud pit. Go through some grass to somebody like at a fucking park somewhere. And they don't even get tips. They got people's cars doing all of this shit and there's no tips. My BMW, I pulled into that motherfucker and I told dude, I cannot even come all the way to you. I pulled my car as close as I could on that reservation. And I sat that motherfucker right there in, in front of a big ass mud puddle. And I was like, you know what? I'll walk it to you, man. I'm not driving my car through this shit. So I walked all the food to him on video. I showed everybody and I got there. And it was, man, my shoes, I had clogs of mud like this thick on my shoes. I had to come all the way home, spray everything in my shoes. I had to ride home in my socks. Man, it was crazy. It was crazy. She says, I do delivery. My car not dirty. Well, see, you don't live out in Arizona, man. When you get, wait till you start delivering to places like out here. These people out here living like Gilbert, Deep Chandler, Deep Gilbert. There's number, Deep Chandler or Deep Gilbert is the very first time I took my BMW to Deep uh, Gilbert. And I was driving to go pick up somebody in ride share and I had to go through their gravel, all like some gravel rolls to get back to them. Chip my whole goddamn spoiler up. That was the first spoiler I damaged right there. <laughs> I was like, damn, can't, you can't win out here, man. You can't win because somebody lives in some unincorporated areas and you're going to get there and damage your car. You ain't going to get no tip. You ain't getting no tip. You're going to damage your shit. They're going to be like, oh, my motherfucking hamburger too cold. Motherfucker, I just pick your shit up and came straight here. I got to go buy a whole nother front goddamn spoiler for your fucking hamburger. The fuck, man? <laughs> what? See, dude, what's up, Jeff? Tell me how to how Uber put a $20 surge in the middle of a cemetery. You already know my fat ass got the car and walked. <laughs> <laughs> See, you out there playing motherfucking Pokemon Go. Hey, for $20, shit. Motherfucker, I'm running out there motherfucker, with a flashlight. I'm making sure ain't no ghosts. I ain't gonna see no hand coming out no motherfucking grave or nothing. I'm getting that twenty dollars. Shit, I, I got a motherfucking cross on my chest. I got some holy water throwing that shit. Out. I'm getting that twenty dollars. Fuck that. They gonna be like they gonna be looking on a security camera in the cemetery and they gonna say, man, we see a motherfucker out there shaking like a craps game, throwing holy water and shit, holding his cross up. <laughs> but we got a flashlight everywhere. I know it. They searching on ghosts and zombies and shit. <laughs> CJ stupid as a motherfucker. Coyotes howling and shit. I know it, man. <laughs> this motherfucker gonna get that twenty dollars. CJ is a fucking beast, <laughs> man, man. Oh, what Kim say? I should get one of those shoe covers in the hospital. Yeah, 
Yeah, every driver out there need to do that. If you're a delivery driver, like Kim said, get those hospital shoe covers. Because sometimes you're going to be walking in oil, you're walking in water, all this shit. Get them hospital shoe covers. So if you walk in some shit and you got to get back in your car, put them shoe covers on. I don't know. But man, man. <laughs> exactly. What up, Aaron? My man, my man. <laughs> he said, I'm going to get that $16.76. <laughs> <laughs> exactly man the shit ride share delivery make us do and that's the thing man they know the only way we gonna do this shit to, to get this money is we gotta get out there and fight for it and for them to be putting surges in areas back of apartment complexes and shit i'll be driving to these motherfucking complexes i had my shit on uber pet cruise zoo complexes shit Juan vargas he parked one time at a gate jumped the motherfucking gate and ran and got the surge and ran back to his tesla that's how they got us out here <laughs> <laughs> these motherfuckers do not play with these surges shit a surge will make you splurge motherfucker run it i'm gonna get this motherfucking 20 dollars. i'm getting this shit motherfucker <laughs> what is that coyote in the background <laughs> speed it up motherfucker wolfman jack chasing your motherfucking ass out the grave <laughs> this motherfucker holding his phone in the air like this running for wolfman jack like god damn it just hurry up hit the surge hit the surge we don't fucking play out here with these fucking surges, man. We don't play. Hold up for a second. Let me check, make sure it's some shit. Oh, damn. We're good. Yeah, I was just talking about Juan. He just fucking texted me a second ago. That motherfucker crazy. Oh, yeah, man. We got to hustle. We got to hustle. Dom, you own that shit, man. You own that shit. What Dom said, man, I always wear the same Nike Air Max. I don't care if they dirty. They comfortable. Shit. Hey, Dom speaking grown folks language right now. I remember my motherfucking sister one time. She was like, Jeff, why you got them big ass brown shoes look like some fucking Indian moccasins? I was like, because they got memory foam in them. Shit, you know you old when you buy shoes just because they got memory foam in them. <laughs> she was like, what the fuck you doing walk around in shoes with memory foam on it? Motherfucker, you like some old retired ass fucking vet or some shit. Like, man, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> shit, these motherfuckers got memory foam in them. I like, they comfortable as a motherfucker. Now I done wore the motherfuckers out, Dom. I'm telling you, they like your shoes. My motherfucking memory phone, my, they brown. They look like motherfucking boat paddles. Them motherfuckers so flat right now, but that memory phone still in the same position. The motherfuckers comfortable as a motherfucker. I could put that shit in the motherfucking boat, make it across the Atlantic. They be like, dude, where you get them oars from? Them oars look, motherfucker, these is my shoes, goddammit. These big brown flat motherfuckers, they got memory foam in them now. It's like, dude, you paddling faster than anybody I've ever seen. Motherfucker, these shoes got all goddamn surface space. They flat as a motherfucker. <laughs> my sister like, this motherfucker... Jeff, you need to just buy you some, some real shoes, like some Nikes, some Reebok. You know you said when you buy a pair of shoes, it ain't no motherfucking name was on them shoes. No name. It had a size on the bottom, said 11.5, and the motherfucker had a tag hanging off that was blue. It said memory foam. I bought them motherfuckers. That's all I need to see. Is they my size? Yeah. I like memory foam. Get them. <laughs> What's the brand of those shoes, man? They, they call memory foam. I don't fucking know. Maybe the brand name is 11.5. I don't fucking know. <laughs> well, but what kind of shoes you wearing? Some 11.5s? I didn't say the size. No, that's that's the brand name, 11.5. Look, it says it on the bottom. Motherfucker, that's the size, you idiot. Like, shit. <laughs> 23.99 shoes on Amazon. Hell yeah, the sketches do the same, shit. <laughs> Going to the ER. What's your emergency? I'm just here to get the $15 surge. <laughs> <laughs> Cam is stupid. That's real shit, though. What up, Martha? Hey, that's real shit. You see a motherfucker Uber driver walking down the hallway in the motherfucking hospital and shit. Everybody else in like goddamn hospital gowns, masks, and shit. This motherfucker walking, <laughs> regular ass jacket, just walking through. <laughs> Cam don't fucking play. This motherfucker gonna get that fifteen dollars. Yo, excuse me, sir. There's surgery going on today. Hey, you got surge right in this room right here. I need to get that. That's open heart surgery. Double bypass. This motherfucker like stick his hand in the window. Got the surge. Thanks. <laughs> Kev don't fucking play. This motherfucker say he walking through the ER. <laughs> I'll never do. But they do that shit. They put fucking the uh, pickup points in the hospitals. So I'm like, if you see the pickup spot, you park in fucking ER. Your timer doesn't start on lift. Your timer won't start on lift till you walk through the fucking door and get that shit on your phone, man. That's why I hate pickups at the hospitals on lift. They do that shit. Dante, man, <laughs> tell you, Kev is stupid. This motherfucker's stupid, man. <laughs> man, this shit. The new pandemic coming. Man, I heard about that shit. The new pandemic. 
They said this shit last time it was a pandemic. Oh, for the next pandemic, motherfucker, we ain't even through this one yet. How you talking about the next one? Because they know what they doing. They know what they doing. Man, <laughs> right when you do all of that, the surge disappear. Who were some dirty motherfuckers, man? <laughs> Man, Aram said, I wish I could tip you, Jeff, but we struggling out here. Inflation is killing us while Uber got into the S&P 500 from sucking our blood and sweat from these. Yeah, man. Aram, that's how they, that's it. These motherfuckers got record tip. They got record profits right now. Record profits. Because all their profits are really the money that would have been coming to us for tips had they not been overcharging fucking people. If they overcharge people, people are not going to tip. And the apps know the point of elasticity. They go, well, usually this person gets this ride for $15. He gets the ride for $15, and he always tips the driver $6. So make the trip just $21. That's what he pays all the time any fucking way, $21. So make it a $21 trip. So now the rider's going to pay $21 when it used to be $15, and the driver's like, so I ain't going to get no tip, $1, because I'm used to paying $21 for this motherfucker all the time anyways. Say I usually pay $15, and I tip the driver 6 But now I'm like, I'll tip you $1. Because they just took it. All those profits ain't shit but driver's tips. Because the algorithm knows these people ain't stupid. You set a computer code to see what is the average point of elasticity, the average price at which demand for that rod sticks. Demand for that rod will stay even when we move the price of elasticity, when we move the price up. You find that equilibrium. And the algorithm will be like, at this price point right here, the rod stays. There is no change in demand. Demand may drop 1%, 2%. Well, we're willing to drop 15% demand because we're increasing all the fares up by 40%. So that means everybody's going to eat good because all of the trips that are that didn't make it through, they're all covered by the increase in prices on the trips that did make it through. So they, they know how they're doing it. It's cost accounting, man. It's just basic cost accounting. They know exactly what they're doing, man. What? Yeah, and it took surge away and supplemented for boost during most of the busy hours, at least here in L.A. Yeah, Mike, and like I said, we talk about that shit all the time because we're all seeing it. We're all seeing it. It ain't, it ain't, you know, a theory. It's fact. What you just said is fucking fact. So they take away surge. They give you boost. Okay, 450 boost. But then the trip, you know, it's still not a dollar a mile. You're like, dude, it's like, you know, $18 for 23 miles. But it's got a 450 boost. So really, you were giving me $14 for that really is what you were doing. And it's like, we know damn well it was it was better than that. It was better than that. They ate up elasticity. Yeah, they man, they got it all up, all up. Just got my tip from Uber for Monday. Which Monday, Mike? Monday, September the 8th. <laughs> <laughs> Finally gave me that $2 tip. Man, fuck these raggedy people. Cover up, wash your hands, take vitamin C. And see, and I'm going to tell you right now, Kim, this is what they do. And, and a lot of us live through this already, so we already know what the play is. We already know what the play is. We live through it. They're going to just bombard, bombard media with anything to get people feared, like scared. They're going to bombard you with shit to get you scared. And once you're scared enough, everywhere you go, you're going to... Oh, you don't have a mask on? Oh, you can't come in here. You didn't wash your hands? You can't have one of these. Oh, you got to separate by six six uh, feet or whatever. Stand six feet away from me. But you stand six feet away from the motherfucker at the, at the ticket counter. But then when you get on the bus or the plane, you're sitting like right next to the motherfucker. You wouldn't even stand next to them in the ticket line because you said if you stand next to them in the ticket line, you're going to get sick. And you're going to die or some shit like that. But yet you sit on the airplane right next to them for the next four hours. That shit don't make no sense to me. It's like, so I can sit next to somebody on a plane and, and not violate the six foot rule because, well, we can't separate people on a plane by six feet. It's impossible. So you saying because it's impossible to separate somebody by six feet on a plane, we should just let them sick motherfuckers sit next to each other and die. But yet we have to separate them in the line at the ticket counter because we actually have six feet and we can do that and they won't die. In the end, nobody died, period. <laughs> It's like in the end, even the people that sat next to you on the plane didn't die. That let you know it was bullshit. Nobody on the plane next to nobody on the plane was like, oh, man, you got me sick. You got me sick. Oh, I'm dead now. I'm dead, too, man. It's like that shit never fucking happened. So it was like you could have just stood next to the motherfuckers in line. It was all an, an optical psyop. It was an illusion to, to fuck with people, to get people worked up and amped up to think the person next to you is the reason why you're going to die. This person is going to kill you. Why? Because you don't know if he's protected or not. I'm like, motherfucker, I don't have to know. I was already sick already. I'm good. I'm cool. I got immunity. There's no way. Shit. I already got it. What up, Nicole? What up, Nicole? 
What old B said, hey, I went to urgent care today. I have bronchitis. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> you should have said that shit when you was walking out. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. They put the swab deep up my nose. Man, shit. Yeah, they ain't. And that's the thing. They be scratching people's fucking nasal cavities up. You know, we've been through this shit. I ain't never been tested for nothing. Never been tested. Been sick. Still alive. Still healthy. Still rocking and rolling. So therefore, anything they ever say, and also, I never wore a mask. I never wore one. So this whole time, they're saying I should have been dead a long time ago. According to everything that I didn't do, I should have been dead. Why the fuck am I still alive? Because if I didn't follow not one single protocol, many of us didn't. We'll still here. But a lot of the people that followed the protocols, they're not here. So, I mean, common sense will tell you protocols ain't got shit to do with you staying alive or not. What it got to do with is for one, stay your ass out of the hospital. Do not go. Because if you look and at everything that happened during that time frame, where were all the deaths at? Were they all at the gym? Nope. Were they all at, you know, a football game? Nope. They were all in one place, generally in every city. That's where they all were. And a lot of people will tell you, well, he just had like a cough at first and he just went in. You could have had a cough at home, motherfucker. If you got a cough, stay at home and cough. You don't got to, well, I got a cough. I'm kind of nervous. And they did that shit. They put fear in people. Well, I started coughing, so I got scared. So I went in. Next thing you know, I got tubes up my nose. I'm on fucking dialysis machines and all kind of shit. I don't even got diabetes. What the fuck's going on, man? You know, I got a cast on my leg. My leg ain't broken. What the fuck you putting the cast on? They just fucking with people at that point. We're going to insure you for all of this, sir. We're billing you. We're billing your insurance for all this. But my leg ain't broken. Why the fuck you putting the cast on my leg? Just don't go to the hospital. Just don't. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So like I said, ain't none of us really tricked by that shit. And that's why I think a lot of the, the apps, the apps are already in, because they're, they're worldwide. The apps are worldwide. So if you saying that they're about to have another pandemic, they're having another one where people aren't going to be going around. People aren't going to be able to be mobile and moving around. Everybody's got to stay put. What does that mean for rides here? It means there won't be as many rides out. Because I remember when rideshare, the first pandemic, what happened? A lot of drivers just stopped driving. They got scared. They, they were so scared. There were no drivers out. I could be driving around in my Jeep, and I was in the Jeep at the time. I don't see nobody. I was getting pings like crazy. My AR was high as a motherfucker because every ride was good. Every ride had surge on it. Every ride was well paid because not a lot of people was out. But now that everybody made it through it, and we know we're going to keep driving because a lot of people made money in the first pandemic. The apps right now are eating up as much money as they can to say, now we got savings to make it through the next pandemic. Now we got savings now to make it through it. We took all the money we can take out of every community we can fucking rob. We didn't pay out no tips. We done stole all the money in affairs and everything. We could suffer through another pandemic. Now we can make it through it. We got the cash reserves now to do it. And plus, they're trying to sell that billion-dollar bond. That's Uber, trying to sell that billion-dollar bond right now. So Uber wants all the money. And everybody wants all the money. Because if they're really doing this again as a plan again, and all these corporations know, and all these governments know, and all these people know, just pay attention to what's going on. Just pay attention to what's going on, how the money is moving, how people are acting now, how all these companies are already laying people off like crazy. They're not waiting. Look at all these companies that have already closed their doors already. Places like Red Robin, Burger King, fucking Bath and Beyond, all these places. They have closed branches all over America right now. Banks have closed branches all over America right now, all over the world. So if they're doing all of this right now, and all of a sudden everybody's like, people are starting to get sick all over again. Guess what? Ain't nobody going to lay nobody off. They already closed all this shit down. Ain't nobody got to fire nobody. They didn't already got fired already. Any corporation that had to make money, they've already been swindling our ass for, what, the past goddamn year. They've been swindling the shit out of us. So everybody's ramping up for what's planned already. Because like I said, everybody's thinking, this shit is planned. They said it was going to happen, and sure enough, another election is coming up. So you know every election, every election, not every other fucking election, every single election, there has to be some type of war going on or some type, something to... Get the public off kilter. The public has to be off kilter. You can't have a cohesive, everybody outside, everybody's having fun, everybody's living life, everybody's prosperous. You can't have that during the election year. Name one election year where, where shit ain't happened. Just one. 
every year other than elections year should be going normal. Life is normal. Everybody's doing shit. Everybody's got jobs. The economy's either building or not building. But the moment the election is coming up, how can we get people not to gather, not to talk, to be scared of each other, to think each other is a danger, and to use all of the fucking money we got fighting the war to keep everybody's attention somewhere else? I mean, you can't script this shit. You can't script it. It happens every time, every time. That is no coincidence. If it keeps happening every fucking time, it's not a coincidence. This is a plan at that point. It's a plan. You can't keep saying, oh, man, election coming up. Damn, another pandemic. Damn, another war. Damn, all these people getting fired. Damn, all these business. This is planned. This is planned at this point. Yeah, Uber going to get pissed, get phased out for Uber Green. Hope y'all taking notice. So wait, Mike, Uber's going to get phased out for that Uber Green. What do you mean like that? Like they're just going to stop using Teslas because of what's happening with the uh, with Hertz and everything out like that? Or and they're going to uh, Uber X is going to get phased out for Uber Green. I see what you said. I thought you said Uber's OK. Uber X is going to get phased out for Uber Green. We'll see. That's Agenda 2030. What people don't realize is by 2030, they want all anybody who's transportation based, anybody who's transportation based, they want to go like no more internal combustion engines. They want to go electric. They want to go hydrogen. They'll go fucking solar. Whatever the zero emission. Every time you open up Uber, it says zero emission policy under effect, some shit like that. Zero emissions. You know, we're going for zero. And that's yeah, they want obedient minions. That's it. So what they're going to do by 2030 is they're phasing people out. They're getting people to buy maybe 2230 motherfucker. So they're trying to get people to buy nothing but EVs so they can say, we told you, we told you, we told you we can make everything like carbon, you know, free, CO2 free. Glitch Dash, thank you, brother. I appreciate it, my man. I hope you send me an email because I'm going I'm to email you after the, the live stream and everything like that, man, because we got I got something funny, something funny for you, brother. This is going to be good. This is going to be real good. Yeah. And that's the thing. They want everybody to go like this green shit to where you're going to sit up there and be like, well, I have to give up my gas engine that I still owe, you know, four or five years on. But going by EV. So now I got two loans out. Ride share is not paying shit. I got two loans sitting on table. So it's like the drivers are stuck right now. It's a it's a system of, of keeping people in poverty, but not only keeping you in poverty, but it's scaring you to make a move forward. Everybody's scared to make that investment to move forward. Nobody wants to make that investment forward in anything. Nobody wants to buy a house because houses are too expensive. People are apprehensive about buying a fucking car. It's like, and I don't know about buying a car right now, man. The car market's kind of imploding and fucking around this and that. Nobody wants to buy an EV. People are buying EVs, but nobody necessarily says, man, I want my whole family to have EVs. Because all the stories coming out right now about what's going on with the EVs right now, you know, they don't have the infrastructure for them. People are being forced to charge them at home as much as they possibly can. They have to charge these things at home because once you're out on the road trying to travel, go places, do this and that, the risk of you not having charging is, is getting greater. You can't drive from Phoenix to Vegas in a Tesla and not be apprehensive about it because you got to say, okay, where are charger stations on the way? I don't want to get halfway there and not be able to fucking charge. Where are the charger stations at? How long can, do you got a supercharger? Or do I got to sit there for six fucking hours? So now uh, a Tesla ride from, you know, Phoenix to Vegas, instead of being like three, four hours, like a normal car turns to be like eight or nine hours just to get the fucking, it's like, yeah, because they don't have no superchargers. So you're stuck driving from Phoenix to Vegas. You got to stop, charge on a slow charger, three, four fucking hours. Now you got enough to make it to Vegas now. And see, that's what they don't, nobody's trying to go to Vegas and take eight hours. They just rather just jump on a plane, pay like 60 bucks and just fly. Fuck it. 80 bucks and just fly. Be done. Yeah, people are scared to buy Bitcoin right now. Anybody who's holding Bitcoin is holding it. They're not, because it's too volatile. Bitcoin right now is very volatile way more volatile than it's ever been. The shit will spike and drop in the same day. That means some people right now are trying to get out of their investments in Bitcoin. They just waiting on it to peak high enough so they don't lose either as much or they can make a little bit of gain. And I tell people, if you got Bitcoin, just hold that shit, hold it. There's going to be some utility in Bitcoin on this fucking planet at some point. I wouldn't sell Bitcoin if I had it. I wouldn't even sell it. Yeah. Right, Kimmy, right. 
EV is a luxury. It's not for the broke. And I've said that shit before. Again, when I tell people, how can you not sell somebody a car as a dealership and have faith that somebody's going to pay a car off or as a lender, not have faith that somebody's going to pay a car off that's $350 a month. You won't sell them that for $350 a month, but you'll let them lease a fucking EV for $1,500 to $2,000 a month. If you don't think they can afford their car, why are you saying, okay, but, but we're going to rent you this fucking EV for $1,500 a month? That's every week. It's a, it's a play. It's a play. They're playing people. So you don't trust that I can make enough to buy this car at $350 a month, but you think I can rent this car for almost $2,000 a month. You're okay with that. You're okay with that. The shit don't make no sense to me because that's almost four or five times the amount. You saying I can afford something that's four or five times the amount you're saying I can't afford. Shit don't make no sense to me. I'd be sitting there like, how are they, how are all these people, like you go to cer certain apartment complexes, like every other fucking car in there is a Tesla. They only got two charger stations in the apartment complex. Two charger stations in the very front of the apartment complex. Every other fucking car is a Tesla. Like, where are all these Teslas coming from? These are a bunch of delivery drivers, ride share drivers. Everybody's buying these cars and shit. They thinking, oh, yeah, you don't got to do maintenance. At some point, you will. Can you afford it? Are you saving up 20 Gs for a battery? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it hurts that. Forget that shit. Too many tire blowers. You guys got to pay for your own fucking tires. You paying for your own tires. And what Kev said? Kev said, dealerships are bitching about EV mandate because they're not having excess supply of EVs because nobody's buying them. Yeah, they sitting on them all, man. They just sitting on all. You go to a dealership, you see Tesla sitting there covered in dust because everybody is apprehensive about buying them because they're hearing about all the stories about the infrastructure. They're selling cars faster than they're building the infrastructure for the cars. And now you got all these other EV companies coming out with their version of EVs. Where's all these charges going to be at? You got Ford, you got Mazda, you got Honda, you got Hyundai, you got Tesla, you got Toyota, you got Lucid. You got all these motherfucking electric cars out, but you're not increasing the infrastructure to charge these cars up anywhere. And I'm still seeing gas stations being built. They're building a gas station not too far from here. So I'm like, why are you still building gas stations if everybody's going EV? Why are you still building gas stations? That shit don't make no sense. You shouldn't be investing in gas stations. So I think at some point, this whole EV thing is it can't be mandated. It has to be, you know, a right. Do you want an EV or not? The powers that be, like Henry Kissinger and all these motherfuckers, the powers that be are all passing away. And when you get the new change in the Guardian, like they're trying to get all these, these younger politicians, these younger country presidents to, to take the guard, like the dude up in Canada and the girl that was in Australia, all these younger presidents and younger politicians, the old people are like, listen, we're dying off. You guys got to carry the baton for us. Can you do it? I tell people, vote these motherfuckers out. Vote them out. Anybody who's on this new agenda shit, this new world order shit, no, vote these motherfuckers out. Because they didn't think it through. Just like with the whole fucking pandemic, they didn't think that through either. Fucked a lot of people up. A lot of small businesses they fucked over. A lot of people's housing they fucked up. A lot of landlords who were renting houses at the time. They, they didn't think none of this shit through. They just said, today we're going to do this. It's only going to be for two weeks, year and a half, two years later. Motherfuckers still having the same issues. It's like, you said it's just going to be for like two weeks, man. Okay, from two weeks to just, just till we flatten the curve, you know, just until like things curve off some. It's never, if everybody just takes a shot, we're going to flatten the curve a lot faster. Just take the shot. Transmission stops. Everybody's fine. That's how we flatten the curve. More people got to go take the shot. We flatten that curve off. Everybody took that shot. That motherfucker spiked through the roof. And it's like, holy shit. Okay, we lied. If you get the shot, you can actually still transmit the shit. We didn't know that. And you're not immune. Ha! That's the fucking kicker. And you're not immune. We said in the beginning, if you're going to stop transmission. One shot, you're done. Even Rachel Maddow was saying that shit. One shot, that's all you get. You're done. You're cured. You can't pass. You. Can that's what she was saying. She never apologized to people for that bullshit. She never apologized for lying to people, misleading people giving people misinformation. She never apologized for that shit. Because the moment everybody did that, what happened right after that? Everybody kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker. No, no, it's not the shot. They, they must be sick for something else. It can be. Until they just couldn't conceal it no more. They couldn't hide it no more. Okay. You guys really aren't immune. You really are getting sick. You really can pass the shit. Okay. We lied. 
And that's how misinformation became fucking dangerous. That's how it became dangerous. They didn't plan on none of that shit. It was all an experiment. They didn't plan on none of that shit happening. None of that shit happening. And now we're sitting here saying we're going to do that all over again. We're not doing that shit all over again. No, hell no. Hell no. Man, $4.50 for premium, cheap as I've paid in two years. Oh, damn, man. I think I paid about $4 last week for it. $4. Yeah, Mike. Man, that's to discredit a doctor who's been in practice for years, decades. Doctors who went to med school. Doctors went to med school. They had patients. They wrote in journals. They had shit published. They accomplished things. But the moment that doctor told the truth, they discredited him. And they never went back and apologized to none of these. Said, you know, these are all the doctors who we said were blah, blah, blah. What up, King James? They never went back and apologized to none of them. They let that stain stick to each one of those doctors who were telling the truth the whole time. They let that stain stick with them. That He's misinformation. He's an anti-vaxxer. He's lying. He's this and he's that. They never went back and said, you know, we need to clear up all this shit that we said about all these doctors. We're going to go down a the list. They should have put that shit on mainstream news. These are all the doctors who said all of these things that we owe apologies to because everything they said was true. And they should play what the doctor said. They should play what the, the misleading people said. And then they should play the truth right at the end. So let people know who was lying versus who was telling the truth. They would never do that. Running a side-by-side -side comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison of what people were saying that were labeled conspiracy theorists, what people were saying who were labeled, we're telling you the truth, we're telling you. And then when the truth really came out, everybody who claimed they was telling the truth, those motherfuckers just, you have no idea where they are. They never apologized. They never got back on there. Yeah, a lot of them came up missing. I, I, like I said, I don't watch, you know, the news as much as I used to because of all that shit that went on. But I haven't seen a lot of the people that used to be on the news. I haven't seen a lot, like people like Don Lem Lemon and all that, Don Lamont, whatever his fucking name is. I ain't never seen these. I have no idea where these people are now. They all got fucking fired. They're all off the face of the planet right now because nobody listens to their ass. They all bullshitted. And each time you see they fucking face, you play a clip of some shit they said to remind them of what they said. Oh, well, the science was changing. No, mother, the science never changed. Common sense was the science. Common sense was always the science. Common sense told everything up front. They tried to change common sense into an erratic thought, into a conspiracy theory. When it was common sense and it was the truth. And once the truth came out in the end, everybody who told common sense in the beginning were all right. And nobody went, went back and cleared none of that shit up. Nobody went back and cleared it up. So it was like, fuck that, man. Yeah, Kev, I saw that, man. I saw that. Kev said all the servicemen and women that got kicked out because they didn't want to be back. So now they want them to come back because they didn't meet their recruiting goals. Exactly. Exactly. So you kicked all these people out of the military, had them struggling, struggling, driving around, delivering fucking tacos and shit. Goddamn Gordita wraps. Crunch wraps, whatever he said, driving around delivering crunch wraps. They went from holding AR 15s to fucking crunch wraps in one week period of time because they ain't good enough for the military. Y'all not taking these motherfuckers. Y'all not good enough for us. We're going to boot you the fuck out. Go be a driver or something. And all of a sudden, they're like, hey, come back. Motherfucker, I didn't get the shot. That's cool. You don't need it. No, no, no. I'm not doing that. No, no. Fuck that. I'm not coming back now because you played us now. You should go back. Pay back every dime these people fucking lost. Pay back everything, anybody they even dealt with. All the people in the world who got, all these people that are rich right now, all these people in the rich right now, that are rich right now, they got it because they had to impoverish entire generations of people. They had to impoverish, impoverish so many people to get to where they are right now. And these motherfuckers, are, like I said, sitting on record profits. A lot of them are sitting on record profits. Yeah. Dom says, I wasn't able to finish my university because I wasn't vaxxed. I refused, so they disqualified me. And that's when I started ride sharing delivery full time in 2019 20. Yeah, and that shit's crazy, Dom. It's crazy because they never apologize to anybody. And I think what they should do for everybody who they kicked out because they weren't vaxxed back then, they should all automatically 100% get scholarships for how many years they fucking miss. 
If you miss two years, you get a two-year scholarship. University covers everything. Books, whatever the fuck, covers it all. That's a good apology. But instead of just saying, hey, come back. No, even with the military. If you want somebody to come back instead of paying them, you know, the salary they was making, count how many years they missed because of that shit. If they miss two years, you got to give them that two-year salary and one check plus pay them double to come back because they should have never fucking left. But instead, they'd rather all of these motherfucking corporations make money on everybody's back, billions and trillions and billions on people's backs. But when it comes to the citizens, they don't pay us shit. They always have a reason why they can't give us the money. Oh, we can't give you that much money. That's too much money. No, you're giving that much to corporations. These motherfuckers got record profits. You don't mind giving them the money. You're giving people record profits right now. So why you give corporations record profits, profits they never seen ever before, ever will see again. But when it comes time to taking care of a citizen who had to go through the bullshit y'all set up, oh, we can't do that. We voted these motherfuckers in. I'm telling y'all, wake up, man, wake up. We voted these people in. There's people out there right now willing to change everything. Damn, they're back to how it was. Get rid of all the riffraff. We got right now, we've got more people in Congress right now, more people in Congress walking away from their congressional jobs this year than in the history of Congress. Some like 11 or 13 people right now that are Congress people are walking away from the resigning early. When you go to Congress, you keep that shit until you die. Normally, that's how it works. You keep running for that shit every year until you fucking die. You just try to stay in Congress for as long as you can. We got either 11 or 13 motherfuckers saying, I do not want to do this job no more. This is a bunch of fuckery going on. This is a bunch. It's in the paper. Like I tell motherfuckers, I read a lot of shit. A lot of shit comes down the pipe. And we may not talk about it in Roger that much, but it does affect Roger. These people do make policies and rules that affect Roger. And when they start shutting everything down, a lot of drivers going to be affected. Delivery might pick up, but a lot of drivers going to be affected. When they're not, you know, regulating all of these fucking companies, we're getting affected because they're not regulating people. And, and until we stand up as people and say, hey, when your own people in Congress are walking away because y'all not doing a good fucking job and y'all can't figure this shit out. We need more transparency on what's going on in Congress. We need to know what the fuck is really going on in them walls over there because we're paying a lot of good money to have good representation in this country and we're not getting it. Our money is not fucking getting what we're paying for. It's like you walk in and go buy a Cadillac, you drive off the lot in the motherfucking Bu Buick Skylark. You're like, wait a fuck a minute. This car is from 1988. I just paid for a 2023 fucking Cadillac. Well, we had 1988 Skylark sitting right over there. It was clean as a motherfucker. So we just gave it to you. But that's not what I paid for. I paid for that 2023. I just dropped you motherfuckers off hunting $23,000. That is a one-of-a-kind Buick fucking Skylark. It's worth $123,000. Not to me, it's not, motherfuckers. <laughs> you just trying to give me some shit I ain't sell. I ain't buying, yeah. No, look like the surge is staying six feet away. I could never catch that motherfucker. Hey, you know what you got to do? You got to, hey, Claudio, get your motherfucking selfie stick. Drive around with a selfie stick in your phone, sticking off the front of your car like a javelin. Drive that motherfucker around the city. <laughs> you would catch the motherfucking surge at the front end of your car. They'd be like, dude, this car riding around with a selfie stick hanging off the front of the car. Motherfucker, that's an Uber driver. These motherfuckers trying to catch surge. Shit, we all looking like ships and shit driving the streets. Motherfucker throwing, you got your motherfucking phone on a goddamn fishing pole. You just launch that motherfucker and reel that shit back in. Did you catch the surge? Nope. Throw that shit back out. Oh shit, $2.50. Not big enough. Throw that shit back in. Throw it back in. <laughs> you sitting there trying to catch surge in a fucking parking lot, throwing your shit across the street, dragging that motherfucker back across the concrete. <laughs> phone crack like a motherfucker. You barely see shit. The pixels all fucked up. The phone all cracked. You're like, dude, I think I just caught $11 surge across the street. <laughs> Throwing that motherfucker. Throwing that motherfucker. Yeah, DoorDash is unsustainable. Four different parties trying to grab the same pennies. And Vartan, that's what's going on in ride share right now. It's too many people trying to grab money off of one rider. Because you've got the airport trying to get his money. The state trying to get their money. Uber and Lyft trying to get their money. And the driver trying to get our money. So you got four motherfuckers on every single person trying to get money out of that person. And that's why it might just be that time, man. Get them business cards printed up. Start chatting with motherfucking drivers as you riding around. They're like, hey, man, you guys, y'all ever need to ride or something like that? I need to keep checking my phone, making sure. Make sure nobody need to ride. 
Like, hey, man, y'all need to ride or something like that? Oh, man, you, you do private rides too? Here's my car. Take a picture of that motherfucker. Send it to a couple of your friends, man. I do private rides. And next thing you know, it's like, hey, one of these days, you gonna that phone going to ring. You're going to get two or three of them motherfuckers back to back. And you're like, damn, I'm so glad I gave my card out that week. So glad. Oh, yeah. Hey, Kim, I'm, I feel that shit. Let's put our money together and put it toward the next candidate who will help us. Real shit. I've been saying that for a while. If there's a way we can get a fucking one of these representatives to say, hey, I will run for fucking Congress or run for whatever the fuck. And I'm a ride share driver. And you really run for Congress. and You really win that shit. And you say my whole platform is, is ride sharing gig work, gig community. Imagine how many gig workers out there in this world will support you. They won't give a fuck what your position is. They don't care if you Republican. They won't care if you Democrat, independent, Green Party, Weed Party. Was that the marijuana party? They don't give a fuck who you are at this point. If you say I'm here to represent gig workers in this country and I'm going to only dig with gig related issues. Guess what? That motherfucker's winning. How many people are not only gig workers, but how many family members do these gig workers have? How many family members do these gig work? I mean, you got a wife, you got a husband, you got sons that are old enough, daughters that are old enough, aunts, uncles, parents that are old enough. That motherfucker's going to win the seat. That motherfucker might fuck around win the White House. <laughs> we got our first Uber XL driver as the fucking president. <laughs> this motherfucker come around the corner and you think that somebody bringing a president to the White House. No, this motherfucker's dropping people off. It's like, hey, dog, I'm going to be in there to sign them bills and shit. I got to finish dropping these motherfuckers off real quick. I just Then I got another fucking reservation. I'll, I'll be right back. Look at the president. This motherfucker's still driving Uber XL. <laughs> He's an amazing guy. <laughs> Riding with Ryan said, Jeff Watts for AZ District 3. <laughs> Hell yeah. Shit. Man, Uber and Lyft will be, they'll, they'll never put surge in our area. I'll be like, you have to put surge in this area and not take it until everybody gets it, motherfucker. That's the new law. Shit. Congress forgot who they work for, not you, for those who pay for their vote. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what big ones? Exactly. Sell yourself. Shit. But Kev, man, I would not make a good politician because I'm telling you, I would probably make it in politics about a month. After that, they'd be trying to expel my ass. They'd be like, this dude right here never votes the right way. We always keep telling him, Jeff, do this because we're going to fucking do a play. We're going to vote this way and trick them into making them vote this way for us. No, I don't like that shit. I don't like the game, man. I don't like the game. Take care of motherfucking citizens. If we, they paying us to come here and to do this work, we need to do this fucking work. You say, can't get a vote yet. Got chased surge down by the Pentagon. <laughs> exactly. Motherfucker in the Air Force One trying to catch up. Hey, man, can you fly a little lower? They got $25 surge right over that fucking building over there. Motherfucker. Look at Air Force One dipping down into Detroit. Motherfucker picked up a surge in Saginaw. <laughs> like, shit, I'm in Sag Nasty right now picking up a surge. Thank you, President. <laughs> but I'm like, Shit, drop me the fuck off. I'm going to use this surge real quick. I'm going to go over here to Economy Walk, Wisconsin. Use my motherfucking surge. Like, dude, you were the president. You were not a driver anymore. Get out of that fuck. No, man, I'm a driver for life. Fuck that. They'd be like, man, we got a war going on over in Ukraine. What do you think, president? Man, let me drop these motherfuckers off around the corner at Walmart. This motherfucker right here, man, they only tip me. I'll be right back. Hold on. President, you got to speak to the camp. Fuck that. Be late for the press conference. Why you late at the press conference? Because this motherfucker I was waiting on at the goddamn ASU was taking too long, man. I told these kids I got to go. I got a press conference, man. Y'all got to hurry the fuck up. Let's go. <laughs> he like, the president is still doing ride share. He's an amazing fucking guy. <laughs> like, shit. I'm like, hey, man, we got a motherfucking streak bonus coming up. I might not be at this whole motherfucking meeting. We got a streak bonus starting at 9 o'clock, so you motherfuckers got to speed this shit up. I'm getting this fucking three for 25. <laughs> the Air Force one with a blue Uber light in the front window. <laughs> Motherfucker, you can't land the airport unless you got an Uber light or a lift light. Motherfucker, airport security walking up. Is, is this an Uber? Yeah, you got your stickers on. I'm like, yeah, mother, this is the president. I don't give a fuck. This motherfucker's an Uber driver. We know him. You got to have an Uber light on your shit, Prez. You got to, we fucking, you know, send a picture of the Uber and fucking kick you out the airport, man. President got kicked out of the airport for not having an Uber sticker on this fucking airplane. God damn. Uber Force One. Fuck Air Force One. Uber Force One. Motherfucker be landing and shit. <laughs> like, hell no. Shit. 
Well, I'd be sitting there waiting on them all. I was like, man, I'm going to cancel this motherfucker. I'm telling you, the president, he's going to, they'd be like having the news around me and shit. President's about to cancel Shelly if Shelly doesn't hurry up. Man, this bitch better hurry the fuck up, man. I'm going to cancel her motherfucking ass. We got a goddamn joint chief of staff meeting coming up. She got fucking 45 seconds. I'm going to cancel this shit, get that $3. I got to get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What up, Alpha John, my man? What good? What? He said, "What's up, Jeff? I hope you're doing good. You should tell drivers that we don't do Uber Share because if the rider is requesting Uber Share, he already wants to pay cheaper than Uber X. So the chance that the rider is going to give you a tip is zero. Oh yeah, I already. Like I said, the only way I'll do Uber Share because I've done it like maybe three or four times total. The miles got to be like three, four dollars a mile. That's it. Because even two dollars a mile for Uber X Share is not good because it's going to be real short. It's going to be like two miles." four bucks don't do it let that shit be like nine dollars for like three miles that's it i'll do that shit i'll do it Uber nine dollars three miles i'll do it because as soon as they get in you turn them off we're gonna stop the request you do not let nobody else get in your car fuck that get that three dollars a mile and get going because if it's any like i'll be getting these motherfuckers you know 30 miles for like 21 dollars uber x share nope because they're not gonna tip you they're looking for the cheapest ride possible Either that, or I thought either that or the apps know that this person paid a big chunk of money, but the apps haven't made enough revenue for the day. So how are they going to make up the revenue? It's kind of funny how they start throwing a lot of Uber X shares at your ass when their ship is almost up. It's like, wait a minute, I've been on the road, you know, for three, four hours a day. I know it's about to turn to two, three o'clock in the morning. And all of a sudden, all these Uber X shares start popping up. I think they're trying to like hit the profit numbers for the day. Like, dude, if we keep driving on, if these people are ordering Uber X, man. Everybody's ordering Uber X. Nobody's ordering Uber XL. Nobody's ordering Uber Black. They're only ordering Uber X right now. Well, let them order Uber X, but pay all these motherfuckers at Uber Share rates. Don't don't pay them an Uber X rate. Pay them at an Uber Share rate. So people are probably ordering Uber Xs, but they're like selling at an Uber Share, just like with Lyft. A lot of people are saying these people are paying Lux prices. They're still paying for Lux on their phone. But they're giving the driver a lift rate. And just like when I used to tell people <clears throat> all the time, when I had a lift on, I used to put it on all. When I first was doing it, I would put it on all. I would get some lift rides, lift rides, lift rides. Get like six or seven lift rides, then get one Lux ride. You'd be like, yeah, man, there's just not a lot of Lux rides out there. Then when I figured the shit out, I just left it on Lux. I would get all Lux rides all fucking day. I'd be like, why would these motherfuckers do that? Because people were probably paying for Lux. But because I had it on all rides and I had it on Lyft and everything, they would pay me Lyft. The person would pay for Lux and they'd be like, yeah, we're going to send you this nice ass clean BMW on Lux. You just you're in luck. We got a nice Lux in the area. But because I had the shit marked all rides, they would pay me the Lyft fare. They were like, no, he's cool with the Lyft fare. How you know? Because he's got it on all fucking rides. He's cool with the Lyft fare. Pay him the Lyft fare. He accepted it. Take it. Keep the fucking Lux money. It's like, man. No, uh, -uh. So did you hear about the Chipotle customer who threw the bowl at the worker? The George, the judge ordered her to work fast food. What is this world coming to? What the fuck? <clears throat> so you telling me you can throw a fucking Chipotle bowl at somebody, smack them in the fucking face. The judge will say you need to work fast. What's next? A motherfucker shoot you, and the judge order you now to work at the gun shop? Say, like, oh, since you shot that motherfucker, we're gonna go have you work at the gun store. How about that? You can sell guns now. You want to shoot a motherfucker? You could sell guns now. How about that? How do you feel now? I'll be like, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, we're going to have you working at the bullet counter. How about you go sell fucking bullets, too, while you're at it? You want to sell bulletproof vests? You just killed a motherfucker, Jeff. You go sell bulletproof vests now. That's your punishment. Like, what the fuck are we doing in this world, man? It's like you're giving these criminals way too many soft fucking things. No, <laughs> what Mike said, the Roger guy needs to have you and get rid of John Dread Sergio. It was an honor and pleasure to meet you. It, it was an honor and pleasure to meet uh to meet you to meet with you, Dara. An honor, pleasure, Sergio's a shield now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I would, and that's the thing, man. I would have if I ever met with somebody who I felt could change any type of corporate culture. Because the CEOs usually bring in their own form of culprit culture. Then I would tell them right now, drivers don't like you for a fucking reason. There's a lot of theft going on. You need to have a quality control, an audit control panel, something, spot audits. You need to have something going on to give these drivers the, the reliability 
that y'all ain't still in fares and y'all ain't still in tips. Because right now, drivers don't believe that shit. <clears throat> and a lot of drivers are going cash basis, cash app, Venmo. And once that shit happens, pff, Uber and Lyft's going to lose a lot of money on the back end. Because they're going to be like, why the fuck are we not getting a, a bunch of cash coming down the pipe? Because everybody's doing shit outside of the Uber and Lyft system. They don't trust the Uber and Lyft system. The Uber and Lyft system is improving to steal too much. Yeah, exactly. I want to put stickers on my windows. Fuck that. It was in the news. Uh, uh. Yeah, what state was that? It was probably L.A., no telling. Because you know a lot of these states, man, they, they, they're they getting too overcrowded with the prison. And this is what I think. This is honestly what I think. You remember when they were building all those prisons at one point in time? They were building all these prisons. Why are they building all these prisons, but they're not putting people in prison? They're just giving people like the softest fucking punishments ever, letting people out, no bail, no nothing. I'm like, but they just built a ton of fucking prisons, even right before COVID and during COVID. They were building a ton of prisons. What up, Silver Fox? So if you're building all these prisons and all these criminals are not going to these prisons, what are you investing all of this money into prisons for? What's really real? Because they probably got paid. All these prisons got built probably by New World Order. And once New World Order is like, hey, we finally got a place to house and facilitate all the people we're going to now you know, put in prison over political things going on because we know one day, especially in America, we know the political climate in America is a ticking time bomb. We know that shit. Ain't nobody stupid. Ain't nobody. We see what's going on because we saw what went on in Venezuela. What happened in Venezuela? They rose up against the current president because the current president wouldn't leave. He wouldn't leave. So everybody's like, well, then they started putting people in prison. And they started putting anybody in prison who was standing up against the president who, who lost and wouldn't leave. They started throwing people in prison. So guess what's going to happen in America? When all of our votes stop counting, when people start raising up and being pissed off and saying, we think this shit is, is shady and something's going on. When people start standing up, all these prisons they just built that they're not putting in all these people that are looting, all these people that are not rioting, assaulting each other, this and that. They ain't putting none of these people in prison right now. These prisons are not for them. These prisons are New World Order prisons that are going to be putting in people who are standing up against the establishment that won't admit that they ain't going no fucking where even if they lose. People are going to be pissed off. People are going to be real pissed off. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Once you see, Drivers in California said they don't, don't put in your window. Some drivers are targeting Uber drivers trying to get in car accidents on purpose so they can get paid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they know if they see an Uber light or a Lyft light on your car, you are a target. Either a target of a carjacking or, like you said, it's insurance. It's insurance. Oh, just get that driver to rear in you. They'll bump into you on purpose and shit. Bump into you. Oh, man, you hit me, dog. You hit me. If you ain't got it on camera, oh, shit. They're going to just tell Uber and Lyft, well, you know, my neck hurt, my back hurt, my foot hurt, and I got a cast on, motherfucker. And I got pneumonia. Motherfucker hit me so hard, I got pneumonia. Like, your car ain't even got a dent in it. What the fuck do you mean? <laughs> so I don't run the lights, yeah. And see, that's the thing. A lot of us who are looking at the, the American political system and how things are going right now, the way we're looking at it and the way that all these laws are being changed, the prisons are being changed. They're bringing in all of these new people to our soil. If they're bringing in all of these new people to our soil that came in this country, quote unquote, illegally, they came in illegally. But they were made to be legal so they wouldn't be considered a break in the law. But we're building all of these prisons. What are we building the prisons for? Like I said, it, it's not rocket science. They're building these, and a lot of people say, well, they're building the prisons, you know, to, to put more black people in. They're, you know, we got a lot of, lot of crime in the black regions and stuff like that. No, because then these prisons will be full by now. Because we've seen a lot of riots, a lot of protests, a lot of theft, a lot of theft rings. We've seen a lot of shit going on. I think they're building these prisons for a bunch of people who are like supportive of this being a free country. They're very supportive of this being a free country. That's what these prisons are being built for. People who do not want to give up their freedoms. People who do not want to, you know, lose like even what they're doing with, with Trump. What are they doing with him? Threatening prison because he had a an opinion. Exactly. The J6 people and everything like that. 
he had an opinion that he felt the election was rigged. The count was wrong. There was election fraud. And now we're seeing in the paper all these investigations popping up of all these these voting machines going bad. All of these votes being the fraudulently, all these people selling ballots, selling ballots, buying fucking votes, dumping ballots in big ass barrels. We're seeing this shit everywhere now. There's video evidence of it everywhere. Not just people typing it and saying it. There's actually video evidence of it everywhere. So that means he was right. There was fraud going on widespread fraud going on so if there's widespread fraud going on he was really right and they still put him in prison for being right these prisons are built for people who are going to support what was right not what was wrong you don't you should be building prisons for people who support crime you should be building prisons for people who are criminals you should be building people prisons for people who want to go out and commit crime and induce crime not for people who want to fight corruption. Police usually fight corruption. Investigative agencies usually fight corruption. A lot of people that fight corruption should be the people in our in our cities helping us fight corruption. That's what they should be doing. But instead, the corrupt people are building all these new prisons for anybody who stands against them. Stacey Abrams down in Georgia doubted an election. She wouldn't even concede. She wouldn't even concede. She was like, I didn't lose this election. This election was rigged. This election was stolen. I ain't concede nothing. This election was fake. This was a fake election. She wouldn't concede for nothing. But you'd be racist, racist to say this black lady should be thrown in jail for committing an, an act of treason against America for not abiding by the results of an election. You'd be considered racist for that shit. But yet, it's all in writing. It's what she did. She didn't like the results of the election. She claimed it was rigged. She said she had all this evidence that was rigged. Nobody wants it. And like I said, in the end of the day, people were scared of the political correctness of saying this lady should be thrown in jail for what she's saying. And everybody said, oh, she should be thrown in jail just because y'all trying to hold her down and she don't want to be held down. She want to say y'all lied and y'all want to investigate the lies. But yet. If somebody else said, hey, they lied, investigate these lies, we're going to throw you in jail for saying that because he's not a black woman. That's the thing. <laughs> it's like, if he was a black woman, yeah. So statistically, what happened didn't make any sense. Silver Fox, I got to agree with you on that shit. I got to agree with you on that. Statistically, what happened? I mean, you can go by the numbers. Go by the numbers alone. The numbers are literally impossible to hit. With the amount of registered voters we have in this country, with the amount of votes that people claim was done. We only got so many registered voters in this country, so many. So where did all these new voters come from out of the blue? Where did they come from out of the blue? They at that point in time, illegal people probably, you know, weren't in this country at the massive number they are now. So you can't say, oh, it's a bunch of Ill illegal people voting. Well, now they can probably vote because now we're giving undocumented people documented rights we're allowing people to say hey even though you don't have a document you could do things in america that a documented person would do such as vote possibly and that's what they're pushing right now saying because you here and you pay taxes and you live here and you pay in state tax sales tax federal excise tax income taxes it makes you a citizen and you should vote for the person who allowed you to become that citizen without jumping through all the fucking red tape what party is the party that fought in the Civil War to defend slavery, to defend slavery, to keep it going? Somebody said, we want to keep slavery going. We want to keep poverty going, keep control over these people going. I ain't got to tell you. I don't have to tell you. Everybody knows history of this fucking country. I ain't got to tell you shit, so I ain't got to say it. But then you see right now, when we're talking about slavery going on right now, slavery repeating itself right now, what party right now is promoting that agenda? to keep people coming into this country, to not have be educated about this country, to understand the economics of this country or to understand anything about this country other than come here and just work for whatever we give you. Whatever we give you. We even heard YouTubers say that shit. Just work for whatever we give you. You should be happy with whatever we give you. That's slave mentality right there. That's plantation mentality right there, in my opinion. It ain't about working for what you should feel you're valued for. 
state your price and let's see if we can meet you in the middle. It ain't none of that kind of talk. No, this is worth for what we pay you. If I give you a fucking some scraps off my table, then that's what you get paid, some scraps off my table. And that's basically what they're giving these drivers. 30 cents a fucking mile, it scraps off your table. 40 cents a mile, scraps off your table. We wouldn't get in that shit with the rate cards. People right now going for, these, these companies in Minnesota are going for $1.24 a mile. They got a few options, $1.24 a mile and like so much a minute. And then the other one's $1.17 a mile with so much a minute. And Uber's like, Uber and Lyft both, we're not paying that. We're not paying that. But when y'all had the rate cards, that's kind of what people were making with the rate cards. They didn't like the rate cards because the rate cards made them liable for traffic, waiting in traffic, made them liable for changing course. It made them liable for the time that they started that ride to the time they ended that ride. It made them liable for it. And they didn't want to be liable for that. They want to pay you as less as they possibly can pay you. That's what these apps want to do. Pay you as less as they possibly can pay you. And it's sad that we have some of these gig tuber channels, actual gig tuber channels saying, we agree. They should want to pay you less than what, I mean, they're a corporation. They should. They're saying they should. No morality, no morality, no fight for the driver behind their statement. They should want to pay you as less as physically possible. Well, what about my family? Fuck your family. What about my dad that I got to take care of that's sick? Fuck your dad. What about my kids that I got to pay for daycare? Fuck your kids. They should want to pay you as less as physically possible so they can survive as a corporation and all the people in their corporation can take care of their kids, their dad, their life, have excess money, record profits. But me as a driver in these fucking streets driving, driving, doing the actual work of letting the motherfucker get in my car, slide across my leather fucking seats, get them four motherfuckers to where they want to be, and you try to slide me $4 and you retain $14 out of that $18. You saying, fuck you, Jeff. That's what you saying. That's what you really saying. Man, don't get me started on this shit. <laughs> what up, Tyler? Because <laughs> I know what it feels like, man. I know what that shit feels like. We out here in these streets really doing this shit. And to hear somebody really sit up in our face and tell us the corporation should be wanting to pay you less. You're not fighting for us. You're not. You're not. You're a fucking shell, a shell of a person to say, oh, I used to be a driver. Then you should know how hard it is to drive in these motherfuckers. You should know about our expenses. $311 thermostats. Motherfuckers trying to make us drive on base fares. And what do they say? Well, just go get a cheaper car. Go get a cheaper car. They don't have Uber X no more because they replaced them with Uber Green. So now I got a, a loan on a Lux car I can't use no more. I got a loan on a cheaper car I can't use no more. And now I got to go get a fucking Uber green because they did away with Uber X now. So now I got three motherfucking cars, not getting paid shit. Poverty all over again. Poverty. Uh Oh, there you go. Alt Hex, my man. Going to bed. Got an early pickup at 530. Take your All right, brother. Get up in the morning, man. Get up in the morning, brother. Get that money, my man. Get that money. Q lights, right? Apps and minimal jobs, man. That's it. That's it. And if we, as, as citizens of this country, who and citizens of this world, I would say of this world, citizens of this world who make these communities work, there is no motherfucker sitting in no corporate desk right now. Nobody at no corporate desk right now. Nobody answering no fucking receptionist desk in the lobby right now. Out in the middle of the community right now, doing anything right now. These motherfuckers don't touch us. They don't touch us. They don't touch what what drivers do. They don't touch what delivery drivers do, what rideshare drivers do. They don't touch us when it comes to touching this world and making these communities operate how they operate. Seeing the smiles on people's fucking faces when we show up and they're like, oh, thank God. I'm so glad somebody here to pick me up. Thank God. So, okay. You get in the car. How much did you pay for this ride? $24. Damn, you paid $24. Thank God. I, I, I was so tired. You know, I just my phone was about to die. I had to pay $24. You know, they're giving me like $8 for this ride, right? This is three miles. I know it was, but they said it was surge pricing and everything. Ain't no motherfucking surge pricing going on. We were wondering, you know, why we couldn't find a ride so long. We thought it was a high demand or something. Surge, we paid $24 for this ride. No, ain't no fucking surge added to this ride. Ain't no surge. 
And these riders don't know this kind of shit because they're told something different on their phones than what we're told on our phones. We don't all have the, like I said, some people, some drivers out there will look on the app to see if they can see their own car. Many of them can't see their own car. These riders are not being told there's a car around the fucking corner from you. There's a car right down the street. They're going to be told, no, we can't find a car. We're locating a car for you. Don't worry. We're locating a car. When we find one, we'll get it to you. By the time they find one, they've moved the price up from $16 to $18, $18 to $22, $22 to $28. We found a car for you. Motherfuckers been a car sitting around the corner the whole time. But they've been fucking with people, making you think we're trying to find you a car. There's a car with an Uber light on that Circle K over there. I just saw the motherfucker drop a donut in the parking lot. How come he can't come get me? And that's why they got to walk over there. Hey, man, you an Uber driver? Yeah. Do you have to do cash rides? Yeah. The apps are trying to charge me $24. I live in these apartments right down the street, maybe two, three miles. I don't know. Give me 10 bucks, 15 bucks. I don't know. Perfect. Perfect. Like tonight. Like tonight. I went out tonight and I did my reservation. I mean, my uh, my private ride. These people were so grateful that I blocked my time up, not only blocked it open, but I adjusted my time for them, showed up 30 minutes later than they wanted me to originally show up. I was just sitting at quick trip. So I'm waiting on the time to expire. I'm sitting at quick trip. Finally go pick them up, get them, play the music. I said 40 bucks, 40 bucks. It was like, we got you. We got you. I was like, all right, cool, cool. No problem. No problem. She didn't bother me. I was cool. 40 bucks. Motherfuckers gave me a hundred dollars, hundred dollars. This is what riders want to do for drivers. They don't want to get that shit to the apps. Why the fuck they going to give a hundred dollars to the apps? Knowing me as a driver going from Chandler all the way to downtown, they're going to probably pay me $19. Ninth from Chandler is right on Warner and Priest. Warner and Priest, right next to the 10. Because all I did was just take, they live right, I just went up, went on freeze, hopped on the 10, took the 10 all the way around the 3rd Street, took 3rd Street South, dropped them off on Washington. Because I just bypassed all the traffic and shit. The app would have probably paid me $19, $20. That's really what they would have paid me. These motherfuckers gave me $100. A hundred. Private ride. I ain't drove all fucking week. I just made $100 this week. <laughs> But it's like if I would have drove with the app, I would have made $19. These riders out here want drivers. We are the drivers. We got to get these business cards made up. We got to talk to these fucking people. We got to quit sitting around expecting to be fed. You've got fucking gig tube channels telling them your fucking face. Oh, you deserve what they give you. You should be happy with that. Fuck that. Take what you feel you deserve because they're not going to give you. We got drivers in Minnesota right now being, hey, man, this is all we asking for. You guys got record profits. You guys could take care of us. You know what? If we do what you're asking, we're fucking pulling anchor and we're out of here. Both apps said that. Both apps. Not one app. Not Uber saying, you know what? We're going to pull anchor and leave. Lyft, you can have this shit. And Lyft be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we got more ride. We got more riders now, more drivers. We got more market share. Lyft didn't say, hey, we're out of here. And Uber's like, oh, we got the whole market share now. No, both apps in unison, in conjunction with each other, said, if we have to pay ride share drivers these amounts, we are out of this fucking state. Both apps said that shit. So you can't tell me these motherfuckers don't work together. You can't tell me they don't work together. They're being ran by the same people. They're just two different names. That's why the government should be investigating this shit for a monopoly. They're controlling prices, price manipulating. They're stealing, theft, fraud, and nobody wants to investigate this shit. Like I'm saying, these motherfuckers is out here smacking people in the face with Chipotle bowls, and they've been told, well, you can have a job here. They don't give a fuck about criminals no more. These people do not give a fuck about criminals no more. I might fuck around tomorrow, go to Chipotle, smack a motherfucker with a Chipotle bowl. Be like, can I work here? Well, now you have to. You just smack fucking Becky in the face with a Chipotle bowl. Go put on a smock. <laughs> you work here now, motherfucker. Go put on a smock. Shit. Can I actually eat one? <laughs> you can eat the one you hit her with. How about that shit? That's free. <laughs> like, okay. 
<laughs> they ain't even doing shit. Total for the week, 350. Silver Fox and S thing, 350. You got tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow you bang out another three, 350. Saturday, second day of the month. But like I said, early, this is early in the month. Early in the month. Motherfuckers is paying rent right now. And these apps are smacking people over the fucking head right now. People got to pay rent. Early in the month is always going to be slow for us, I think, for eternity. And I think the apps know that. The apps are getting people desperate. Early in the month, they know everybody's like loan cash. Everybody's paying shit. So what are they doing? Making sure they're charging the point of elasticity to where we don't have, we don't have no money for a tip. Because they're giving all the, yeah, it'll be over on the six. Yeah, it'll be over on the six. So we don't get money for tips. We just don't because they're charging everybody too much to even tip us this early in the fucking month. What John say? All the gig drivers that are subscribed to those channels that say we deserve to drive for those fares should unsubscribe from those channels and give a thumbs down on all the videos. <laughs> hey, John, you know what's so funny? I don't really talk about this shit, but it's funny that you said that I should take a picture of it. There's a video I did. The video where I was telling motherfuckers that um, it was the second video ago. And it was me saying, you know what? You motherfuckers, I know who you motherfuckers are. Just say my fucking name. I understand who the fuck y'all are, whatever this and that. I had more dislikes on that video than any video I've ever done. And you know why? Because it's those motherfuckers who felt guilty about that shit. They sending their people to my channel or they're sending themselves to my channel to click thumbs down on it. I told motherfuckers, I don't care if you click thumbs down on my shit or my channel. Give a shit. It means I'm punching you in the fucking gut, which is exactly what I should be doing. I ain't never seen that many thumbs downs on a fucking video. I was laughing like a motherfucker. I was like, ooh, I done pissed these motherfuckers off. I done hit the hornet's nest on these motherfuckers. I love it. I love it because I keep them bitches watching. That's why I love it. I keep them bitches watching. They on this fucking channel around real drivers, doing how real drivers feel, how they talk, what we comment about, what we saying. They know this channel is, is 100 ass channel. And I'm glad they here. Those thumbs down motherfuckers, I'm glad they here. Because there's nothing they can do to anything we say on this channel that's real, that can be seen on every channel. It's all real. Ain't shit over here fucking made up. None of this shit's made up. And anybody, and I tell motherfuckers, go look at that channel. Go look at it. Go look at it. When you go hear those motherfuckers, you form your own opinion. When you hear somebody say, oh, you drivers don't deserve shit. You deserve exactly what they give you. Y'all don't deserve shit. Y'all ain't doing shit but driving. Y'all ain't shit. This is their company. This is their corporation. This is their app. Fuck y'all driving. Fuck y'all car. Fuck your tires, your brakes, your motherfucking oil, your goddamn brake fluid. Fuck all that. Be happy with what they give you. And if you don't like it, let's go get a different fucking job. Go get a different job. But you never hear a motherfucker say that shit about school teachers who are saying, we don't think we're being paid fairly in today's economy. We're going to go on strike. Everybody supports the fucking teachers. Teach these kids right. And go out there and pay these teachers right. All these, we paid all this fucking money. You know, pay these teachers right. Get these teachers the benefits they need. Get them the health care they need. Get, every time teachers go on strike. Pilots go on strike. We support the pilots. Anybody go on strike. We support UAW. Even the president show the fuck up. President show the fuck up. We support UAW. They should be paid more. They should be having more benefits. They should have more security, this and that. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rush your drivers say, we think we should be paid more. Go get another fucking job. What are you celebrating for? Go get another fucking job. You ain't protesting shit. If you don't like it, go get another fucking job. A ride share channel said this shit. And y'all know it. What did they say? Who said that? Fucking Harry on the ride share guy. I ain't got to fucking be ashamed to say his fucking name. I'll say a motherfucker. Harry on the ride share guy said that shit. Clearly on video. I didn't make that shit up. He said that. If they don't like it, they can just go get another fucking job. This is their corporation. They do what they want to do. If you don't like what they pay you, I mean, they'll pay you what they want to pay you. If you don't like it, since when did a motherfucker not support drivers? Since when did somebody stand up and go, you know what? That shit is kind of low for this economy, man. It's, it is kind of low. It's kind of fucked up, man. Can't nobody live off that shit. Drivers are out here putting their cars on the line, putting their lives on the line, getting stabbed and shot and beat up in fucking cars and shit. Women getting sexually assaulted in fucking cars and shit. I mean, we could do drivers better. Drivers are humans. They are people. Corporations are making record profits. But in order to make this, in order to make this a workable ride share environment, we need to take care of the party of the equation that's doing the fucking driving. Because without drivers driving, what do you have? Oh, well, they're going to go to autonomous cars. Well, they ain't got autonomous cars right now. They ain't got the motherfuckers right now. But they're using their profits right now and that billion dollar bond right now to go get it.
they're trying that right now. Like I said, this is what people are saying on the internet. If they don't want me to say the shit that they're saying and say their name and say they fucking channel, then don't say it on the internet. Because once you put that shit on the internet, you just made it public. You made how you think public, how you feel fucking public. We know your name. We know your channel. You said the shit. Don't be mad at me because I'm repeating what the fuck you said. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at yourself for letting yourself slip the fuck up and say, well, you know, we on this channel, we don't really give a fuck about drivers. We don't support drivers. And if drivers don't like it, they can go get another fucking job. If they don't like what Uber and Lips paying them, go get another. We need a representative motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Joseph, they do. I know they getting kickbacks. These motherfuckers is at the table, right? Shaking hands and shit. Thank you so much. Hey, why don't you present our product? Because what the rideshare guy is, is a rideshare channel. It is not a rideshare driver's channel. You see how we did that? The rideshare guy, when you type that shit in, there's passengers. Passengers are looking at this shit too. Not just drivers. Because they're one of the biggest channels. People in Roger might want to go, well, I wonder what Roger is. What are... Guess whose video is going to pop up? Those, not mine. Those. And Roger's going to go, oh, shit, this is about us. We're taking care of fucking drivers. We're taking care of riders. This is about us. Me, I'm a Roger driver channel. So my channel should be called the Roger driver guy. Fuck the Roger guy. I'm the Roger driver guy. <laughs> Put the word driver in that motherfucker. Because I'm not just a rideshare guy. No. Because not every channel supports drivers. Not every channel feels fucking drivers. Not every channel has passion for the drivers and the families of motherfuckers out here dying in these fucking cars every day. There was a drunk driver one time smacked in Phoenix, smacked a fucking Uber car, killed the Uber driver and all the passengers in the motherfucker. And you telling me, that dude's family don't deserve shit for his sacrifice, for him going out trying to feed his fucking family. He don't deserve shit. Oh, huh? well, he could have did something. He could have worked at a library. You ain't got no fucking heart. You ain't got no fucking heart if that's your goddamn reply. Well, he could have worked anywhere. He didn't have to work right here. He could have worked anywhere. We could say that about anything. Anybody that dies. Oh, well, you didn't have to live in Gaza. You could live any fucking where. You didn't have to live in Israel. You didn't have to live in Ukraine. You didn't have to live in Somalia. You didn't have to live in fucking Nigeria. You could live anywhere. So the fact that you're dying in those fucking countries means you chose to live in those countries, motherfucker. You should die. That's basically what they're saying about ride share drivers. If we die while we doing this, it's a choice. Well, you chose to do it. Yeah, these motherfuckers choose to live in certain countries too. But you see us sending a hundred billion fucking dollars over there trying to help, trying to fucking help. You don't think rideshare drivers can use $100 billion in this motherfucking country? Imagine if all the rideshare drivers in this country just said, you know what? We need to go through the books to see who all's a rideshare driver, deactivated or not, over the past five years. Each one of these motherfuckers, we're giving them $200,000 cash today, tax-free. The economy will be jump-started so fucking much. I'd pay off my loans. I'd probably buy some cool shit. I'd jump-start the shit out this economy. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate the super chat, brother. I appreciate the super chat, brother. Russia drivers have been working so fucking hard for the past five, six, seven, eight years. We'd all go on vacations. We'd all go buy new clothes. We'd be buying fucking good little restaurants that we've been dropping motherfuckers off at for the past decade. We go there and eat every day. We sit on 200,000. We would jumpstart the shit out of the economy. Imagine how many Russia drivers are in this fucking country, in this country alone, not even other countries, in this country. With a cash injection, you think we're going to sit on that shit? No, we're going to live life for a little bit. We're going to cover a lot of debt. A lot of loans are going to be fucking paid off first. So all these corporations and companies that sit up there and go, oh, man, we don't know if we're going to get our loan back from this rideshare driver. Guess what? Instead of $100 billion to Ukraine, they gave billions to rideshare drivers. So all these rideshare drivers got billions of fucking dollars to split up. And they're in every state, every fucking city, buying all kind of shit, jumpstarting the American economy. But see, that's why they don't want to do that. They don't want to pay us drivers. That's why they're stealing the fucking money out of our community through riders. Because drivers, we jumpstart the economy. When we was all making $2,000 a month, I mean a week, $2,500 a week, $1,700 a week, ask any driver in this motherfucker, where's all that money at? Ask any of them. They'll be like, uh... 
Spin it. Yeah, you help the economy, motherfucker. You ain't just sitting on $300,000 up on your fucking mattress at home. You put that money back into the economy to keep the economy going. When the economy started tanking, what happened? They stopped giving drivers money and they started holding in corporate. What is corporate doing? Sending the shit overseas. Oh, yeah, I saw that server fox. I talked about that shit the other day. <laughs> Elon was like, man, tell them to go fuck themselves. I'm not worried about them. They're not going to advertise you with Elon. Man, go fuck yourself. I am flying to the moon. Fucking Desley, Disney draws fucking cartoons. You dealing with a motherfucker that goes to the moon and back and flies all around the fucking planet. And you in your motherfucking bedroom drawing goddamn Mickey Mouse motherfucking cartoons. Two different levels of motherfuckers. I'm going to rock with the motherfucker that's building goddamn electric cars, flying to the moon and back, rockets landing and shit back to where they took off at. And you over here drawing goddamn Daffy Ducks and shit. Elon don't give a fuck about you. Go draw a goddamn turtle. Go do something. You fucking Disney. You draw cartoons all fucking day. It's like, you are not Elon. Elon don't give a fuck about you. But these motherfuckers get all big, high and mighty and shit, drawing these motherfucking Little Mermaid cartoons all the fucking time, thinking they somebody important. Motherfucker, I could draw Little Mermaid. It might not look just like Little Mermaid. Motherfucker might like, like, like Little Lemonade. <laughs> like, Jeff, who did you just fucking draw? That's Little Mermaid, motherfucker. That look like Little Lemonade. That bitch don't look nothing like the mermaid, motherfucker. I could draw, though. I could get down. So you talking about Elon Musk? Give a fuck about them. Man, I love the fact that Elon said what he said. Because Elon says what's in the soul of every fucking body out there who's tired of being bullied. Tired of being bullied. He's like, man, go fuck yourself, man. Every time somebody turn around, they trying to get Dave Chappelle. They trying to get Joe Rogan. They trying to get Martha Stewart. They get every fucking body. They, Elon was like, man, pff, go fuck yourself, please. I'm not the one. Go enjoy your fucking day. And I'm glad he said it just like he said it because it was real. It was not scripted. It was authentic. That shit was real. That came from his fucking soul. <laughs> he said, Forte Fang. What was he? What are you, Romanian? Man. Daniels, he's cool. Yep, yep. He said it three times because he meant it. If you said it once, it slipped. Said it twice, you confirming that you said it. You said it three times, you fucking meant it. You meant that shit. No, <laughs> uh, and see, and that's the one thing, man. With somebody like Elon having the soul of a common man, he's he's corporate. He's a billionaire. This motherfucker sit around and smoke weed on podcasts and shit. Who do that shit? Who do that? Smoke weed on a podcast. He don't give a fuck what you think. This motherfucker like, pff, Elon, him and fucking Joe Rogan pass the weed back and forth. This motherfucker talking about some man, I'm trying to have as many kids as I can fucking have while I'm still alive, motherfucker. I'm just trying to have kids. Fuck it. I'll pay child support. Give a shit. Elon is 100. He real. He is not trying to be, live up to nobody's expectations of what a human should be like. Elon is like, I'm not even human, motherfucker. I am an energy vessel trapped in his goddamn biological skin. My name's Elon. Knowing who the fuck you are. Yeah, you got like 10 kids. 10 kids. Joseph, I'm with you on that shit. Leadership fights bullying. Leadership fights bullying. And I tell, man, you know what's funny, Joseph? I, I said in one of my other podcasts a long time ago, and one day people going to be playing back my podcast. They're going to hear this shit. But it's the same story I told him when I was I had this friend named Darren Wittenberg from Waco, Texas, redhead kid, moved to our neighborhood. We damn near all black neighborhood in Memphis, down in Frazier. Darren Wittenberg moved to our neighborhood. He ain't living in my com apartment complex. He lived in Carriage House. I lived in North Terrace, but we was cool. Now, we had friends and one of the biggest dudes in our group, his name was William. William didn't like Darren. So William tried to beat up Darren. William was my friend, too. William's bigger than all of us. So William's trying to beat up Darren one day. We all trying to be friends with Darren. So I beat up fucking William. Everybody's like, Jeff, I was like a middle-sized kid. I was like kind of little mid-sized. I was not a big kid. But I had a lot of heart. I didn't give a fuck about getting beat up, and I think everybody realized that. I didn't give a fuck about getting beat up. I didn't care. I rarely got beat up because I didn't care about getting beat up. I was just wilding out on motherfuckers. But once everybody saw me beat up William... Everybody was like, holy shit, Jeff's nuts. This motherfucker just beat up like the biggest dude in the group. Because <laughs> you picking on this little white kid ain't got shit to do with nobody. He just moved here from Waco fucking Texas. Dude ain't been here for fucking two, three months. He just trying to get to know every fucking body. He White kid in the black neighborhood. He don't fuck with nobody. 
but I just got sick of it. I got sick of it. It was it was killing me in my soul to watch this kid just try to fit the fuck in and for people to pick on him. And me and William had been friends for a long time. It was about time I whooped his ass anyway, because he probably said some sideways shit a million times. I just never said none because this is how he was. But at that point in time, I think it just got on my last fucking nerve that day. It was my last nerve. I flipped that motherfucker over. I was whooping his ass and everything. Motherfucker got up. He had a big ass patch of dust all on the side of his face and head and shit. Everybody's like, man. Everybody's like, man, Jeff wild the fuck out. Jeff beat up William. <laughs> I was like, everybody's like, wait, Jeff? Like, Lil Jeff? Like, yeah, he beat up fucking William. Because I didn't give a fuck no more. I'm like, dude, if you going to whoop my ass, whoop my ass. But quit picking on this fucking kid. He ain't got shit to do with us, man. And it's like, he never whooped my ass, though. <laughs> <laughs> tell you that much. He never fucked with me. And I said it on, on one of my other podcasts, man. It's like, that's, and that's how we grew up. That's how we grew up. At some point in time, you get tired of fucking bullies, man. Cause they doing that shit because they can. And when you show them, you bullying the wrong fucking people. Cause you're going to get attacked by somebody in your own fucking circle for bullying. Back in the day, we called them whistleblowers. Or we called them anything. Anytime somebody would bully somebody and fuck with somebody, just like that dude, Eric Snowden. He would he picked on bullies when he exposed every fucking body. Uh McAfee, McAfee, he picked on fucking bullies. McAfee picked on bullies. And who else? The other dude with WikiLeaks, he picked on fucking bullies. Whenever you're getting bullied by fucking people, somebody who you least expected is gonna step out of the fucking framework and protect the people you fucking bullying. Somebody's gonna do it. You don't know who it's gonna be. Somebody's gonna get just fucking fed up one day. Yeah, Elon Musk made Amber Heard before Jack Sparrow. <laughs> yep, he did. Yeah, that's it. John McAfee, that dude, he didn't kill himself. That motherfucker didn't kill himself. He just had a lot of secrets on a lot of motherfuckers. He had software everywhere. This motherfucker had software everywhere. Spyware, software, powered where he had everything. This motherfucker had people, passwords, information on people. He was a dangerous motherfucker who picked on bullies. And just like Epstein. He could pick on bullies. He had a lot of information, a lot of information. And when you got information, you could take out bullies with that shit. And after McAfee and everything else, people's like, man, we got to do something with Epstein. This motherfucker, we got to do something with him. And that's how, you know, we grew up like that. We grew up like that. And, and that's why, Joseph, when you said that, when you say, you know, leadership, you know, fights bullying, it's, I cannot stand right now that people, and like I said, criminals are allowed to do whatever the fuck they want. But now bullies are allowed to do whatever the fuck they want. If you fight a bully back or do something back to a bully, you get suspended from school. Everybody knows this kid. The teacher knows this kid's a bully. The principal knows this kid's a bully. The lunchroom lady knows this kid's a fucking bully. But if you get up and drop kick this motherfucking bully for bullying you, you get disciplined. This is how the world has become. The criminals are getting the upper hand now. The corruption is bleeding into society to where our society is so corrupt. That anybody who wants to fight the corruption, they're viewed as the problem. Anybody who wants to fight the crime, they're viewed as the fucking problem. This is how you know you're in a bachelor's ass society right now. Anytime we do something, anytime we say something that's right, that's justice, that's fair, we're being called against the fucking norm. Because the norm is, if you don't like this fucking job, just go do something else. You should just be happy with what they fucking pay you, this and that. That's bully talk right there. That's bully talk. So, of course, motherfuckers are going to stand at us right there. We living in the Matrix right now. And we stand up. We go, no. These people have children at home, kids at home, you know, senior citizens they taking care of, spouses at home, pets at home. They just got a home by themselves sometimes. All we're looking for is a fair shake in a world where we're doing an honest job. We're doing an honest job. I'm getting in my car. I'm driving three miles to pick this motherfucker up. I'm taking him 10 miles for a total of 13 miles. I'm using gas in my car. I'm running fucking petless goddamn big ass 305 rear or 285 rear fucking tires. I'm using brakes. I'm using electricity. My battery slowly dying every fucking time. The alternator is killing my battery because your battery can only charge for so many times. Alternator is killing my fucking battery. My seats are getting ruined. My carpets are getting ruined. And this person is going to tip me when I get there because he appreciates the ride and everything. Pay me a fair amount for this ride. You're charging this dude $32, $32, $35 for this ride. I'm only taking him. I'm only driving 13 miles total. At least give me 
and then he can tip me another five, six dollars to make it 25, 26, so it's two dollars a mile. At least do that. Don't let me drive 13 miles and offer to pay me fucking seven dollars and 88 cents. Then say, hey, you know what? If you had a surge, you know, you can make over ten dollars with us. No, we're doing an honest job out here just trying to make money the, the right way. Because we look in society right now, we see people making money the wrong way. We see a lot of people making money the wrong way. People are stealing products and selling, running out of stores with TVs and shit, running out of Home Depot with shit. We see a lot of people making money the wrong way. Yeah, the guy that, that choked out a homeless guy who said he was going to kill the people on the uh, subway gets charged for keeping people safe. Yes, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Because this guy on the subway... Everybody on the subway even said this guy was spazzing the fuck out, saying he was about to kill everybody. He finna do this. He finna do that. Guaranteed, if it was a police on that train and this guy's going, oh, man, he's finna wipe everybody out, finna kill everybody, finna do all this and do all that. And the police choked him out. We'd be rioting right now because the police choked him out. We'd be rioting everywhere because the police choked him out because he threatened he was going to kill everybody. But yet. Let the person who said, I'm going to kill everybody, not get choked out, but stab like eight or nine people. Now we're going to be police pissed that the police didn't do shit. Why ain't you do shit? He was walking around to my him. He's going to kill every fucking body. And you was just standing there, not even doing your job. You just standing there. He's somebody he going to kill everybody. We talk about motherfuckers not doing shit. Oh, yeah. You're going to run into the school and shoot people up. He said it's going to kill people. And you didn't do nothing. You didn't do nothing. You, he said he's going to run into the school and shoot people. And y'all just let this motherfucker shoot up some people. 21 kids got killed in, in Texas in that little elementary school. 21 kids got killed in that elementary school. And a lot of police stood by and watched it happen. They heard them kids in their own phones crying, screaming, gunshots going. But everybody was like, well, we don't want nobody to get, get killed or get hurt. Or whatever, so we ain't going to just barge in the door right now. We don't know where he is or whatever. Doesn't make a difference where he is. At that point, everybody wished that motherfucker got choked out, shot, killed, beat with a fucking bat, everything under the sun. They wished it. That's why crime is, an, is intentional. If you tell me I'm going to kill everybody in this building and I'm standing next to you, consider yourself dead. Consider yourself dead already. Because if you make a threat that you're going to kill everybody in this building, I'm standing next to you. You're dead. I'll deal with the shit later. You're dead. Because I'm not going to be the one sitting there going, well, I heard him say I'm going to kill everybody in the building. And he killed like 10 fucking people. Dude, you heard him say that? Yeah, I heard him. Say, Why didn't you do shit? He didn't kill nobody yet. It's like, but he said he was going to kill everybody in the building. I didn't think he was serious. Like, motherfucker, this has got to, if you in a fucking, in a theater and you yell bomb, that's a fucking crime. You can't be in a theater and yell bomb. And, and just walk out like, I was just fucking with y'all, I was fucking with y'all. You're going to prison. So how can you stand in the closed quarters of all these people and, and yeah, I'm going to kill everybody and you nothing happening? Oh, you're going to die because you won't make it off that fucking train. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Daniel says, you have to be creative with them. For example, in the app, I'm Fred Flintstone. And at the location I put Tippish is working. People laugh before they even step in my car. <laughs> <laughs> no, Fred Flintstone. I know that's funny shit. Tippish is working. You Uber paying all their lawsuits. Nothing's going to change until they pay them all. West Coast, lot of scratch. You know what? And that's what I say about Uber's lawsuits are, I think a lot of them, more of them are customer generated, rider generated lawsuits based on frivolous lawsuits because just like people say people are hitting people with their cars just because they know uber and lyft is going to settle with them or this and that it's a bunch of attorney's fees going back and forth what a lot of these companies attorney's fees going back and forth so people will sit up there and say something happened in an uber car just so uber has to spend money on investigating you can get bad publicity you can investigate it becomes public information if it ever makes it to trial or court or something like that and instead of uber dealing with the bad publicity like that they rather just pay somebody out and that's what happens with these major corporations that have no internal controls. Now you see why Uber is offering free cameras to every fucking body. It ain't for the security of the drivers because they're tired of getting fucking sued by the same people. They're getting sued in the same areas. So it ain't, hey, we're going to give you a camera so we can protect the driver. 
You guys should do it. These motherfuckers don't give a fuck about the driver. I mean, you already know, hear people saying, well, take what they pay you. Take what they pay you. If you want another job, go get another fucking job. They don't care about you. But you're going to give me a motherfucking camera? It ain't for me then. It's The camera is a protecting corporation. They're investing in their own protection right now, not our protection. Because for our protection, you give me enough fucking money to drive some good areas. I don't have to drive that many hours a fucking day. Keep my ass off the road. Keep my ass out of bad fucking areas. Keep me from being a desperate fucking driver. You could easily protect me with money. But yet they're going to throw money to protect themselves from lawsuits. Shit's stupid, man. You know what I mean? It would be easier if they said what we're going to do is any driver that has a, a camera in their car, not not you have to use it or nothing like that, but if you have a camera already in your car, we're going to give you extra $20 a day, 50 bucks a day, something weird. Just if you run it for us, if you run it for if, if you got one 20 bucks, if you run it all day, give you 50. Why? Because it's going to save you millions and millions of dollars of lawsuits. If we're saving you millions and millions in lawsuits, you should at least give us part of the fucking savings. Like, I don't like when they be like, hey, yeah, report if it's an accident. Why should I report if it's an accident if you're only paying me 30 cent a fucking mile? Why don't you hire somebody to come out here and see if it's a fucking accident? I mean, you got some money. Pay somebody to come out here and see if it's an accident. Don't ask me, the person you cheap skating. Hey, Jeff, is it an accident right there? I'm like, I don't know. Motherfucker, ain't you right there? I don't know. <laughs> it's like, shit. They need that button on that motherfucker. I don't know. Just put me an I don't know button on that motherfucker. Yes, no, I don't know. I don't know. Shit. Like, oh, shit, we got one of those motherfuckers. IDK. <laughs> Motherfucker. Like, shit, I'm driving around the streets not worried about you just like you ain't worried about me. Jeff, is there still traffic in that area? I don't know. But you're right there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it says to protect and serve on the side of their vehicle so they have an obligation to uphold law. I see, Big Arm Kev, that's what I talk about a lot. I talk about tort law. Tort law is, is duty. When you look up tort law, tort law is all about the duty and obligation someone has, especially in the public, in the public setting, duties and obligations of people in public settings to protect, serve, do whatever it is, uphold law and all that shit. When, when police don't do their jobs, that's, that's a violation of tort law to some degree. It's a violation of tort law. Just like when Let's say a company, a company has something. You walk to a company, there's a sticker bush in the front of the company. And that sticker bush does shit to people every time they walk in. If somebody gets hurt, like seriously by that sticker bush, like they're allergic to the motherfucker and they break out in hives and damn near has a heart attack. Tort law. That company knew that sticker bush used to fuck up everybody because everybody complained about it. And it just pricked somebody who was allergic to the shit. Now they on their motherfucking deathbed. Tort law. They had an obligation to take care of that fucking bush that they knew about already. And a lot of times when we were in casino, we worked in casino as corporate. We had a, a risk analysis team and I was on that risk analysis team. We had to walk the casino once a month, walk the whole fucking casino. And we would start sometimes nine o'clock in the fucking morning in two, three hours. We'd all still be, it's a group of about 10 of us. We'd all have our clipboards. We have our notes. We walk, you see any carpet lifted up. You can document it on there. And this is the area of blackberries. We didn't have phones with cameras and crazy shit like that yet. We just had blackberries. So you just document it right here. Say, hey, okay, main hall, carpet coming up near valet. Okay. Anybody can mark that. Then you start walking. Okay. Light switch, barely hanging on by sports book. Okay. Because anybody can get electrocuted on that shit. And you walk the whole fucking property. We walk ballrooms, everything, ballroom door, door hinge not connected, potentially can fall off and hit somebody. Just weird shit. And that's to prevent people from guest loss and damage is prevent people from suing you because of tort law. So if anybody got hurt in our casino, first thing we do is we'd offer them a five thousand dollar settlement to not have any damages against us. Most of these broke motherfuckers say, yes, five thousand is probably what they lost. They're like, oh, yeah, I get five grand tripped over carpet. Tell you what we offer you five grand. We close this shit out right now. No attorneys, no, no, no bullshit. And they would say, okay, five grand's good. Sometimes you see a $25,000 charge on something. That's when somebody seriously got hurt for real. Falling down a set of staircases where the rubber didn't stick to the fucking steps and the rubber had a flap and people's foot would get caught on that flap. We'd have to walk all the staircases because if your foot get caught and you flip down them steps, oh, you're coming off with some serious money. If a, if a handle, a rail 
Because we had that before. Motherfuckers be walking. The screws come out of the rail. So when you put your hand on the rail, you put your weight on it, it bounces. It goes all the fucking way down. Somebody anticipates the rail is straight and the rail is going to hold. The, no screws are in there. You touch it, you go, oh shit, you fall. You can fall on the fucking steps. So when we had to walk the whole property, that's what you're doing. You're dealing with tort law. You're dealing with risk analysis. And I, like I said, we did that shit once a month. I hated it because it takes me away from my office, took me away from all my work, email stacking the fuck up, BlackBerry going off the whole fucking time, people needing shit. People can't do shit until after I sign some. So it's a lot of shit sitting around. People can't go to the next level of their work until after I sign off with some shit. But if I got to walk the fucking property, my boss, Kathy, she can go upstairs and do it. Kathy ain't worried about that shit. Kathy's like, no, Jeff's on fucking property walk right now. He'll deal with that shit another time. <laughs> it's like, well, we can't do nothing. We're going to go outside on smoke break till Jeff gets back. Should I come back three, four fucking hours later? These motherfuckers all high on cigarettes and shit. They smell like a motherfucker saloon. Like, what the fuck y'all been doing for three hours? We was on smoke break the whole time. Y'all yeah, bet. I bet. <laughs> and we was a fucking kicking at that company, boy. Uber, that, Uber has that sexual assault court case. I'm sure they will lose that. Yeah. And that's the thing. People don't understand, man. And like, like that one, one guy, Ronnie, whatever, you know, he was joking about, you know, sexual assault, joking about flirting with people and shit like that. Shit like that costs corporations a lot of money. People don't understand when I'm driving my cars and I'm doing my shit. I don't fuck with these people like that because you don't know who's running a camera, who's running a microphone, who's trying to entrap you and fuck with you just so they can get fucking paid. You don't know these people like that. There's a lot of shady motherfuckers out there. I give somebody a ride, they be like, oh, man, it smells good in here. You know, this and that. Man, your cologne smells good. You smell good. Like, oh, I shower twice a day, lady. I try to get on. You never, I might get, jump in and smell like motherfucking transmission fluid one day. You never know with me. They just kind of laugh and joke and keep laughing and shit. But you don't fall for a lot of the fucking bait sometimes because you don't know who jumped in with a camera roll and you don't know. They could be setting you up. Yeah. A girl in Texas was just deleted by a ride share driver two days before Thanksgiving damn damn that's crazy shit crazy shit and there was also an 80 something year old man 80 something year old it was an 81 year old man took a uber somewhere and either he got his ride got canceled or something happened and they never saw this old dude again he was an 81 year old dude either his ride got canceled or something crazy fucking happened i just basically saw the headlines a little bit and i just kept fucking moving 81 year old dude or something like that Last scene with a ride share driver after his ride got canceled or either after he got dropped off. Something crazy like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's why when somebody dies on a highway and they totally close the highway, they have to do a series of tests to prove the highway didn't cause the accident so you can't sue the state. Exactly. Kev, see, I don't know. Kev, what did you used to do for a living? How do you know shit like this? Because <laughs> normal people won't say no shit like that because not a lot of people understand tort law. Like I said, I took the LSAT and I took, you know, business law, study tort law. I did a lot of shit with like, you know, criminal law, family court law, a lot of family court law. And I was going to become an attorney. But when people are closed and stuff, everybody likes the first thing. The first thing they think about is, oh, man, you know, Colorado. Oh, there you go. No wonder Colorado Department of Transportation. No wonder. That's why. Because most people, like I said, we deal with a lot of accidents, especially in Vegas and casino, you did a lot of transients and traffic, especially in Arizona, a lot of shit. The first thing the police want to do is clear the state. You think they're there for you, the fucking driver or whoever happened in the accident. They're not there for you. These motherfuckers are clearing the state. They want to get any kind of how far the curb is, if the curb was there. I mean, they're doing all these measurements. From where your car slid, where it originated from, what was on the road, was it a pothole cover missing? If it was a pothole cover missing, they got to document that. It was a pothole cover missing. Somehow the cover wasn't all the way in there. We had street work yesterday. The cover was still teetering. Nobody fucking secured it. They do a lot of shit like that, man. Like people really think that when you call a police for an accident, they ask first, is there any injuries? No. Okay, then we're not going to make this an emergency then. Because they don't give a fuck at that point. They don't care. But if it's a, hey, was there any injuries? Yeah, my back kind of hurt a little bit. All right, we'll send a police officer out real... Otherwise, they're going to have you just do paperwork. That's it. But when it comes to medical shit, anything medical, death related, stuff like that, they're going to send a police out real quick, real fucking quick, because they want to make sure they get the scene exactly as it is with nobody staging shit, nobody changing nothing. Because people do that shit. They'll say, hey, man, 
kick that brick over there. Fucking kick a brick out the way. You're changing the scene of an accident. You're changing. You're altering the scene of an accident. And people do that shit all the time. They'll alter the scene of an accident to either force liability on somebody. And they may say, well, this don't make sense. Why this was here. If this was here, that would have hit that. I be watching all this shit in law and tort law shit, man, because people are shady. People are fucking. That's why when people hear me say, man, fuck these people, because I know I be watching shit, man. And these motherfuckers will do anything it takes to get a dime in their pocket. They will do anything it takes. That's why Casino be like five G's. He be like, OK, five G's is a lot. Oh, dude, I got five thousand dollars, man. I got five thousand dollars. And half of these motherfuckers don't even know. <laughs> Yep, his can't move until investigation out of the wreck. Exactly. You can't move nothing. You can't move shit. Leave everything right where it is. And a lot of people like to say, hey, I videotaped this. I videotaped that. Did you move the car? Yeah. Damn. That's going to kind of hurt the investigation a little bit because you moved the car. And it's that it hurts the investigation for the state as well. Man. Is it Uber driver? Wait, Uber driver got deleted in Lakewood CA by Ryder because he doesn't he didn't want to do multiple stops. I think I heard it that one. I think I heard it that one. I think I read that one like yesterday or something like that. Yeah. They do skid tests because of the chemicals we put on the road for snow removal, changes traction. Yeah, I, I know about that. May now, having a token about to get into, the, into these Albuquerque streets. Reese Rockwell, like, hell yeah, hell yeah. Hey, be safe out there in them streets. You know how it is. About it's midnight. The bars will be closed in about an hour and a half. Shit, make that money. Hit them surges. Hey, Paw Patrol that shit up. Get them surges while you out there. Friday night for a lot of people, man. Get it, because in some areas right now it's already two o'clock in the morning. So they probably end the day night already. But Friday night, get that fucking money. Risha, get it, get it, man. I don't. I'm telling you, Kim. It was something about that that he didn't want to do multiple stops. Oh, what was that? I think I read it, but I'm I'm trying to remember exactly how it went. It was something about that, about that trip that I was going to say something about because I read about it. But man, yeah, he did. Somebody got killed because he didn't want to make multiple stops. No surges, gray clouds. Yeah. Right now, man, I'm telling you, turn the app. Somebody was telling me a surge trick. It was something about turning the app off, waiting a few seconds. You turn it on. Wait a few seconds. You turn it off, turn it on. Something weird like that. And Surge just appears out of nowhere. I got to find that. Did somebody, I don't know if somebody emailed me that or somebody just told me that straight up. But it was something about turning your phone off and on to create Surge by turning it off, waiting a few seconds. You turn it on, turn it off, wait a few seconds, turn on, and then Surge comes. I don't know. I have to, I'm going to figure that shit out because I swear if we could do something like that, man. Ooh, man. Bighorn Cav, I, I saw that one in the paper. My buddy Chad, he hit me up about it. It was in the morning or something like that because I was ending my day. He said it was early morning and shit when everybody was getting to the airport. And he's fucking, yup, jumped off a Terminal 3 parking structure. They had that shit all fucking backed up all the way out the airport. And he was like, dude, if you driving today, do not come to the airport. He took a picture of that shit. That shit was all the way down to 202. <laughs> I was like, damn. And that's what happened. Terminal 3 shit, dude, just jumped. I was like, man fucking crazy that's the world we living in right now though man that's the people are stressed the fuck out and these corporations ain't doing no help and we got these channels out there who ain't giving drivers that outlet that outlet we talk about you know the mental frustration the financial frustration the physical frustrations of the job because there are physical things in these jobs that people say can you lift 50 pounds can you do this can you sit in the seat for more than this many minutes there's physical issues frustrated with jobs too and when you got these channels out there not allowing drivers to voice our frustrations without making us look like we the fucking problem. Well, if you just want to go get a different job, go get a different job. Like another job won't have the same fucking frustration. Like they won't. You can go to any job out there. W you telling me people with W-2s have never claimed bankruptcy. I guarantee somebody with a W-2 in the history of this planet has claimed bankruptcy. I guarantee somebody with a W-2 in the history of this fucking planet has probably been evicted. They probably had their car repossessed. They probably missed a few payments on child support, missed a few credit card payments. People with W-2s probably have bad credit. So you can't tell me the solution to us being upset about what we do or don't get paid in fucking ride share is to go get a W-2. We could be making the situation worse for ourselves. We don't fucking know that. Because that's like saying every W-2 out there is, oh, well, why don't you just go, go get a W-2 where the pay is better? 
How about I just get paid more for what the fuck I'm doing in ride share? How about that? How about me get a, a better percentage of what I'm actually, the work I'm actually doing? Fuck these apps. Charging somebody $60, paying me fucking 21, 22. How about I get a better percentage of what they just fucking paid? Because if I'm not going to get a better percentage, might as well just deal with the fucking rider straight up. Because motherfuckers got to eat. Motherfuckers got to live. I got a roof over my head. I got to have a roof over my head. So if the corporations and the drivers can't see eye to eye and get this shit done right and done together where everybody's a winner walking around the situation and the only the only solace we got is for some channels to tell us, well, they pay you what they want to pay you. If you don't like it, you can leave. You know what? I'm going to cancel a motherfucker because I want to cancel a motherfucker. If they want to pay me straight up cash, I guess that's the deal then. And I'm going to tell you right now, one dude told me some funny shit. <laughs> this shit was funny as hell. In the morning, he was doing a reservation in the morning. And I don't know if it was a, yeah, it was a reservation in the morning. He was driving. He gets there. The person was taking too long. This shit's in my email. I should screenshot this shit. This shit is funny as hell. He said, dude, this is a new come up. I just found out. So the person was taking too long. He cancels the fucking ride, but he doesn't leave. He cancels the airport ride and he stays right where he is. The dude eventually comes, taps on his fucking window. He said he was just in the car. He comes, taps on his window. And he's like, well, I already canceled the ride, man. Dude paid him cash to take him to the airport. So he got the cancellation and he got the cash ride. <laughs> I was like, that's fucking genius shit. Because me, y'all know me. When I cancel, I drive the fuck off. Y'all see that shit on videos. I cancel and leave. I think I'm going to cancel and get the fee and get these motherfuckers a couple of minutes to come out the building. Walk out, hey, man, I was on my way. Oh, man, you canceled? Yeah, yeah, sorry, dog, sorry, dog. But I'll tell you what, you can pay me in cash and I can take you. <laughs> all right, because I got to get to the airport, man. I like that deal. I, I thought you were going to dry it off and I had to rebook this shit all over again. No, nah, we ain't got to do all that. Dude, I cancel. I take the fuck off. I'm not waiting on no fucking body. Fuck that. But this dude was like, I cancel and I sit there and I just wait. <laughs> He's like, hey, then they give me cash to take him to the airport. I was like. I think you just got a new hack. <laughs> that, that's a, I'm telling you, Silver Fox. I'm like, I never thought of that. And it's so many times. Hotels down. Y'all be seeing on my videos. I be canceling motherfuckers and I will take off. I'm like, dude, cancel and chill for a second in the exact same spot where they're supposed to be. And they'll walk out and look for you. And there you are. Because most of them walk out the building, they're in elevators or they're like far away. or They got to come out the door any fucking ways. They finally walk out the door they're canceled but you're still sitting there they come walk up oh man i had one the other day at the new at the new car rental i put it in the video it was at the new car rental place over at north on 24th and like uh jefferson and it was for like 13 dollars or something weird like but when i canceled them it gave me like 17 dollars. i was like oh shit it gave me more than what the fucking reservation was for some people just don't show up they just don't and I regular rides do it all the time. Regular rides, yeah, cancel. I know it's risky, man. It's risky. But see, the thing is, if if they if you're canceling them because they're not showing up, you get the cancel fee. Uber and Lyft has paid you already. You're getting the cancel fee, so the app knows they didn't show up on time. But you don't leave. You're not obligated to drive off. You could just sit there. You sit there, they walk out, they see your car right there. They've already been canceled. You've got your fee. So now you're like, hey, I got extra money. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I ain't never heard no shit like that, man. Well, this? People are getting smart. They order a car, you show up, and then they come out the car and tell you they've been waiting on their friend, and they'll try and make you wait for about 10 minutes. Oh, Wes, they've done me like that before. Can you just wait for my friend? I'm like, okay, I'll wait for your friend, but you don't know how long you got to wait. You've started the ride already. You've started it, and they're sitting in your fucking car. They'll get back out the car. Let me go in and just make a call. Make sure they'll do some crazy shit. Once you start the ride, now you're not going to get the cancel fee. You fuck yourself. Like, it's almost like I want people to get in and say, Are, is this all the people that we've got? Yeah, cool. Can I start the ride? Because I swear they've done that shit to me before, man. It happened on one of my videos at a goddamn Circle K. I sat there and I sat at the Circle K. It took me forever. I got an extra dollar seventy-one, a dollar, no, a dollar seventy-seven 
for like 17 extra minutes that it took longer than what it was supposed to take because I was waiting. The dude got in my car with his backpack. The lady was still in Circle K. I started the ride. She was taking forever. I did this shit on the video. Man, it took me like 27 something minutes, extra 17 minutes. I got an extra dollar 77 for all that time waiting. I got screwed, man. I was so pissed off that night. I was so pissed. I was like, never. Next time somebody gets in my car, if they ain't got somebody with them, they supposed to have somebody, I'm not starting to ride. I'll cancel that shit out. I learned my lesson the hard way that night. I learned my lesson the hard way. Exactly what you just said happened, happened to me. And I got that shit on video. Like people think the shit that, like I said, you're a driver. People think the shit we say is fake or phony. No, this shit is real. What you just said, I have a whole video of at Circle K and I'm going off on the video about it. So for it to happen to me and you to type it, you not even know that shit happened to me in its own video. This is the real shit that goes on in ride share. This shit is real. We're drivers. We do this. We can tell people what really happens. Man, what well, Bitcoin Kev said, hey, that's why your channel is good for Jeff. You help drivers realize that there's someone out there going through the same stuff instead of Here's some BS that won't help you make money, but how to be sheep <laughs> for real, <laughs> real shit, man. Because I believe everybody has a re we're doing this shit for a reason. We all join rideshare, yeah, for the flexibility. We love the flexibility, and people can you can't complain about the flexibility not having somebody breathing down your back. But there's a thing called life, and there's expenses involved with fucking life. And if what we're doing is not paying for life, you can't sit up there and go, well, at least you're flexible. No, that shit don't work. No, no, because I can't go tell my landlord, hey, man, I'm flexible at work. I'm glad you are. You got my motherfucking rent? Uh, not really, but I'm still flexible. Motherfucker, your rent is not flexible. You finna have all your furniture out on the fucking curb. <laughs> it's like, that's so for people out here trying to argue the point, flexibility versus affording your life, there is no comparison between flexibility and enjoying your fucking life and paying for your life. You can't do that. Life is what it costs. When inflation goes up, it goes up. We can't tell people, well, I'm flexible. At least I'm flexible. No. The apps are making record profits on our fucking backs right now. They're making record on our backs. So they can't say, well, we should be allowed to make record profits on your backs. We should be allowed to have you losing your car due to car non-payments. We should, you know, do it because we're giving you flexibility. Motherfucker, I'm sorry. Flexibility does not transfer over into me paying my fucking bills, though. Money transfers over to me paying my bills. Flexibility is a whole nother fucking life right now. That's something totally different right now. Man. <laughs> Silver Fox said, that's Jeff about milkshakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The quick trip, ladies. Man, I picked them up from the hotel. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. Let me drop quick trip. So we get the quick trip. It's a stop. I thought they were just getting out. It's a stop. So I'm like, okay, whatever, whatever. So I'm sitting there. So we'll be real quick. Okay, got to probably go in and buy some fucking cigarettes. I don't know. So I'm sitting there, lady comes out with two big-ass motherfucking milkshakes, no lids, two big-ass milkshakes. I said, excuse me, but I can't have you bring those milkshakes in my it's just. She's like, you know what? I'll just go get a different container. I'll get a different container. So she runs back in. She gives her friends the milkshakes while she's at the car, but I make her stand outside the car, not in my fucking car. So she comes back out with big-ass fucking like soda cups, and they're sitting there funneling fucking milkshake into the big-ass cups. The whole time, I'm like, I could just drive the fuck off right now. Man, just end this motherfucking ride because this was not part of the plan. It was not part of the plan. It was stop. When I first got in and I saw him with the stop, as soon as I got there, I was like, you know what? It's quick trip. Usually it's pretty quick. It's quick trip. So they decided to go in and get fucking all full blown out messy ass fucking food. Oh, I was hot. I was hot. And so when I finally get to where they were going and everything like that, you know, they got, a, I don't, I think they did tip me. I think they did tip me, but I got extra money anyways for like the little wait time, the extra wait time. Cause they had to run back and forth with the shit. So the trip came out all in all, the pay was good. The anxiety was fucking bad. You don't hop in somebody's fucking car with goddamn milkshakes with no lids on it. No, you don't do that. Excuse me. I don't know who these people think we are. That we're going to be swerving through traffic, hitting brakes, letting motherfuckers in the goddamn curb lane, shoot out and do crazy shit. And you got a whole open ass fucking milkshake sitting back there. Like, no, this is a roller coaster, motherfucker. You're in a car. And it's like, I can't do that. Nope. Even with sodas, I don't like people with sodas. You know, the last Taco Bell girl that put the soda on the fucking floor and it, and it tipped over and she hurried up and pulled it back up. It still spilled shit. 
and I almost got to my damn speaker. And I'm like, you know what? I think the next time a motherfucker walks up to the car, I'm just going to take off. I'm just taking off. I don't give a fuck if you, you walking with a cup in your hand, psh, driving off. I'll cancel when I'm leaving the parking lot. I'm not fucking with these people no more. I'm not doing it. Uber and Lyft need to send out messages to people saying, we do not pay for vehicle damage due to you spilling sodas. Much of these newer cars now have a lot of electrical technology in the seats, the doors, the climate controls, the speakers. They got a lot of shit everywhere. So people got to be careful, man. They got to be careful. Yeah, bus passengers think we public transportation is real shit. <laughs> they want luxury without paying for it because they, they like to brag about that shit. They love to brag. Oh, man, we got a nice ass car, man. Cost me nine dollars. What? Man, it used to be costing me like $40 for a car like that. Nine dollars. Man, fuck that shit. I will not be driving around nobody for no cheap. Nope, nope. I'm, what this morning, 6 a.m. Uber tried to send me someone private property with a no trespass for eleven dollar surge for the fifth time. I went home furious. <laughs> Damn. So they wait a minute. It was 6 a.m. They sent you to on a private property with no trespass for eleven dollar surge. See. I don't know. I would tell support. I would screenshot that shit, send a picture to support and be like, I should have this surge because you guys keep doing this. That's wrong. That's wrong right there. They should not be allowed to put any surges on private properties inside of buildings because it it gets people to areas that where we don't know where the area is. We just start turning corners and everything. Next, you know, we going down a dead end street and you see the surge, like you said, on somebody's private property. That right there, that I think that's misleading. It's it's inducement. It's fraud in the inducement. They're inducing you to do something fraudulent. And what that means, you going on somebody's private fucking property to go get surge and you sitting there like, yeah, like the one time the dude put it in the graveyard. He put it in the graveyard for me, but it was a gate. No, that was the pickup. He put the pickup in the graveyard, not a surge for me. He put a pickup in the graveyard and it was a gate right there. But the dude sent me a message and, hey, call this number so we can cancel it for you. I was like, Nope, this is a scheme. Nope, this is another fucking scheme. So I just ended the fucking ride at the gate. Said, nope, not doing that shit. <laughs> they put surge in the middle of the legs. <laughs> mm -hmm. With justice in the California Court of Appeal ruled today that Proposition 22, a 2020 ballot measure that allowed Uber and Lyft and other platforms to classify their contractors as independent contractors. Okay. Wait, justices ruled today that Uber... And lifting on the classify there. Also, oh, they classify their workers as independent contractors. Okay. So, Kim, what does that mean? When they're saying that they're allowing these platforms to classify workers as independent contractors, they don't get that prop 22 money again. Is that what's going on? Because it's a court of appeal. So did they appeal it? If they appealed it, does that mean that they won the appeal? Why Uber sign and drivers out of the airport because of their independent contractors? Yeah. So do, do workers in California no longer get Prop 22 or something? Because, I mean, if they if they went to the Court of Appeals and they're saying we're classifying you as independent contracts and so we no longer have to pay you for blah, blah, blah. And that's the thing, Kim. I said the same shit. They're only doing it at the airports. The way, they're only doing it at the airports. They're When I'm on the streets doing it, they won't kick me out. But if I'm doing it at the airport, they boot me out. I hate that. I hate that. Glitch Dash, my brother, my brother. What up, Long Levi Tran? Rosh is cool, but the way they work is garbage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, like I said, right now, we need to figure something out, brother. We need to figure something out, especially with, like, private rides and everything else. And, Long, you got a, you got a RX, man. You got a RX 350. If I had a, as much space as you got, shit, I would be over by a goddamn ASU at them damn frat parties. Trying to get everybody to say, hey, man, I could take four at a time, 20 bucks right now over the Mill Avenue, four right. Oh, you could take us right now for 20 bucks over the mill right now. Bet, let's do it. <laughs> Instead of the motherfuckers waiting, because, you know, if they're going to wait, ain't nobody going to the frat house was picking up no motherfuckers yet. Sam Lee takes $9 for 60 miles, milks prop 22. That's funny shit. That's funny shit. Is Sam Lee still driving right now? Is he still driving? I thought something happened to Sam, man. I thought he like got deactivated or something weird fucking happened. The drivers were saying that they were being signed out because they were denying rides. Oh yeah, they I do that all the time. They got me on. I got them on video a few times of me being at the airport. And this is the thing: 
when I'm dropping somebody off at the airport, I hurry up and put it on last ride because I learn what they do. As I'm dropping somebody off, they're sending me ride after ride after ride after ride because they want to kick me out of the app. They kick me out of the app, which forces me to log back in the app. I don't have time to log back in because I'm driving through the airport. You're driving and you can't just like start messing with your phone and messing with all your shit and enter a password. No, you gotta, you're going to be all the way out of the terminal, clear around the corner, down 143. It's going to be about eight, nine minutes past. Now you're going to sign back in, clear away. Oh, he's doing roadie, taking every roadie in sight. <laughs> And now you're going to be clear down the road trying to log back in to Uber. You're trying to log back in. And that's the problem right there. They're going to cause people to create accidents because if Uber is signing people out at the airport as their car is mobile, forcing them to sign back in, somebody gets rear-ended at the airport, anything like that happens, what are they going to say? Uber's going to say, well, you weren't on the Uber app. When you had that accident, you weren't on the Uber app. No, because you logged me the fuck out. I was trying to log back in. Well, we can't cover you. So you don't get covered by Uber on the accident. You probably don't get covered by your own ride share because you technically had the app on, even though you didn't have, you weren't logged in, you had it on. So you're just a catch 22. You sit at the airport right now. And that's why I tell people when they log me out, shit, I'll, I'll leave that shit off. I get way off of airport premises and property. I do not log back on because if I get into an accident, just like, you know, the professor had on this channel, that lady who had an accident when her app was logged on, she wasn't even driving nobody. She just was logged on. Her insurance wouldn't cover. So it's a lot of gray area, a lot of, especially for us cherry pickers. There's a lot of gray area for if your app is on, you're not covered. We don't even have to be driving to nobody with nobody. We don't have to be doing shit. If your app is turned on, some of these insurance companies are like, we're not going to cover you because you were active at that time on the app. You weren't logged out. Well, motherfucker, I'm sitting in the goddamn Circle K. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't driving nobody. I'm not moving. It's like I'm parked. My car is parked. The motherfucker's turned off. I'm standing in Circle K with a donut in my hand about to pay for it. The app is turned on. A motherfucker hit my car. They backed into my car outside. Sorry. You were logged on the app, but I'm on the app inside of the building buying a fucking donut. Doesn't make a difference. You were logged into your app when somebody backed into you outside, wasn't even in your car. This is the kind of shit these insurance companies are pulling right now. So, you know, we need legislation to protect drivers because a lot of them, a lot of them, so they cover the car, they won't pay med pay. I don't know, man, because if you look at that video on the professor's channel right now, and that's the one I was talking about the other day because I saw that video the other day, but that's the one I was talking about. This lady had an accident only because she was logged on. She didn't have nobody in the car. It was just her, but she was logged on, not going to nobody, just dropped somebody off. She ended up not being paid. She not being, yet. Yeah, Uber pays for period two and three. That's right. Logged on is period one, just being logged on. Nobody's insuring people for period one. So you basically have to have your app off. Turn that motherfucker off all the time. Because the moment you turn it on in period one, you just being logged on, nobody wants to cover you. And you're, you could be sitting in your own driveway and a car could hop the fucking curb, smack your car. You're not covered. You never drove anywhere, but your app is turned on. You're in period one with the app being on. That to me is a fucking scam. That's a scam. Say, hey, Jeff, I got an answer that will that get out of your car, accept the ride. But like you said, and get back in your car and drive. For you get out of the car, accept the ride and you like and get back in your car and drive. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. A lot of times when I'm when I'm in the airport and I'm actually in the car driving, I can't like get a re I can't. None of these rides are worth shit. They're all airport rides, all airport rides. And they be like nature hikes all the way to like to Gilbert. You'd be like, okay, you at the airport in South Phoenix and they're trying to get you to go to Gilbert for like $21, but it's like 34 miles. It's like, wait a minute, 21, 34 miles away. And it's like 42 minutes of driving for $21. It's like, no, no. Title washing exists. Oh yeah. Shit. Check washing, title washing, all that shit exists. All that shit. Here in California, they pay for one. Who pays for one? Your insurance company pays for one? 
or Uber pays for one. What John said, you really can't knock Sam, though. 15 hours a day, milk and prop 22. How many 23-year-olds put 30% down on a $400,000 house? Real shit, real shit. So, but Sam, he lives in California. So a $400,000 house in California is probably a fucking tent in somebody's backyard. <laughs> no, I'm fucking with you, Sam. Sam, he's out there doing it, man. He's trying to do it. But that's right, man. He's got some money in equity. <laughs> that's a shack. $400,000 in California, shit. <laughs> if you tell me $400,000 in California, nah, fuck that. That, Like I said, that's, that's probably a house in the alleyway that was like dilapidated and fucking abandoned. It's like, we're going to sell it to you for 400,000, man. Where is this house at? <laughs> it's like, you want to buy that shit. California houses, a decent house in California is going to start up 650, 700, $800,000 up, man. Yeah. That's Levi right there. That's my man Levi right there. So Levi train, he says, Hey, he, that's the Uber driver. I'm telling you, that's the Uber driver that got me involved in Uber back in 2019. He does real estate now. So this motherfucker going to be selling some crazy houses, crazy houses. So, man, I think what, Long, you also, you got a, um, I think you got a website. You got to shoot me your website, man. Text me over your website and stuff like that. Because I want to look at some of your properties, man. I want to really look at some. Because, like I said, I was telling you the one around the corner from my house, I really like to just kind of see what that would even go for. And as far because there's a there's a real estate agent lady on it, but I like to see like an approximate amount because I might have some people that may be interested, see if they can get approved for it. And hey, they might fuck around and buy it, man. I don't want man Chad and his mom. They're looking for a house right now, but I don't know how what their uh, total bills would be. But yeah, but he's a realtor, man. He's a realtor. And I'm one of those people that I'm a, if anything, like I said, I can I can work on houses. So I don't mind a fixer upper. I really don't mind. If somebody's willing to get, give up a fixer upper and I could put sweat equity into it, excuse me. Even if I said, let's say I bought a house, I bought a house for let's say two hundred thirty thousand dollar fixer upper, two thirty. Current interest rate eight percent. I don't know, so my note would probably be around about you know twenty two hundred bucks. Who knows? But if I'm sitting there working on the house over the next year and I can double that equity from two twenty to four forty. That means I made $220,000 minus whatever supplies and shit I used to work on that house. That's all my, that's what I made that year, which is way more than what I'd make in Uber. I just renovate houses and shit. Go put a couple of new doors on, paint some shit. And you can go get paint, uh, yeah, real cheap from Sharon Williams. This is how you get, because I used to work for Sharon Williams as a delivery driver a long time ago. This is how you get cheap paint from Sharon Williams or even Home Depot. Go to the mist tents. Go to the mist tents, find a color you like. If it's close, like you can get the big five gallon ones. They'll sell those motherfuckers to you like 60, 70 bucks. Dirt cheap. These are three, four hundred dollar whole mist tents. They're mist tents, but it's a color you might like. And so you just go up there and you pay for it. You paint your house in that color. You paint all your rooms in that color. If you like, if you think you, let's say you got a red, but you also have like, say, a yellow or something weird like that. You can buy the two mist tents kind of mix them together to get like a, a weird orange or color. And now you're going to be like, hey, I can do these shutters in orange. And you got them for dirt cheap. So it's like, you you got to go to the mist tents pile, man. And you got to kind of have like some, some paint mixing fucking skills. Be like, buy these big five gallon things of mist tents, mix them both together. And now you got 10 gallons. Because if you got, let's say you got a five gallon empty bucket, two full five gallons of paint, pour half gallon into that fucking empty bucket. And then you pour a half gallon of the other paint into that empty bucket. Now you got a five gallon of exactly one bit color to mix. Now put the other five gallon half. So two and a half into the two and a half. You got two exact. So now you got 10, 10 motherfucking gallons of the exact same color to paint your whole house in. Man, that's how you do it. Mist tints. I tell you, just keep mixing fucking mist tints. <laughs> ben Malia. Who's Ben Malia? Man, man, man. Oh, I know somebody who might eventually move to Phoenix eventually. Yeah. And yet, yeah, and same thing too, Levi. Uh, in April, in April, my homegirl and her husband and their four daughters, she's finishing up on nursing school right now. So she's finishing nursing school in April. She's already had a long nursing career, but she wanted to elevate to go to another level of nursing. And they're looking for a place to live. They've been saying Phoenix might be on their map. 
They say they're right in Vegas. Like I said, her and David been living in fucking Vegas eternity. I think they're not originally from California. They've been living in Vegas for eternity now. But they may they may be somebody who I have to send your way also. So you can kind of talk to them, man. Just kind of give them some good ideas. See see what a cost of living would be if they want to ever move out here. They got four daughters, so they're gonna have to build. They're gonna need a, a larger house. Like they're gonna need a four bedroom right off the bat. Four bedroom minimum because they got their daughters or whatever. But and he's a retired officer and now he's a, he's a chef, a retired officer chef. She's going to be an elevated nurse into another program now. So definitely that's somebody I want to send you. So I'll her name Shay, Shay and David. So I'm going to send you her information, his information. And you could just tell him, hey, I'm one of Jay Watts's boys. They're going to be like, that's my big bro right there. <laughs> and just say, hey, he said you guys might be interested in moving to Arizona when you get out of nursing school in April. What's good? And like I said, just give him something to look for, man. Like. You keep them on deck. These are good people, real good people, man. Like my people from way back in the day, real good people. But I definitely want you to help them out, man. Because like I said, if there's anything you can do to help them, they don't know anybody out here other than me. That's it. They don't know anybody other than me. So you be doing a good ass favor by getting them set up and Levine, you know, surprise, Elma Watch. And they don't, it's not like they have to live anywhere. They don't have any family that they have to live around. So you got a huge palette of places to choose for this family. Queen Creek, Santan, you got a huge palette to choose from them. So hopefully you can do something with them, man. Hopefully, like I said, help this family out, man. Say, so how good is sell them? Like, sell them a good <laughs> 385, 415. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the buyback special <laughs> you fucking hilarious <laughs> you will bring that shit up you will bring that shit up nobody knows about that the buyback special <laughs> boy you used to kill me with that shit you used to kill me with that say like, my buddy wants to move there he works in selling his house then he's trying to uh, keep most of his cash i'm gonna tell you man silver fox if your buddy wants to move to phoenix and he wants to buy a nice house and keep cash i tell people all the time man surprise el mirage or sleeper cities good year buckeye they got a little place called victory way the fuck out down indian school as far as you can fucking go these are all little sleeper cities man nobody everybody wants to move to phoenix they want to move to phoenix chandler gilbert um they want to move to uh not sun city a surprise not surprise damn San santan queen creek scottsdale they want to move to places like that they don't hear about places like El Mirage, places like Surprise. And they got baseball training camps up there. So all spring, you go to baseball games. I think Texas Rangers are up there. So you go to baseball games all season, all nice new houses, everything else like that. So there's a lot of places in Phoenix that people don't – yeah, the west side, all west side places. And I'm telling you, I love going out there because, you know, when you start heading up towards Peoria and you start branching out like West Peoria, shit like that, glendale west glendale all on the other side of the 303 it's all brand new shit out there man so the house i just sold completely online i deal with out-of-state clients all day long cool man this is levi milk and the californians moving shit i mean these californians out here they getting deals compared to where they live man they getting deals because they come out here and they be buying two houses at once they be like that's all y'all want for this house <laughs> It's like, yeah, that's it. Damn, give me two. Fuck that. One next door to the other one. Yeah, Santana's the new new. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know Goodyear's the spot. Goodyear, Buckeye. And I dropped off this dude in Goodyear. So, and that's when I Ubered the Jeep. And that's why I tell people, I can't do the fucking BMW in Goodyear. Cannot do it in Goodyear. Because I dropped this dude off in Goodyear. I had the Jeep. So we're going down, we turn it, and it's dark as a motherfucker. We cruising, we cruising. We make a couple of turns. We're going south, south of the fucking 10. We're going south in a good year, deep into it. Make a turn. It's not even by Australia, nothing like that. I start going west. He said, yeah, that's my driveway right there. I turn into the driveway. We got past the concrete wall. This dude must have had like fucking two acres, two acres, big ass house, big ass fucking park. I'm like... And I had to drive through gravel and all the shit to get to his house. He was like, yeah, we used to live like way in like Chandler somewhere. And we decided to come by out here. So we bought all this property and built this house out here. Psh, these people out there living like fucking multimillionaires in good year. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I turned the corner. I was like, and that's why you can't drive a BMW out there. You don't know who you're going to be dropping off. 
And this was just a regular, average, everyday dude. He was like, yeah, man, you know, this and that. Me and my wife, my kids, we live out here. They had all the fake grass around, like, the front area. Then they had, like, all the real grass on the side. He planted all real grass on the side. They said they got, you know, they're going to get some goats and cows and shit like that. I'm like, dude. And this dude had to be, I would say he was, like, 40, 42. I would say 40, 42. And I'm like, this dude got more. He could build, like, fucking five houses on his property and still have a ton of spaces. I'm like, holy shit, this is a lot of land for a dude. Yo, you'd expect like, yeah, exactly. Retirement money. You expect somebody like that to be like, you know, 70, 80 and just be living. Man, this dude, he was still young, still had a lot of nothing but fucking land. I was like, holy shit, dog. I was like, this is how you live out in Goodyear. You can get horses and ride horses on your property. Everybody's got horses out there. Everybody's got dogs. If I lived out there, I'll trust me. Shit. I'd have two horses because you can find horses on Craigslist. I give me motherfucking Craigslist horses. They'd be like, how you fucking find a horse on Craigslist with a peg leg? That motherfucker was cheap. They had a discount fucking horse on Craigslist. That motherfucker had a peg leg. They sold them to me. Buy a horse, get one for free. <laughs> they be selling horses on Craigslist. I'd be looking at the motherfuckers. I'd be like, oh shit, this is a whole motherfucking horse on Craigslist. Man, if you don't go look at your ass some Uber XLs, I'm trying to do Uber Donkey in this motherfucker. Like, what the fuck? This motherfucker got Uber Donkey. I just bought a whole horse on Craigslist. I'm going to roll up and pick a motherfucker up. They be like, wait a minute. He got an Uber light blinking across the horse head. <laughs> it's like, fuck that shit, man. It's like, dude, I'll buy me a horse off of Craigslist in a heartbeat. The motherfucker horse would be looking cool as a motherfucker. They be like, dude, most people get on Craigslist, they be looking for puppies, cats cars maybe a set of tires this motherfucker bought a horse on craigslist <laughs> i'll be looking at the motherfuckers too i'll be like oh that's a pretty color i like that nope. <laughs> get your monkey motherfucker you too old you know you old when you 50 years old looking at about you you retired ass cowboy looking motherfucker be like oh i like that horse that's cool oh shit he even got braids in his head that's a cool ass looking horse right there like dude get off the fucking craigslist before you fuck around by a horse be like okay so they're bringing a horse tomorrow a horse Fuck yeah, my dog's gonna be like, dude, what the fuck kind of dog is this? This is a big ass dog in the backyard. Well, this is a horse. He doesn't train anymore. Like, man, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come with a side of hay. They'll give you free fucking hay. You buy that shit on Craigslist. This is free hay. You get some free hay with every horse purchase. I'm like, man, but man, that's that's funny shit though, man. They sell whole fucking horses on Craigslist. Uber horse XL, <laughs> but watch Clydesdale. Man, man. Hey, that's why I tell motherfuckers, Craigslist is. If I was rich, trust me, if I was rich, dude, just fuck you. You need to block Craigslist off all laptops, computers, motherfucker phones. I'll be on Craigslist like a motherfucker. I just drive around with an 18-wheeler just buying shit off a of Craigslist. I come home every day, that motherfucker loaded to the tilt. They be like, what the fuck, man? I brought a front load washer and dryer. I bought fucking two goddamn banshees. I bought a motherfucking old-ass motorcycle to rebuild, and I got a horse. <laughs> And like if you don't put that shit off a of Craigslist back right where the fuck you got it from, man, I'll be just riding. They call me the Craigslist shopper. He's the Craigslist shopper. Fuck, I'm just driving around like a motherfucker. It'd be some, like I said, motherfucker. Craigslist used to be like old school, man. That's me. I'm I'm old school like a motherfucker. <laughs> he said, "Too gay, Kevin." It's an Uber horse excel, but why is the clouds there? I'm too old school for motherfuckers, man. Like I said, y'all see all these new motherfuckers, they be on Amazon. I'm still on Craigslist. I ain't graduated from that shit yet. I was like, dude, where you get that shit off of Amazon? Well, fuck Amazon, man. I don't need nobody driving up to drop shit off at my house. I don't want no Amazon trucks. For, I want to meet a motherfucker at the gas station, inspect the fucking tires, the wheels, look at the microwave oven over while I was in the back of his fucking van. I'm like looking this motherfucker over, wondering why is the padlock still on it? Hey, why is it a padlock still on this microwave? Oh, my kids, I hate those motherfuckers cooking at night. It's a good idea, dog. I like this microwave. I like that. <laughs> Craigslist. Craigslist is the only motherfucking place you're going to buy a microwave with a padlock on it. You don't find that shit on Amazon. These motherfuckers sell you like brand new shit. I want to find shit that's modified. <laughs> the professor still playing games, man, for real. People in the South love with that, love that donkey, donkey. <laughs> oh, I saw that beauty with that say, You ain't slick. I saw that shit. Let me ride that donkey, donkey. <laughs> shit. I know it for real, but tally, that would be me. I'm telling you, boy, do not ever let me hit fucking lottery, be rich. Shit. I might fuck around and be like, hey, man, if you're an Uber driver today, you're off work 
We're buying shit on Craigslist. Come pick me up. Let's roll. I'll pay you $1,000 for your day. That's it. You get a G for a day. You only got to work for eight hours. We just buying shit on Craigslist. I'm a fucking millionaire. <laughs> I just don't want to drive. I want you to drive so I got time to look on Craigslist. Be, right, be riding around be like, hey, man, hold up for a second. Can I add a stop? <laughs> He's like, what do you mean can you add a stop? Oh, man, because I, I just found some on Craigslist. Like, hold up. Where'd you, man, it's like a goddamn baby pony. They really trying to sell a baby fucking pony, man. I'm not even a full horse. This motherfucker's like dog size. Can it fit in my car? Motherfucker, Uber pony. No, nah, I'll be driving around all fucking day, man. It'd be every time a motherfucker Uber driver get a call, they'd be like, oh, shit. Here we go again. You see this motherfucker? This is goddamn profile picture. My profile picture be like, <laughs> what kind of profile picture is that? Craigslist shit. You're like, oh, man, I'm going to pick this dude. He paid motherfuckers $1,000 a day just to drive him around while he Craigslist shop. Man, this motherfucker bought a set of skis. He live in the desert. What the fuck is he doing? He's just buying shit on Craigslist, man. Motherfucker love Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Y'all motherfuckers be on eBay, Amazon, all these motherfuckers. I'm still old school, goddammit. Like, you got a rusted ass motherfucking air compressor. Well, I'm gonna sand it down and repaint it. Why don't you just buy a brand new one, dog? You rich. Fuck that shit. This is on Craigslist, so you know it's good. Motherfucker buy lawn chairs, ain't even got no yard. <laughs> it, was like, it was on Craigslist, dog. This motherfucker, you just bought like six lawn chairs. You ain't even got no yard. But one day when I do get a yard, I already got the chairs already. I got them off of Craigslist. 15 bucks for all of them. This is, what is it? I got five lift rides in and collected five, six. Damn, kick you doing it, man. Damn, where was you at? Five lift rides. and Oh, that's because you had that, 500, that, that bonus for 500. Dude, that is some genius shit. That's some genius shit. I like how you do it. Yes, exactly. I just remembered that shit because you told me yesterday. I remembered that shit. Smart shit. Smart shit. Man. <laughs> Fucking camp stupid. People in the South will love Uber Donkey. <laughs> that motherfucker come. Hey, you get in front of their house. They don't, they don't have no notification saying arrived and no shit. That shit just go. Hey, hey, I think Jeff outside, man. He outside. I just heard the donkey, man. Uber Donkey's out. He <laughs> <laughs> Yo, motherfucker, app be quiet as a motherfucker. Like, dude, when is he gonna show up? Years I'm go. I think the donkey's outside. Your ride's here. Motherfucker, pull the ears back. <laughs> like, don't fucking let me buy no donkey. I'm a fucking Craigslist. Shit, we gonna do some damage with that donkey. God damn it. They be like, man, it took you all day to get here. This motherfucker rode Uber Donkey. Why don't you just get a regular car? Man, it's Uber Donkey, dog. You got to do that, man. Uber Donkey's cool as a motherfucker. <laughs> I know. No, no. It's like Uber Pilot. Exactly. Motherfuckers don't want to mess with us, man. They don't want to mess with us. Hey, I, don't ever let me get rich because shit's going to be different. We're going to have a fun fucking time. I'm going to be like, hey, man, this weekend, everybody fly out. I got $2 million. We're going to fly out. We're just going to go around and just Craigslist shop. We're going to get a big-ass motherfucking Uber Uber Black XL motherfucking seven-seat Tahoe or some shit, Suburban. But we're going to pay this motherfucker a thousand bucks to drive us around, and we're going to buy shit on Craigslist. We're going to hook a trailer to his shit. <laughs> this motherfucker got a weed eater. Dude, you got desert landscaping at your house. The fuck you buy a weed eater for? Man, it was like $8, dude. The fuck you going to do with an $8 weed eater with no yard? It's on Craigslist, man. Just buy that motherfucker. It's on Craigslist. It's like, shit. <laughs> you need to get t-shirts that says, it was on Craigslist. Motherfucker like, shit. Dean be like, yeah, man, I got a date tomorrow night. What? Yeah, man, I met her on Craigslist. Don't go, motherfucker. They got the Craigslist killer on that shit. Don't go on Craigslist. They be killing motherfuckers. I got to meet her at Whataburger. <laughs> You know, if you if you got a date off a of Craigslist and the motherfucker say we gonna meet at Whataburger, cancel that date real fucking quick. No, nah, because you ain't gonna want you you ain't gonna want what you see when you get to Whataburger. Trust me. Yeah, just meet me at Whataburger, baby. <laughs> it's like no, I'm cool on that shit. Most girls want to go, you know, to a nice ass rep of Chang's. You know what I'm saying? They want to go to a fucking steakhouse, raw sushi. No, no, I'm just taking me to motherfucker Whataburger. I'm going to get that number 15. We're going to talk for a minute. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to go on this date, I don't think. 
<laughs> you met a bitch on Craigslist. You said, let's go to Whataburger. <laughs> motherfucker, you pull up in front of her house on that motherfucker donkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> Tony, he was taking a Waffle House. <laughs> ever, ever bring you some burgers and leave. I know for real. Motherfucker taking a Waffle House. Where are we going? Waffle House. They don't let my dunk in Waffle House. That motherfucker ate a whole goddamn fucking piece of chicken last time we was at Waffle House. They don't let him back. They don't let me chain him up in front no more. I got we got to go somewhere else. <laughs> it's like, all right. How where has Dunky been? Man, this Dunky been everywhere. This is my motherfucking Dunky out Craigslist. Shit, we rolled everywhere. Watch now, everybody gonna go on Craigslist. Fucking find a Dunky. <laughs> I'm finna buy this motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Dunky getting wild at Waffle House, kicking people faces and shit. I do it. This motherfucker, he on pam. Scattered, smother, covered, greaser spoon. Motherfucker, I do it. Motherfucker, this is goddamn Waffle House. You want to fuck with this? Man, this is Craig, Craig's this girlfriend. My ship that bones ends at midnight. <laughs> exactly. You don't want to meet nobody on Craigslist. Trust me. If, if somebody's still using Craigslist to meet people, yeah, these motherfuckers, nah, they, they are not up, up to par. Trust me. They are not up to par. You buy shit off of Craigslist. Don't meet no motherfucker on Craigslist. Fuck that. They be like, why you why are you on Craigslist? You ain't on Facebook? No, nah, because they be wanting pictures on Facebook. Yeah, that's your sign right there. It's like, hold up. You don't want to give me no picture? No, nah, you don't want to see me. Meet me at Waffle House. <laughs> like, you don't sound like somebody I'd want to hang out with. You won't even send me a picture? <laughs> <laughs> I know Craig's girlfriend. You may want to verify that she's a heat. I can't help but picture that donkey rolling through town. <laughs> I don't want to be like, clop, 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 be riding your donkey through town. Like, motherfucker, you got a license plate on the back of your donkey. Motherfucker, this shit's registered with Uber. I pick bitches up. <laughs> motherfucker, you, you open your app all of a sudden. You're like, holy shit, there's an icon that says Uber donkey. It's one motherfucker with a donkey in town. That's him right there. Dude, I got Uber Eats, Deliveries, Connect, Uber, and Uber Donkey. I ain't never seen Uber Donkey. Yup, yup, that motherfucker right there just bought one. He's a millionaire. <laughs> he paid Uber a million bucks to put that donkey online. That motherfucker drives that shit around. <laughs> hey, Kit Gunner, don't worry. It's on the way. Uh, Uber Hooker, trust me. Uber Task is what it's going to be mirrored up under. You're going to see motherfuckers under Uber Task, and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, um, uh, can you send a, a cleaner over? Yeah, we need a cleaner. She cute, though. <laughs> Uber going to be like, we know what you're talking about. We got the cold word. We got the cold. We'll send a cute cleaner over. <laughs> Uber try to charge. Uber try to charge Jesus Uber donkey on Palm Sunday. I know for real. Well, but just like, man, I just got to get to the tabernacle and save some motherfuckers, man. What are you doing? Sorry, man. That's a $17 ride. 17 shekels. <laughs> I ain't got 17 shekels, man. I'm Jesus. Jesus Christ, these prices. <laughs> Motherfucker say his own name. Jesus Christ, these prices. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but that phrase doesn't come out until after you've passed away. You can't say Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. These prices is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Time to wake up. Dunkin' rolls through with Pedro as a jockey with a turban on his head. Ride that motherfucker. <laughs> he's the savior of the gay community. Waving at people like he's the Pope. <laughs> Pedro and the donkey. That's a new children's book coming out. Pedro and the donkey. Man. Oh, Fernando, what time are you coming out? Man, the BMW still in a million pieces. I got to fucking get this goddamn party in tomorrow. Well, tomorrow's Saturday. So I'm going to check tracking and see if this shit shows up tomorrow because I can have it back together. I think I can. It took me a couple hours to get it apart. Back together always goes faster because, you know, learning curve kicks in. I know what to do and what not to do. So hopefully I can get this month. If the park come in tomorrow, I'm back on the road tomorrow. I cannot. I'm losing money every day. I'm not fucking driving. This shit's getting tiring. I'm like, man, I'm at the point where I'm just going to have to go out and fucking go on Craigslist by this donkey. I got to ride so. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Pedro ride around waving the gym. He said, females will love it because it's different. They're like, oh, man, he's so cool. This dude came and picked us up on a donkey. Like, this motherfucker stank. <laughs> for spray for breeze all over the donkey. I just spray for breeze on his butt. You can sit back there. Like, motherfucker, I'm not sitting on no funky donkey. 
<laughs> That's his name. That's my donkey's name, Funky. Like, motherfucker, what's your donkey name? Funky. Funky Donkey. <laughs> I'm going to name that motherfucker Funky. I'm going to buy him off of Craigslist and name him Funky. <laughs> Eating a crusty dusty on a Funky Donkey. <laughs> Hey, that's a children's book kick. Hey, you got a children's book eating a crusty dusty on a funky donkey. Man, I'm gonna tell you right now, we sell copies of that motherfucker every time we get online. Like, dude, we cannot believe we just sold 2,000 copies of Funky Donkey. <laughs> Uber Donkey with country music. I'm telling you. Yeah, Jeff got a donkey on Craigslist and cut a deal. He got a free radio fly so we can get Uber Donkey XL. I know it for real, man. Y'all motherfuckers are killing me. I got my eyes burning now, man. What time was that? I made $90 tonight. Uber gave me that quest yesterday, and now they're throttling and ghost paws in my ass like a motherfucker. Yeah, that's what they do. You got that money. They mad at you now. They mad. You got that money. Shit. You got that donkey in your pocket now. Shit, motherfucker. <laughs> I made 90 donkeys tonight instead of $90. Man, I made 90 donkeys. <laughs> Time to wake up. That's Uber money right there. You know you make Uber money. You start calling that shit. I made 90 donkeys. I feel like a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, he straight up made 90 donkeys. <laughs> they they throttle you down. They ain't throttle you, man. They, these motherfuckers out here riding my donkey, man. They better pay me up. You all motherfuckers riding my donkey. Shit, I need these donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, time to wake up. <laughs> this motherfucker straight out there. His ass making them donkeys. Shit. Tomorrow, motherfucker, like, hey, man, this is some shit, man. I'm dying, man. Y'all fucking stupid, man. That shit's stupid as a motherfucker. <laughs> we gonna start calling that shit. Hey, we out here making these Uber donkeys feeling like a jackass tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody out there working like a motherfucker. <laughs> Uber Dunk only available to buck tooth looking people. I know it. <laughs> yeah, you got to send your profile pick in. You only get Uber Dunk if you're looking like that. Motherfucker, hell yeah. Hey, send that motherfucker Uber Dunk. Shit. Send him funky to Donkey. <laughs> Fuck that shit. And Pedro, hell no. It was like, motherfucker, I just, I called for a Mercedes. I was trying to get him a Mercedes. How the fuck this donkey end up in front of my house? <laughs> Look at your teeth, motherfucker. That's why that donkey here. <laughs> That's your ride, motherfucker. Look at your teeth. I ain't fuck my motherfucking teeth. Where my motherfucking Mercedes at? <laughs> Where my boy Logan? Logan ain't supposed to come get me. Motherfucker, Logan ain't letting your buck teeth ass in that motherfucking Mercedes. Man, fuck you, man. Logan better come over here and pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> my motherfucking donkey name is Mercedes. <laughs> exactly. This this donkey Mercedes motherfucker. This name Mercedes five hundred. Fuck that shit. Like, but and you put a big ass race number on his ass five hundred. This is donkey five hundred Mercedes motherfucker. Man, y'all killing me, man. Provision, oh hell yeah, motherfucker. That provision, oh fucking donkey driver like a motherfucker. Uber ain't ready for that shit yet. Uber ain't ready. <laughs> Uber is not ready for that yet, man. I'm telling you. Y'all motherfuckers, Uber donkey pulling the Circle K homeless guy over to wash him. Man, let me wash your donkey. Man, that shit don't sound right. Get the fuck away from me with that squeegee. <laughs> let me wash your donkey, dog. Let me wash your donkey. I know. <laughs> Logan better get out and mow the lawn. <laughs> Get a free crusty dusty with your first wash. That motherfucking donkey kick his ass over the fucking gas pump. <laughs> fuck with that donkey. Them donkeys be kicking, boy. You fuck around. Shit. Let me wash your not bone. That motherfucker kick his ass. <laughs> you can see a motherfucker fly back fast as a motherfucker hit that gas pump, hit straight to the ground. Motherfucker, bam, bam. Like, damn, what happened? She the motherfucker standing behind my donkey, motherfucker. His bitch got some kick. <laughs> you fucking with the wrong shit. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I'm gonna get on Craigslist. I'm gonna find me a donkey. Watch first thing in the morning. I'm waking up. I'm seeing what's the down man. What's the down payment on this donkey? I'm like motherfucker, we're not selling you this donkey. We saw you online. We know what you aim and do with Sally. That's not Sally. That's funky. It's my new donkey, motherfucker. That's funky. <laughs> Sally's a girl. You can't name a girl funky. Shit, Sally funky. Man, <clears throat> y'all got me fucking crying, boy. My eyes are on fucking fire. Y'all are nuts with this shit. Nuts with it, man. 
But see, that's what I just wanted to hang out with y'all, man, on fucking Friday night. Because I know, man, night drivers, we never get chances to hang out because everybody does lives in the daytime. Nobody does night lives. And here we are. We're the night crew, man. We're the night fucking crew. Strap the dunk to the BMW, <laughs> pull it around. Oh, I'm gonna need a horse carriage with. Oh, I got like I, I got airbags. I can go get me a donkey trailer. I can drag that motherfucker around. I'll take that shit right to Walmart. Put two big ass bags on the side of that motherfucker and just start delivering people. Commercial donkey license, real shit. <laughs> CDL. <laughs> I'm gonna make that shirt, Kev. CDL, commercial donkey license. I'm gonna put a big ass donkey on the back with buck teeth for that motherfucker. <laughs> Man, that's just funny as motherfucker. I got my CDL commercial donkey license with Funky. She y'all not ready for that motherfucker. Funky's riding tonight. Watch, I'm gonna I'm gonna let a motherfucker sit up there and request an Uber, and they gonna get picked up at Walmart. I'm gonna come around the motherfucking corner, and I'm gonna park the BMW around the corner, and they gonna see that my car is there. No, I just need the phone. So I'm gonna fucking get out, and I'm gonna walk up. I'm gonna see a motherfucker. I'm gonna be like. Uh, ride for fucking Jamie. In my fucking like, yeah. All right, cool. This is what we on today. Wait a fucking minute. You telling me we got to ride a man? Just throw the motherfucking bags on the saddle of this damn donkey. Well, I got saddle bags on this motherfucker. You can sit on it, and I can just walk into your house. <laughs> dude, this dude came pick us up from Walmart with all our shit with a donkey. Man, this motherfucker's crazy. He bought that shit on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> I know Kim. They fucking stupid over here, man. They fucking stupid. He's in a fucking CDL. <coughs> Motherfuckers, I got my <coughs> I got my commercial donkey license on their ass. Fuck <laughs> shit. I'ma ride this motherfucker. Fernando said it's bad out here. What hey, what market you in, man? What market you in? <laughs> Tony said the donkey phone out. Where you gonna put that motherfucker and strap that shit to one of his ears? That motherfucker be hanging up. Like, that motherfucker got a satellite phone, big-ass fucking ear and shit. Like, fucking put the phone on top of his head. Pull a, <laughs> pull a radio flyer wagon behind the donkey. Oh, man, the old red, the red and white wagons from back in the day. Oh, yeah. Motherfucker be like, Yonk. fucking just walking like motherfucker. Tell the pastor to get in. Hey, man, you got to get in that little wagon. But you got to get the plastic ones that got the seats, like the little kid seats. In. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker be riding across the park a lot getting drugged by a donkey you better hope that motherfucker don't kick and <laughs> that shit kick that whack <laughs> man man i know we updated <laughs> we updated the uber horse pony express to rescue exactly exactly what up Paris? like what up pops <laughs> shit we out here cracking the fuck up boy they all kill me with these fucking update the uber horse the pony express to the rescue we could do that Hey, Pony Express Uber shit. And I would take that out to Goodyear. I'd ride a motherfucking horse out to Goodyear, for real. Motherfuckers be like, dude, this dude just, sh he showed the fuck up. Like, yeah, showed the fuck up on a horse. This motherfucker's crazy. That's Uber Pony Express. <laughs> the St. Louis market is decent. Yeah. And see, kick, that's the thing, especially in the wintertime. Oh, man. There's going to be a lot of motherfuckers not wanting to walk nowhere in the winter. You're going to have a lot of short trips out there. A lot of short trips. Man. <laughs> got the donkey sidecar if you don't pay extra so you don't get kicked <laughs> I know, it, dude, that need to be the slogan with uber donkey you don't get canceled you get kicked <laughs> <laughs> like are you gonna cancel me no nah, motherfucker you finna get kicked <laughs> damn that shit's stupid as a motherfucker. And you show a motherfucker in the goddamn video getting donkey kicked like a motherfucker with Uber Donkey. You don't get canceled. You get kicked. That motherfucker like bam. <laughs> Fly back into the side of the barn like a motherfucker. <laughs> like your ass better pay it. You better upgrade to the sidecar. Upgrade to the sidecar, man. That's just funny as a motherfucker. You see, a, <laughs> you see a motherfucker in a commercial with a big ass knot on his head, like hey. You better start upgrading to the sidecar. I learned. <laughs> Big ass knot on his motherfucking head. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I said, what you doing, bro? Just kicking it in my Uber donkey. <laughs> that's, the, that's the sound going to happen when your ride arrive. <laughs> Shit comes straight to your phone. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck is that weird ass sound? Oh man, it's my ride just showed up. It's just not like a donkey motherfucker. Look out the window. I'm gonna be sitting there with a wagon attached. To it. <laughs> You're like, oh dog, you're gonna get canceled, you're gonna get kicked. He said, or shot, one of the two. 
Exactly. So, so you don't get kicked. You don't get canceled. Fuck that. Some man, some rise from the supermarkets are straight canceled. Once you pull in the other day, it was that very three fat adults with two full carts all the way to the top. I said, fuck it, cancel and went away. Yeah, John, man. Hey, this is the thing. Uber needs a button. All these motherfuckers, they need buttons on their phones with oversized loads. If somebody has like a lot of shit in shopping carts or shit at your, just hit oversized load. That's it. And that gives the driver a chance to know whether or not I want to drive to this motherfucker or not. That's it. Because I hate getting, excuse me, getting somewhere and it's way too much shit. Shit happened to me one time with the uh, Jeep. No, it was the Jeep or was it the BMW? What did I have? No, it was the BMW because I remember his e-bike wouldn't fit in the trunk because we tried to fit it in the trunk. So I remember that a long time ago it was the e-bike and I had to go park by the dental office because he did the, he had one of those um medical rides, one of those fucking uh, meth rides. So he stood by the office, that medical office, and got his meth ride because it only goes from medical office to medical office. But his mom lived down the street. So he rode his e-bike down the street. So when I got to the medical office, it said arrived. And he said, he texted me and said, hey, I'm actually at this address right down the street. So I'm like, when I got there, I realized why he said that. Because he was like, um, it was a meth ride. It wasn't a real ride. So I get there, pick him up. He's got the e-bike. He says, well, it folds down and everything. So we starting to fold the motherfucker down. I was like, dude, this ain't going to fit, man. This won't fit. And he was like, oh, it'll fit. It fit in a Prius. I was like, dude, this is a small ass BMW. It's not going to fit. Oh, it fit in the Prius. So I said, you know what? I'm going to have to cancel the ride, man. All right, I'll just get another ride. I'll get another ride. I had to drive all the way back down the street to the clinic just to cancel the ride so I can get the cancellation fee because I had already left and went down the street to his mom's house. So I had to go all the fucking way back, park, sit there, wait, 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 wait. Finally got the goddamn ride. And when he set the ride, he set it by the door because it was a small business park. So I had to park on one side, walk through the center. Then I can actually get the ride and everything canceled. It's fucking crazy, man. People like that, I'm telling you, man, these motherfuckers, they be trying to hustle people, man. They be trying to hustle people. And I'm like, dude, you went through all you had to do was message me. Message me and say, hey, I got an e-bike. Is it cool? No. Because motherfucker, he, he waited till I got there so he can try to fucking hustle me to try to fit this big-ass e-bike in the back. He said, it folds down. Nope, not doing it. Still got my cancel fee. Fuck that. I was mad as hell. Man. What kick say? He says, hey, I had a Walmart pickup and a lady had her kids, two kids and some bags of stuff they bought. Almost canceled, but took it. Her car had an issue. I drove them 1.5 miles for $8 and got a $20 tip. That's how that shit works, man. That happened to me one time. I got to Walmart. I'll get there to pick up a lady. Her pickup is there in the parking lot. So I'm like, usually it's at the front door. Like, people be at the front door. So I'm like, okay, let me go over and pick them motherfuckers up. So I cruise through the parking lot. Get over there. She got all her groceries in her motherfucking car and her tires were flat. I was like, so we had to unload all that shit out of her car into the back of my BMW. She was like, I just got a tow service coming tomorrow to get it. I don't have time for it, this and that. And her daughter had the, the lug in her car. She had the lug nuts, the lock thing in her fucking car. Because they both got the same lug nuts, lug nuts on their car, but her daughter had to take her. So she took it. So she couldn't even get the fucking spare off. Man, it'd be some crazy shit going on around here, man. He's got that Walmart pickups are crazy. You never know what you're going to get when you roll up. Like to do with the three big ass five gallon jugs. I can't fuck with people like that, man. You have no idea what you're rolling up to. You trying. You're like, well, I'm going to try to help somebody out because I know it's Walmart. It's a short, like I said, it's always apartment complexes in the area. So I don't mind as long as it's like one of the external apartments. When it's deep in the apartments and they got to walk from your car all the way through courtyards and shit to get to their place. Man, it takes too long. And the apps need to say that. Courtyard apartment. Something like that. Let us know it's a courtyard apartment. That lets me know I got to help this motherfucker. Because I'm not going to sit here and let them walk four or five fucking trips back and forth. I could carry a lot of shit. Let me just do this shit in one shot with you. Let's go. It's a courtyard apartment. Let's go. I'll carry half this shit. You get the other half. Let's roll. Man. Yeah, exactly, man. I'm fucking wheel locks. And that's what it is. If you don't keep your wheel lock on your car, like both of my cars, I got wheel locks, but I keep that shit in my car because you're stuck. What are you going to do? You got to get a tow truck. Tow truck from where you are might run you two or three hundred bucks. When I had to do is just keep the wheel lock on you. But some people don't think of that kind of shit because they don't think of flat tires. They think, oh, I'm just going to go here and go there. Man, be too many nails and shit out here. Way too much construction. Fuck that. 
Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. And that's what happened, man. She had to call a tow truck to come get her car the next day because her daughter had the wheel lock thing in her car clean on the other side of town. So she was going to get a tow truck to come in the morning because she was only from Walmart to some apartments like in Tempe. It was a quick ride, but it was the fact that she couldn't even take her car home. It was on flat tires. I should have known something was screwy when it wasn't at the front door, when the pickle was actually in the fucking parking lot. Because I was like, well, that's kind of weird. So I turn in. And I'm like, see a lady sitting next to a car. She got the kids and stuff there. Motherfucker, she opened that trunk. All my fucking groceries. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, man. Wait a minute, bro. There was a loophole for medical rides in Colorado. They were busing people from southern Colorado with fentanyl rehab. They were using illegals as drivers and got 10K per trip. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So Uber and Lyft, they were busing people from Southern Colorado with fentanyl rehab money, and they were using illegal as drivers and got 10 to cost Colorado all millions on that shit. So the state of Colorado was using not Uber and Lyft. So it was an actual bus service, like a real service where the state was paying the buses to bring people up and stuff like that. And the state was paying for that, but they were bringing up fentanyl not actual fucking people. Man, that's crazy. And they were using illegals as drivers. Wow. Man, I'm telling you, dude, some. And the thing is, we know this shit's going on. Yes, yeah, fake transportation service. They, there's something going on in this country with a whole bunch of corruption right now because people know they can get away with it. People know there's no investigations and no audits. Why do you think Uber and Lyft's doing the shit they doing? They know there's no investigation. There's no audits. You can get caught doing shit. You're going to get a small fine. That's it. The, the fine is small compared to what you should be paying, what you stole. The fines are pretty small. So people are more like, you know, it is cheaper. It's more economic for us to just do the crime, keep all what we stole and just pay a fine. We make a lot more money just doing the crime because crime does pay in this country. We talked about it sure early in this live stream. Crime is starting to pay. It's starting to fucking pay people. And that shit irritates me, man, because as drivers, we sitting here just trying to do straight up legit business with people. And it's like they're going to turn us into motherfuckers that violate the TOS. We got to violate the TOS just to pay fucking rent. Man. What up, Tom Luke? What's good? What's good? The Uber drug runner service. Yeah, exactly. Kick. That's what it's becoming, man. That's what it's becoming. Oh, yeah. Kim, you're right. Drivers, be careful not to drive around high schools. It's too many high schools requesting Uber. That shit caught me in a Walgreens. I did a day ride a long time ago. I did a day ride and I, cause I was just out. I was like, okay, I'm out in the daytime. I'm doing a few errands, this and that, you know, let me just see if I can get a ride back, man. I picked up somebody from Walgreens across the street from Tempe high school. Should have known it was a kid, but it was so much crazy traffic, this and that. And I'm sitting there like, I'm not going to take this fuck ride. I was like, you know what? I'll do it. It's not that long of a ride. I'll do it. Never again. Did I turn on my app by, by fucking Tempe high? Nope. Because those are nothing but kids over there. Nothing but kids. They don't tip for one thing. And you could probably get in trouble doing that shit. And I'm thinking, this is probably not this girl's account. This got to be something else. She's way too young to have an account. Can't be possible. But I took her ass home anyways. I was like, man, fuck that. Yep, illegal is now legal. Yep, you're right. You're right. And that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's too many people out here allowing crime to go under the radar unreported. Because look at half the politicians we got. Look at them. Man, they're all fucking criminals, man. All of them got scandals going on. They're all getting kicked out of Congress. Like today, that one dude got, got expelled out of Congress and shit like that for all the shit he was pulling. And these motherfuckers, man, shoes. So do you have a dash cam that records the cabin of the BMW? Nope, I had one, but I gave it away. <laughs> I should get one back. Fuck that. Yeah, but all these motherfucking politicians out there, man, they're doing some shady shit. They're doing some real shady shit. And a lot of people are realizing that the people who are like, it's like giving the criminals the keys to the prison. If you're giving the criminals the keys to the prison, criminals are going to support criminals doing criminalistic shit. And guess who they're going to want to put in prison? In prison, they're going to put anybody who will expose their crimes because the people who are just, the people who are fair and equitable want to expose the fact that criminals got the keys and the criminals are doing criminal shit with criminals. So what do the criminals do? We going to hurry up and lock up every fucking body who can bust us. That's what's going on. And that's why I think a lot of people are ditching Congress right now. A lot of people because heads about the road, man. Heads about the road. 
And I think a lot of people are not happy with what's coming down the pipe. With like, is it this pandemic? A bunch of corporations involved, a bunch of people are involved. People are not happy about it. People ain't happy about it. And in history, like I said, all of the newscasters that were out back when this shit first happened, none of them, none of them are ever in the media right now saying anything that could be trusted. They don't say shit. They don't even have shows no more. Nobody fucks with them. Nobody fucks with them because they know they're all puppets. Yeah, they're all blackmail right now. Everybody's blackmail. It's like everybody's got dirt on everybody. I can't wait to see what happens to AOC. I can't wait to see what happens to that lady because I know she's up to some shady shit. I know it. I mean, she went from being a bartender to making about 70, 80,000 a year to now being worth four million dollars. What does she know to be worth four million dollars? What does she know? I mean, you can only make Long Island fucking iced tea so many times before you, you know, it's not worth four million bucks. You can make some fucking fuzzy navels, some Mai Tais, kamikazes and shit. But for what are you worth for four million dollars? I'm like, she got involved in Congress. She has information on people. That's where the worth comes from. Just like you said, blackmail. Because if you tell me you could take me, $70,000 a year person, give me a job in Congress. Congress is going to pay me about the same, $70,000, cool. Take my salary, pay my bills, do whatever this and that. Where's the, the multi-millions coming from? Where are the multi-millions coming from? It's information. That's where it's coming from. It's dirt on people. It's blackmail. So they're going to at least say, hey, you know what? We're going to make you worth something because you know shit. So because you know shit, we're going to put a price tag on what you know. Not what you're really worth, but on what you know. We could pay you four million bucks. Four million bucks. If you just kind of kick back, relax, you're going to make four million dollars off this information. But we're going to pay it to you in increments so it don't look funny. Because if we gave it all to you in one lump sum, it looks funny. So we're going to give you four million over the next, you know, three, four, five years. We're going to give you four million bucks. Nobody will know the fucking difference. Because you're going to be living like a regular millionaire, not somebody who just hit a $4 million fucking lottery jackpot at once. And that's why, man, <laughs> actually, AOC is the one who was qualified to ride the Uber. <laughs> Her buck teeth motherfucking ass. <laughs> I'm going to name my Uber donkey, AOC. This is AOC, the donkey. We showing up. <laughs> man, Kamala Harris' brother is the law, is the uh, in-law, is the senior legal advisor for Uber. Don't even tell me that shit. Don't tell me that shit. Man. Paris, I thank you. You're the best on YouTube, Jeff. Seriously. Do not tell me, Seth. Do not tell me you were right. Kamala Harris is the brother-in-law. Her, her brother-in-law is the senior legal advisor for Uber. Bull, man. Don't fuck with me, man. Don't fuck with me, man. I'm telling you. These motherfuckers is all, man. Man, Whew. you just, I've been learning some crazy shit tonight. I learned that Dara used to work for Expedia. I didn't know that shit. And we are, now I learned that last night, talking about travel agents and shit. And it was like, you know, Dara used to be the fucking CEO for Expedia. I was like, no way, no, no fucking way. Somebody told me that shit last night. I was like, bullshit. And it was true. And now you telling me this motherfucker is the senior legal advisor for Uber. We're fucking done. We're done. I'm throwing in the fucking towel. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I say, I'm going to tell you, the election of 2024 is so fucking critical right now. Because this is why Uber will not ever be investigated if these people stay in fucking power. This is why Lyft will not be investigated if, they, if people stay in power. We've got to get people out there who will listen to the crimes we're saying. Instead of just finding Lyft, finding Uber whose legal advisor is related to the fucking VP of the United States, that tells you all you need to know. That's why they always getting slaps on the fucking wrist. That's why they so egregious with they fucking theft. Why they so egregious with fucking stealing tips. Why they don't give a shit about audit and investigation. This is why when you give the criminals the keys to the fucking prison, when you give criminals the keys to the fuck, exactly. Trump has to run the country from prison. Exactly. If, if Trump's going to become a prisoner, give that prisoner the keys to the fucking prison because I'm he's going to pull a whole lot of motherfuckers in there with him who really belong in there. He's going to pull a whole bunch of these motherfuckers in there. Man, 
Rod Flo, what up, Chad? Just got home from driving, man. He's after a bunch of crooks, man. We was just on that shit, man. Just on that shit. And I'm sitting there like, dude, it, it's, it's so sad. I had no idea. You motherfuckers be hooking me up with some information, man. Y'all be hooking me up with some shit. Like I said, I love this motherfucking channel because I learned something so much. If it ain't about driving, it's about real fucking life and why shit is the way it is. I had no idea. Like I said, I... People know when I used to make my, I was like, man, making videos, say, man, this shit is like fucking travel agent level shit. What we dealing with right now. I ain't never seen no shit like this. I've been saying that for like months. This shit is like travel agent shit. What the fuck? Last night, motherfuckers like, dude, you know, Dare used to be the CEO of Expedia. I said, you fucking lying to me, man. Don't tell me that shit. No, I'm serious. Dare used to be the CEO of Expedia. I was like, this is way too fucking ironic. Cause I used to say this shit all the fucking time that it feels like a goddamn travel agency ripping us off. And you telling me this motherfucker was Expedia CEO? And now you telling me these motherfuckers in the White House right now is essentially at legally advising Uber and Lyft on how to destroy the fucking economy, how to destroy the economy. How many times have I said these apps are destroying our fucking economy? You got the U.S. government destroying the economy, giving billions of dollars to everybody else in this motherfucking world except the people whose money it is. Give me my motherfucking money back. Then you say, then I'm saying these apps is really out here destroying the economy by charging people X amount of fucking dollars, not putting no money back into the economy. I've said this shit feels like cryptocurrency. SBF was involved with the government and cryptocurrency and all of this shit. Everything that motherfuckers are saying is starting to make sense, dude. All it takes is common sense. All it takes is common sense. A lot of this shit is starting to feel like it all relates to each other. Like everything's starting to link up, like all the fucking dots, all the dots are connecting now of all the players and all the people and all, man, man, that's right. That's right. CBDC. And this is what that man, man, I'm telling you, man, this shit is crazy. Trump will be the first president to take oath behind bars and still be a boss. Real shit. I think he should take, take the fucking presidency, recuse himself from jail or whatever the they call it. It, like excuse himself from jail be like you know what i think today i want to be free you gotta let the motherfucker out i mean he's the commander-in-chief he could command any fucking thing be like hey you gotta let me out <laughs> yeah that's why i call him Derek cash cowie that motherfucker exactly Derek cash cowie because that's exactly what it is he's a cash fucking cow just like sbf in that goddamn crypto shit with ftx they was giving all these government people all this fucking money. All it. Look at Uber and Lyft. Look at Uber and Lyft. Like I said, man, you just hit me to some fucking game tonight, man. You hit me to some game. You done fucked up. You done fucked up now. Because now I'm about to dig these motherfuckers a grave. <laughs> man. Man. I had no idea. No idea. You hit me to some game. Damn. Dude, this is, like I said, we just chat, man. We sit around and we chat like it's a motherfucker barbecue, and I love it. I love that people ain't scared to speak up. Just say shit, man. You know ain't no motherfucking channel out there gonna talk like this. None of them. Zero. Zero. Because they all out there want you to pay attention to, hey, you can now see the front of Starbucks on your app. Open up Starbucks. Look, you can see Starbucks now. Isn't that amazing for you drivers? No, it's amazing to know who these motherfuckers is stealing our money. I want to know these people. Who are all these people running the show right now? This is why legal is connected to the White House. Uber legal is connected to the White House. And I've always said, it seems like Uber is intentionally trying to destroy the economy. If the U.S. government has been intentionally trying to destroy the economy, and we have said they've intentionally been trying to destroy the economy, you have a motherfucker connected to the White House saying, hey, make sure we use these fucking apps, these technological apps, to destroy the economy. For all we know, we could have spyware on this fucking shit for all we know. If you're connected to the U.S. government, the Pentagon could be using this shit for all we fucking know. We have no idea. So you got people saying, hey, man, just add this patch, add this bot, add this and add that and add this. Now we got all these motherfucking drivers out there. They're essentially government agents and they don't even fucking know it. <laughs> man, Jamaican, you real, you real, you real. Dom, real shit, man. We talk about real life shit. This is because it's affecting us all. It affects us all, man. We ain't just a bunch of motherfuckers hitting the accept or decline button. We live in this motherfucking world. We live in this city. We live in this state. We live in this country. This shit affects us, man. 
all these people. Jamaican, you're right. The other channels don't talk like this because they weak sauce. They don't want that hot sauce. So I'm here. Shit, I want that hot sauce. Bring it, motherfucker. Throw that shit on my tacos. <laughs> Man. Beyonce owns a lot of shares. Uber paid paid her for a concert back in 2016. Man, man. Yeah, the other gig channels are super visual with their silly changes. And it's, re it's weird because I tell motherfuckers all the time, go watch these channels. Go watch them because that's how you're going to know who's on what side. You got to watch your motherfucking enemies, man. Don't, don't dodge they motherfucking ass. Watch they ass. Some channels be like, hey, don't go and watch these channels. Don't watch this one. Don't watch that one. Don't watch this. Why not? I say, watch these motherfuckers. Know what moves your enemy is making. Know when these motherfuckers want to sit with these apps and hang out with these apps and be like, hey, we're part of the apps. We're part of the apps. It's like, cool, knock yourself the fuck out. I know who not to listen to, who not to trust. I'll listen, but I don't trust what these motherfuckers are saying. Because if you are that linked in with these people who we know have corrupt intentions, linked to corrupt fucking people, Kamala Harris's brother-in-law, Kamala Harris, Locked up more black motherfuckers in California in the history of the state of California. And her ass is the most corrupt motherfucker I know. Joe Biden, same fucking way. Locked up more black motherfuckers than probably Bill Clinton did. <laughs> and it's like, these are the most corrupt fucking people you could ever deal with. And they're Democrats. Replacing our American system with a slave system by saying in 2021, we're going to just allow motherfuckers to come over here. Don't build a wall. Let these motherfuckers come because we building all these fucking prisons for a reason. We building all these prisons for a reason. We building these prisons, not for illegal immigrants, not for little petty ass fucking criminals who do riots on, you know, stores. We got interest. No, we need to fucking build prisons for any fucking body who supports a government other than ours. And to me, that's treason against the American people. It's treason against the American to not give us a choice, a choice on who we choose should represent this country and which direction we want to take this country. Instead of giving us that choice, you're locking up our fucking choice and saying we're going to lock all you motherfuckers up, too, if you choose it. J6. Shit, man. Dude, we, we part of the apps. I'm telling you, man, we fucking agents now. We're all agents. We're a bunch of fucking Uber donkeys. We jackasses. <laughs> We are the jackasses of Uber. Like, well, we all riding Uber donkeys right now. Fuck that. Yeah. That's why I identify as a black lesbian. This is my backup to get a high paying job and not be qualified to do it. Shh, exactly. Jean Pierre. Don't even start with me on that shit. Jean Pierre, whatever her name is. There was part of the investment bank in 1991. Oh, these motherfuckers, man, they, they deep. They deep. And then the banks, the banks right now. That's why all these people are all linked, man. They're all linked. They're all fucking linked. Was that? I'm surprised they don't have a little professor head pop up on the app. If you tap him, he jumps up and eats part of your earnings before the pay. <laughs> I know. I'm like, wait a minute. That was $10. How did it get to be seven? <laughs> oh, shit. Now it's down to five. This motherfucker. Close the screen. Close the screen. Tony West, Kamala's brother-in-law, chief legal officer for Uber. It's true. Ryan, man, I'm telling you, I had no idea. No idea. Shit, Joseph, at 20 plus years, I worked in law enforcement. I teach college classes. We have 4.5% of the world population and 25% of the world's prison population. That will tell you right there. Why do you think we're building so many prisons? Because American citizens, they look at American citizens as basically free roam prisoners right now. We're free roam prisoners. They're looking for a fucking reason to get one of us. Looking for a reason. If you support anything outside of the government that's that's in power right now, the administration that's in power right now, you're probably going to get locked up for some shit. You're going to get locked up for something. And like I said, all those people that, you know, when Stacey Abrams didn't win that government, that Georgia seat or whatever like that, and everybody was like, oh, yeah, yeah, she really won. She got cheated. She really won. She got cheated. She, she ain't conceding and she didn't concede. She didn't, you know... Uh, give the other guy, whatever his name was, didn't give him the fucking seat. She never, because she kept trying to say, no, no, we need to recount. We need to do this. I think something's messed up. You guys, you know, you cheated. It was fraud. It was fraud. Nobody ever said shit. All the people that supported her, nobody ever went to jail. The moment motherfuckers was like, any, even to this day, even to this day, if somebody says, I believe the 2020 election was a fraud, 
everybody's going to paint that person right there as an evil person that's against the United States of America. That's how they label people, just like they label motherfuckers conspiracy theorists. They label you to paint a picture of you being something. Now, are you an anti-vaxxer? Oh, if you're an anti-vaxxer, you're dangerous. You're an anti-vaxxer. I never said I was an anti-vaxxer. My kid got all his vaccines. I got all my vaccines. I just don't have any mRNA vaccines in me. I have no mRNA vaccines in me. I got all fucking oh, the old school vaccines. All old school vaccines I got in me. I don't have any mRNA. I'm not doing that shit. So you can't call me anti-vaccine if I'm full of fucking vaccines. I'm full of vaccines. God damn it. My kid is full of vaccines. We just don't have any mRNA. That's the difference. So I'm anti-mRNA. That's all I am. But they want to try to merge that shit together and act like mRNA is a new vaccine. It's not. It's technology. mRNA is technology. They're trying to create a new vaccine with a technological process. That technological process is called mRNA, modified RNA. RNA is the instructions that tell your body what to produce. It's the instructions. They said that RNA, mRNA, would only become an instruction and would never implant itself into your DNA. Guess what happened? They're finding mRNA in DNA now. They fucking said it. They said it. Man, don't even get me started on that fucking shit. Don't even get me started on that shit. You said the only recount that needs to be done is a damn recount on our tip. Hell yeah, exactly. 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 Watch the story of your enslavement. Search for the V. Yep, yep. I get high school every morning annoying. Yeah, don't do that, Tom. Don't do that. And U.S. incarcerated workers produce more than $2 billion per year in goods, more than $9 billion per year in services. Follow the money. And I'm going to tell you something, Tom, to wake up. This is why this shit could be a setup. I'm going to tell you why this shit could be a setup right now. All the illegal immigrants in this country that are only here because of a White House law, all of the illegal immigrants right here, right now, that are here because of a White House law in 2021, I'm going to tell you something. You motherfuckers are on a chopping block and you don't even realize it. Because what Time to Wake Up just said, incarcerated workers produce more than $2 billion per year in goods, more than $2 billion, $9 billion per year in services. If you are an illegal person in this country, you're living on a fucking thin piece of ice right now. All these prisons are probably built for you motherfuckers and y'all don't even realize it. You're trapped in this country right now. You're illegally here. You're thinking you're free and clear because the current White House is saying you're free and clear. The current White House is the ones who's building all these prisons because, like I said, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden both put more black people in prison in, in a collection of two motherfuckers ever in the history of this country. So if they're building all these fucking prisons, who do you think they're building them for? Somebody. Some, who do who are they building them for? You got to make this shit make sense. They're building them for somebody. So the day a new administration turn over and they say, we're going to repeal all these laws, all these laws. And guess what? Motherfuckers are trying to run like the like run like roaches with the lights come on, trying to get the fuck up out of this country. All these prisons going to fill up overnight. And guess what? Two billion produced in goods, nine billion in services. Prison industry. All these motherfuckers came here thinking it's going to eat and have fun and do this and do that. Guess what? They motherfuckers locked in here now. They locked in here now. And they can't get out. And all of a sudden, they're going to be like, oh, man, this is fucked up. We, we came over here thinking y'all was going to let us work over here and live over here and this over here. Nope. See, the new administration did it to y'all. The new administration did it to y'all. No, the Democrats did. They set y'all the fuck up. It's called a setup. It's a setup. It's like somebody allowing you to come into the store to steal. Come on in. Come on in. Steal that TV. Steal that one. Steal that one. Steal that. But on your way out, it's police waiting out there for your ass. You walk out there like, holy shit, there's police out here. But y'all let us in the front door to steal. Sorry, we have no control over the police out there, though. We say y'all can come in and commit the crime. But now you got to pay for the fucking crime you just did. It was your choice to do the crime. Look into private prisons, trash and building them everywhere. Why did it report to shareholders? Real shit, real shit. Jamaica said, yeah, I lost like six friends and four family members to blood clots and heart attacks after I told them don't do it. I'm emotionally dead at this point. Yeah, yeah. Does it guarantee immunity? Only for the manufacturers. Yeah, and I told my, like I said, I lost a lot of friends, a lot of friends on Facebook, everywhere in life. I lost a lot of friends because I was trying to help people the fuck out. I was like, dude, just use common sense, man. Look out for yourself. Look out for your family. Use common sense. Oh, man, you were an anti-vaxxer, man. You don't know shit. You ain't no motherfucking medical doctor. 
I'm healthy. I don't need to do this shit, man. I don't think I need to do this shit. They, somebody can't just tell you that you're unhealthy in your head. Tell you, you how many times, like, we know a fever. What is a fever? A fever is when your body is fighting something. That's what a fever is. Your body is fighting something. And so your, your fever goes up. Was a fever invented in 1990 and uh, 2019? No, a fever was not invented in 2019. A fever was not invented in 2020. A fever has always been around since humans started taking this fucking earth over. So how could you tell me because I have a fever, I only have the potential to have something that came out in 2019? Like I can something in 2018 wouldn't give me a fever. 17 wouldn't give me something in 1985 wouldn't give me a fever. Something from 1990 wouldn't give me a fucking fever. Something from 1909 wouldn't give me a fucking fever. No, it had to be something from 2019 giving me that fever. That's when you knew it was fuckery right there. People have had fevers our whole fucking eternity, our whole existence. So for people to sit up there and say, if you walk into this building and you have a fever, you have this. Like, how do you know that with no tests? You didn't test me for nothing. Well, you have a fever. Okay, cool. I have a fever. Motherfucker, fever's been out since humanity started. It just means your body's trying to fight something. It could be anything. I could be, you know, any bacteria, virus, whatever. No, this is what it is. There is nothing else it could be. It has to be that. You have a fever. That's how you knew it was bullshit right there. And they got people to bite on that shit. They got people to bite on that shit. Because I told motherfuckers, unless you can test for something, you can't tell me what gave me a fever. Because who had somebody had a fever in fucking 2015 that they had C19 in 2015? No. What did they have a fever from? You'd have to test. Somebody had a fever in 2000. Did they have a fever from C19? No. You had to test because it's 2000. C19 wasn't out yet. If you had a fever in 1980, was it from C19? No. You had to test. Because C-19 wasn't out yet. So why the fuck is it now that I'm walking into a building and I got a fever, you automatically know what the fuck it is. It's bullshit is what it is. Like I said, man, we try to speak common sense to these motherfuckers. We try to. We try to. We got a lot of sick motherfuckers out there now. A lot of people die because of this shit. A lot of people don't want to admit they were wrong about it. A lot of shit went down. A lot of shit went down. And all it took was common sense. That's it. Common sense. You're not going to look me in the fucking face and tell me, well, since you got a fever, this is what you got. No, what I don't got is some bullshit in my head. That's what I don't got. You can't just look at a motherfucker and say, oh, shit, your fever is like 99.5, 190, 100. You got half the time these motherfuckers walking through the goddamn heat. Your skin was hot. Your skin was fucking hot. Oh, because your skin is hot. That means you got something. You got to come back to where you got to go get a test. You got to go get all this shit done to yourself. Man, fuck that. Fuck that. Look at that. People in India were ready for a vaccine. The government cover costs for people also, but people were willing for vaccine as many people were dying. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something about India, dude. I'm going to tell you something about India, what a lot of people didn't know about India. India is one of the, the healthiest, one of the healthiest countries in the world. You know why? And why do you think all doctors come from India? A lot of doctors come from India. Because they're always dealing with infections all the time. India has a lot of rivers that create infections. They have a lot of uh, parasites, bugs. They have a lot of shit going on in India that creates infections and bacteria and viruses and stuff like that. But there are more people in India than in most countries because once people's bodies generate an antibody, it generates you know a willingness to fight something. It's hard to go to India and give somebody something because they've already had every fucking thing. Their body's got tons of goddamn antibodies floating through it. So that's why you don't see a lot of deaths in India, but you see a lot of deaths in the healthiest country in the world, America. You get a lot of deaths over here, but not a lot in India. India's the, what, the dirtiest country in the world. It's not the dirtiest. It's actually the healthiest because the bodies have learned how to fight off infections. It's learned how to fight all the shit in the environment. You can't get motherfuckers sick over there. They live through every fucking thing. Their body is ready for that shit. Their body is on alert. Their whole immune system is set like a motherfucker. So if you got people with immune systems that's set, what do you do? You try to destroy it. How do you destroy it? You give it a new instruction code, mRNA. You give it new instructions. So when you give it new instructions, you just change their immunity around. They are no longer immune. They're compromised now. Immunity system is compromised. You just change it all. 
That's just health. That's just health right there. Yeah, India is great. India is where Uber customer services live. Yeah, because India's got all the healthy fucking people there. They motherfuckers ain't dying. Shit, Americans are dying. Why don't you? And there, one thing is a lot of them over there. So therefore, the cost of living is a lot less because you got more services, more everything over there. Just like in China. A lot of things in China is pretty much cheaper. Pretty much cheaper. Except fucking Jeeps. I heard Jeeps over there have like $150,000 for a damn Jeep because they got to import them. <laughs> I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Chinese people over here, when I'm driving Chinese people in my Jeep, they go, wow, this is not, this is not. But they don't say this is nice. This is nice. They go, Ishi Wan, Ishi Wan. No, I don't know how to fucking say Ishi. I'm going to have you motherfuckers walk going, Ishi Wan, Ishi Wan. Motherfuckers say, what the fuck is Ishi Wan? It's like, I don't know. He said that shit on the live stream. I just made that shit up. I have no idea how to say it's nice in fucking Chinese. I'm not even going to make that lie up. You motherfuckers walk around, Ishi Wan, Ishi Wan. <laughs> Motherfucker Chinese people look at you like, you say something about my grandma, motherfucker. <laughs> Man, man, all for kicks. Hey, I'll be on that shit. I'll be on that shit. That's why I say a lot of people, even on YouTube, on Facebook, man, motherfuckers did not like me. They did not like me on Facebook. They hated my motherfucking ass. Shit, I went from, I went from like 1,600, now no, I had like 1,400, 1,400 motherfuckers on my Facebook channel, all the way down to about 600. I had to get rid of so many fucking people, so many fucking people. Because they could not, these motherfuckers are haters on a daily basis because they can't deal with my mouth. Because I tell motherfuckers, yeah, exactly, Jeff, the inventor of mRNA, yeah, Robert, Dr. Robert, said it wouldn't be effective for treatment and stated so much. And I'm going to tell you something else about that. All these motherfuckers that was on uh, HCQ, HCQ was given the Nobel Prize. It was given the Nobel Prize for treatment in humans. It was given the Nobel Prize for treatment in humans. How much HCQ given the the Nobel Prize for treatment in humans, but then they let the media get a hold of HCQ and says, oh, we use that for horses. We use penicillin for horses. We use penicillin for dogs. Every piece of medicine you have for a human can also be used for another member of the animal kingdom. We use antiseptics in humans that we use in dogs. We use fucking amoxicillins in humans. We use that shit in dogs. We use painkillers in humans. We use that shit in dogs. So you can't tell me just because something from a dog, it won't be good for me. If it'll heal a dog's skin, it'll probably heal my skin too. So give me the same shit. And all these motherfuckers went, oh, it's a horse strength. Like, it's this, is that. Go look it up. Go look up HEQ. Like I said, exactly. Many drugs are using animals. There's a lot of people that will buy the veterinarian version of something. They will buy the veterinarian version of something because it's less expensive than by the exact same brand name of the human equivalent. Made at the same fucking factory, the same drug plant. Only thing that they put it for humans on this bottle, they put it for cats on this fucking bottle. Same exact shit. Two different bottles. So they know people are going to use this shit for, you know, $180 a bottle, but you can get it for cats at $45 a bottle. Same exact shit. Yes, the doses is the difference. That's it. So if you got to take two of the human pills, you probably got to take six of the cat pills. Fuck it. At $45 a bottle compared to $180 a bottle? Give me the cat pills, motherfucker. Fuck that. It's the same shit. Yeah, the physician treats, but nature heals. And that's where the money is, man. The money is in treatment. The money is in treatment, not the cure. The money is in treatment. If you cure every fucking body, what are you going to do? I mean, just think, everybody who didn't get cured with this shot, everybody that get, didn't get cured, how much money did they spend on treatment for the the after effects of what happened after they got it. People had medical bills up the ass after these shots. Up the ass. So you sitting there saying the, the cure, the cure end up making it more expensive for all of these fucking people because it was gene therapy the whole fucking time. Gene therapy is not a cure for anything. Gene therapy cannot kill anything. A virus a virus cannot be killed. Anybody in with their right mind will tell you a virus cannot be killed. You have to develop immunity to a virus, which means you will get the virus, but you're immune to it because you've developed immunity to it. So somebody sick with the virus can sneeze on you, but you've already developed immunity to it. There is no cure for a fucking virus. You have to develop immunity. So what they doing, they messing with fucking gene therapy. 
There is no such a thing as once you get a shot, you're cured. There is no cure for a virus. Never has been, never will be. Any motherfucking idiot out there will know that. You tell, name one fucking scientist, one visit, one anybody who ever said, well, there's a cure for that virus. If there's a cure for it, then that virus will never, ever exist on this fucking planet then. Because if you eliminated that virus, you've killed that virus. There is no way to kill a virus. The most you can do is develop an immunity to it. That's it. You can develop an immunity to it and hope when you get infected, you get a mild symptom or no symptoms at all because you've developed an immunity and your immune system is strong enough to fight that shit. That's why we have an immune system. We don't have a cure system. No human fucking body has a cure system. No, no animal has a cure system. You never hear that shit in any scientific book. You have a cure system in your body. No, you have an immunity system. And what is immunity? It means when something approaches you, your body has the, the courage to fight it back. That's it. It can't kill that virus. It could just make the virus not affect you. The virus still exists. All viruses have a lifetime. A virus can only live for so long. That's it. It can only live for so long. The virus is going to die on its own. You didn't kill the virus. The virus just never infected you in the time that it was still alive. That's all. If the virus can only live for two days, cool. You, your body will fight it for two days. It'll eventually phase away. And your body immune system was so strong, you never got sick. It fought it for two fucking days. Virus died off. Don't affect you. You move on. Man, Dante, man, I'm, shh, dude, I, I, I'm one of those people that I love to, to read. I really love to read. I love to fucking debate. I love to talk to people. I love when people teach me shit, teach me shit. I love that kind of shit, man. And we are the, the sickest nation. I think we're the most unhealthiest nation, the most unhealthiest nation. We're full of sugar, salt, sickness, diseases, alcohol. We're one of the sickest nations out there, man. And like I said, people out here don't understand what health is. I know people who weigh more but are healthier than people who don't weigh shit at all. I know people who don't weigh shit, 110 pounds, 150 pounds, sick as a motherfucker. Somebody weighed 250, healthy as a motherfucker. <laughs> it's like it's all about health. And we are a very unhealthy fuck because we have an imbalance in health. We don't understand health. And not just like mental health, physical health. And now we sit up trying to educate motherfuckers on the basics of what we're talking about when we have a discussion sometimes. And we're looked at as sideways being fucking funny. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm going to tell you something about me. If you look at my transcripts when I was a kid, shit, I always made A's in fucking biology. I love this shit. Look at college, shit. I made A's in bi anything that was biological. I made A's in chemistry. I didn't do too well. I didn't like chemistry that much. But anything that dealt with the biology in a human body, oh, I dealt with that shit. I dealt with that because I have a fucking body. So I'm interested in it. Like, what can help me? Biology. Chemistry, not so much. I'm not trying to mix no fucking dope up and give nobody nothing. But as long as you keep your body healthy, you don't need nothing. You don't need nothing. Yeah, my uncle was real thin and died of a heart attack. Yeah, Silver Fox, man, that's what it is. Just because somebody's skinny as hell don't make them healthy. And people think, oh, if you're overweight, you're unhealthy. Not really. Not really. They could, that could be the healthiest motherfucker you know. Saying So until you test somebody to know whether or not they got ailments or this or that, you have no idea. I mean, look at the size of a fucking elephant. Look at the size of an elephant. Very fucking healthy. Elephants are very healthy, and they're heavy as a motherfucker. Look at the size of whales. Very healthy. Big as a motherfucker. Live longer than anybody. Then you go get one of these skinny-ass fucking cats out of the alleyway. Guess what? That motherfucking cat is unhealthy as shit. It needs a medical fucking veterinary care. It's not even close to the weight of an elephant. Not even close. But then sometimes you see a cat that never get out the fucking window. It's big as a motherfucker. That might be an unhealthy cat. <laughs> Ain't no cataracts, that is. That's right, Joseph. Vitamin D, vitamin A, C, 3, omega-3s, magnesium, potassium, selenium, zinc, are a must. Our soils are deficient of nutrients and minerals loaded with heavy metals. Yeah, that's why I tell motherfuckers. And don't you know, during the pandemic, the first thing they did was they stopped selling seeds. These motherfuckers took all the seeds out of the stores so couldn't nobody grow shit. <laughs> I was like, that's some phony shit right there. Everybody was like, well, I'm just going to go plant some food. I'm going to go to Home Depot. You got geraniums, rose bushes and shit, palm tree. Like, wait, where are all the squashes and all the food and all the seeds? They eliminated it. They took all that shit out. Now, the seeds that you see in stores now, I don't trust those motherfuckers. I don't even know what's in them. 
because they took all the seeds away and all of a sudden they brought all the seeds back. I'm like, okay, so what was that all about? Controlling the food supply? You fucking with the food supply? Because you took all the food away, all the you took all the seeds away, saying it's, it's illegal to plant seeds, illegal. Because they was giving Duke motherfuckers tickets during the pandemic, giving them tickets, citations for being outside gardening. They said, you have to be indoors. It was people in their yards doing gardening. One dude was doing yoga in his yard. They was going to take him to jail doing yoga in his fucking yard. There was some weird shit going on. We lived at a weird fucking time. Weird time. What time was I hadn't had a single vax since I was 16 years old. I can I can count on both hands how many times I've been sick the last 25 years just saying, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I get a cold once a year, sometimes twice, but it don't last that long because my immune system is too strong for it. It might last two days, three days. That's it. I ain't never locked up for two fucking weeks like, oh, my God, I'm fucking sick as shit. Even when I do get a cold, I'm still busy. I'm in the garage working on shit. I'm like, well, I'm sick. I'm not going to go get nobody else sick. Let me weld some shit. Perfect time for me to weld. I'm fucking sick. Let's weld some shit. So I start working on projects. That's what I do. Yeah, those engineers, see, that's why I won't fuck with them, Silver Fox. I won't. I won't. And I'm a motherfucker. I love the plant shit. Plant growth and development. I love plant growth and development. I would love to have a garden on the side of my house where it's all shaded and everything. But with the new seeds they got out, I have no idea what's in that shit. None. You fuck around and plant some shit and be like, dude, there's some weird ass chemicals in this food. It's not turning the fucking litmus paper the same color as it should. This litmus paper is this color. The new seeds, the litmus paper is this color. What the fuck is in these seeds, man? Like, man. Oh, Florida, yeah. He said, our, our seeds didn't disappear. I love the state we was lit. Yeah. A lot of a lot of states out there were like, we're going to keep it 100, and we ain't going to play this fucking game. We see what the fuck is going on. It's not making sense to nobody, including the people in power. And what happened? They was all trying to get all these people who wouldn't play the game. They were trying to get all these people out of power. They was trying to get them all out of power. And now, all the people that were trying to get out of power are leading in presidential polls everywhere because the people of this fucking country realize we got fucking duped. We're not stupid. We got duped. And now you motherfuckers telling me who the actual legal counsel is for these rideshare fucking companies. Oh, I'm knowing we getting duped. They're using every fucking loophole they can use to rip off drivers, contractors. They're doing it. And that's why you see a lot of these motherfucking gig channels out here scared. Oh, we can't fight them. There, there's nothing we could do with them. We, we can't fight them. They're too massive. They're too major. They're linked in with the White House. They're, man, we can't fuck with them. Man, we America, dog. We America. We're known, known for the average man being fucking heroes in this motherfucker. Who do you think is winning all these wars all over the world? Politicians? No. Regular fucking people who put on a fucking uniform. Regular people who say, I'm not doing this shit no more. And so we are the regular people. When I tell motherfuckers we the 300, that's who we are. We are the fucking new army now. We don't need guns. We got brains. Just like people think, oh, the new wars are going to be fought biologically. There's not going to be any weapons fired. Everything's going to be biologically. They're right. And that's why our common sense was winning the war during this whole fucking pandemic. It was winning the fucking war. So now we still got our brains. A lot of motherfuckers is out of their minds. We still got our brains. So we can make decisions. We can come up with plans and plots. We can figure shit out. We cannot let them try to make us think, oh, you guys are a conspiracy theorists. You're this, you're that. No, everything we say could be fucking proven. A conspiracy means you're just putting things together. A conspiracy is when somebody's trying to do something. A theory is something that can't be proven. Once you've proven a theory, it becomes a fact. It's no longer a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy fact. Man. Thank you, Big Horn Kev. I appreciate that, brother. Just haven't seen a super chat in a minute. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother. Hey, man, thank you, man. Hey, I won't be driving all week. Trust me. This little money is helping me out, man. But I still want to stay on line with all our night drivers, man. We're out here by ourselves. We out here by ourselves. What's Seth say? I see too many roster gig people boasting about how they cherry pick their 23, 20 mile trips. <laughs> <laughs> $23 for 20 miles. Yeah, I did that shit all by myself. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Uber donkey. You know. <laughs> man. And that's the thing, man. A lot of us drivers, you know, we're out here at night by ourselves. We're one of the only industries out here 
who don't have nobody looking out for our back. We don't have a community to fucking, you know, be together with. Every other, and we're in our own cars, driving in different areas, different states, doing different things. We're not independent of, we're independent of everybody. We're not as cohesive. So when we finally get a channel that has a more cohesiveness, we're a bunch of fucking intelligent people, man. Bunch of intelligent people. I learn shit all the fucking time just fucking around on this channel. I learn so much. Yeah, the term conspiracy theory is remarkably adept at turning off all critical thinking like a light switch in a large portion of people I have personally met. People are programmed to shut down. Oh, yeah. Oh, next time, next ride share uh, garage I got. I mean, the next ride share channel, uh, YouTube I got. I got a shirt I wear. It's got conspiracy theorists on it. Big ass. I fucking made that shit. I wear that shit every fucking wear. Because I wear that like a badge. Because people know, when you call somebody a conspiracy theorist, there's been a level of thought occurred. Because most people that don't think, oh, well, they told me to. Okay. They told me to. Okay. Me, you tell me, someone say, well, why? What's the point of it? Help me understand. Like, I want to comprehend it. That's why when I make my videos, I go through my whole line of logic. I go through all the emotions of why I'm doing what I'm doing, whether I'm happy, mad, sad. Why am I doing it? What am I looking for is, is the conclusion. Conspiracy theorists. We go from fucking front to back. We go through all of that shit, all of that shit. And that's why when I wear my conspiracy theorist shirt around, motherfuckers look at me, they know. I'm a thinker. I'm not just somebody going to just blindly follow what the fuck you say for no random reason. You can't use a title. You need to use logic. If you're going to have me do something, use logic. And that's why I don't fit in with the gig community as far as uh, gig tubers go. I don't fit in because I've never been somebody who just followed a narrative. You can't tell me, well, I have more subs than you. Therefore, you should do what I say. Motherfucker, I don't know you. I was born in 1973, motherfucker. I have no idea who you are. I just met you. Could give a fuck less on how many subs you got. I don't know you like that. I've always been a critical person. And if you show me that you're smart enough and you're intelligent enough and you think enough and you're critical enough, and if you got enough supporting evidence on what you're doing and why you're doing it, I'll follow you. Oh, gig, and we've been in this for a minute, man. We've been in this for a minute. Yes, yeah, nah, I started at seven. And so I tell people, you know what? If, if you can prove to me that you're worthy of my followership i'll follow you it's a lot of drivers on this channel a lot of drivers in the chat i'll follow you motherfuckers i see the comments i follow that shit i try that shit when i'm out there i listen y'all teach me more shit every day and i hope i'm helping just by us being together and talking about shit and chatting on shit we're opening up everybody's minds to a reality that's out there that a lot of channels won't even touch on. We are people. We ain't just a bunch of fucking drivers. We have these conversations with people in our cars, in parking lots, online, everywhere else. We have these conversations all the time. So a lot of people are scared to have these conversations because they're scared of how they're going to look to somebody else. I tell people, I don't give a fuck how you look at me. Just know what you're looking at. You can look at me any fucking way you want to. You will know what you're looking at. When motherfuckers see me come around, they're like, man, that's like the motherfucking Suge Knight of Ride Share. Fuck that dude. <laughs> Nicole, what's good? What's good? See, I'm with Steven right now at SNA. What's SNA, gig? And what's SNA? Oh, SNA. Okay, I see what you mean. Y'all tell motherfuckers, man, shit. We, we like, you know, the fucking Suge Knights of Ride Share. We walk in a building. These motherfuckers all like, yeah, we gonna, it's time for us to go. It's time for us to go, motherfucker. Suge just walked in. It's time for us to roll out. We're going we gonna, we gonna to take off. <laughs> Be like motherfucker SpongeBob. All right, I'm going to head on out. <laughs> like that little SpongeBob cartoon. All right, I think I'm going to head on out. <laughs> Man. Ryan said, you sub me and I don't even make content. Ryan, you don't make content right now. Everything's going to happen one day. One day you will post a fucking video and I will get a notification. Trust me. If you sub to my channel, shit. I'm sub to your ass. I want to see the day you make some content because I want to know what's on your fucking mind. I go through everybody's content just randomly. I go through things and look at people's stuff and this and that. I'm like, oh, this is cool right here. Because one day you got to start one day. It might be something you just want to put out there. Somebody might grab your content, throw that shit on motherfucking Facebook. You come back one day, you're like, holy shit, I got 436,000 views on this shit. What the hell? <laughs> You'd be like, damn, what happened? All it takes is one. And then you start linking with fucking brains all around her just like yours. And I'm one of those people that say, hey, you know what? 
I'm I'm one of those guys that say if I if it's something I like and I think if it's something that I can listen to, I might share that shit with other people because it's just that important. It's that important. And that person might take it. In, so it'll be your very first video, Ron. You never know your very first fucking video. It might be something like that. Next thing you know, you're like, dude, I got 400,000 fucking views and I only have one video on my fucking channel. It was like six minutes. Motherfucker got like 400,000 fucking views. <laughs> All it takes is for the algorithm to catch it, for people to be interested in it, for everybody to see it. And next thing you know, 400,000 fucking views and you like, dude, in like one day I got 10,000 subs. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> shit happens man you never know you never know yeah joseph amazing information i hear talking to drivers I always wear grunt style shirts that always promotes a conversation yeah you got to man you got to they told us this shook night a rush here <laughs> it's real shit and that's what i do you know what if you create conversation with a with a passenger in your car that's a moment in life a moment in time that they will always remember like i said the people i did tonight my private ride for tonight was a couple I picked up in my BMW. Never had them on my Jeep. Picked them up in my BMW twice. The first time I picked them up, the dude was telling me, hey, man, you going to love this dude, Don Tolliver, because I was listening to motherfucking Nipsey or something in the car. Oh, you going to love this dude, Don Tolliver. So I went, started playing a couple of Don Tolliver songs. I was like, dude, this is pretty good. I like this shit. I like this. So I say to my list, been playing Don Tolliver ever since. Been playing them ever since. Down on Mill Avenue one night, cruising, cruising, get in the car, I pull up to the curb. These motherfuckers jump in the car and shit. I'm bumping some Don Tolliver. Motherfuckers like, oh, man, some Don Tolliver. I like this shit. I'm like, yeah, man, that Don Tolliver is sick, man. I love this shit. Say, man, this dude hooked me up on Don Tolliver a long time ago, man. He hooked me up on that shit. I love this shit. And the dude was like, I'm the one who hooked you up on that. I was like, these funny motherfuckers. I turned around. I was like, whatever, motherfucker. I was like, oh, shit, it was you. Holy shit, man. It was Khalil. Him and his girl got in my car and on Mill Avenue. I didn't even know. I was playing Don Tolliver when they got in. If they ever get on his channel, this is a story he can verify. He could say, yeah, that motherfucker's right. They got in the car. And he was. I didn't look back. I just saw I was picking up somebody. It was Anna. Okay, Anna. Anna gets in. He gets in. He said, oh, man, there's a bunch of some Don Tolliver, too. I was like, yeah, this is Don Tolliver, man. This motherfucker, I like this shit, man. This dude, he hooked me up. On he said, I'm the one who hooked you up on that shit. I was like, yeah, whatever, man, whatever. Turn around. Oh, shit, it was you. You the one who told me about Don. And we started laughing like a motherfucker. We was cracking the fuck up and everything. This is FNL typo. And we started laughing like a motherfucker, cracking up, cracking up. And that was the second time I picked them up. And so I gave him one of my cards that time. I said, hey, man, here's one of my cards. Y'all motherfuckers hit me up anytime y'all need to ride, man. I say, man, I listen to Don Tolliver all the time. He was like, I know, because for you to ride up and pick me up, bumping some motherfucking Don Tolliver, I know you bump Don Tolliver a lot. I had no idea it was the same dude. Yeah, exactly. Don Tolliver's a shit, man. So then, so tonight or yesterday, the day before, I'm sitting there, phone pops up, message. I'm like, oh, shit. And I was like, hey, Jeff, this is So she sent me a picture of the card. I'm like, it's my card. And she said, hey, Jeff, you picked us up one night. You gave us this card. You told us to call you if you ever. I'm like, hey, what's good? She says, hey, tomorrow's Khalil's birthday. I'm like, all right, bet, bet. So she's like, she's like, can you do us a favor? Because you was talking about your Jeep. Can you pick us up in that Jeep? I was like, perfect, because the Beamer's down anyway. <laughs> I was going to have to pick you up in that regardless. And they asked for the Jeep. So I went and picked them up tonight, got them downtown. And the whole time we was bumping Dom Tyler for some new shit. Who I can't remember what that song was. Let me see. It was a uh, hey, if you like Don Tolliver, I'm gonna tell you what song to listen to. I'm gonna tell you what song to listen to on Don Tolliver. Uh damn it, damn it. Where was it at? Because I was playing it. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Worth it. That's the name of the song. Worth it. This song is called Worth It by Don Tolliver. Man, that song is psh, that's the business right there. That shit hits in the Jeep, man. I was like, damn. I'm this motherfucker hitting and we was bumping that shit rolling like a motherfucker so yeah if y'all ever get out there like i said i chop it up with drivers with riders all the time because i keep it real i don't change my music unless i really feel like it's gonna offend somebody but for the most part you'd have to be like 90 fucking years old to not you know to be offended sometimes when i'm picking up people from a country concert like garth brooks or some shit i'll have garth book playing when they get in so I'm like, come on in, man. Oh, shit, Shania Twain, motherfucker, Garth Brooks. Hell yeah, we in there fucking jamming and shit. But most times, I'm rolling at what I like. So if I'm just picking up a motherfucking Walmart, they gonna just listen to what I'm listening to. It's cool. They don't give a shit. It's like, dude, what you listen to? I don't know. Whatever's fucking playing. Who knows? Some goddamn, you know, 
Barry Hutton or whatever his name is and shit, cruising to that shit. But for the most part, like I said, this is what we do in ride share. This is what we do, which is why I believe we deserve the amount of money we deserve. We create the energy for when people get in. We create that energy, man. A lot of motherfucking ride share channels don't like my energy. They really don't. They'll tell you, oh, I ain't got no problem with his energy. That thing playing. Yeah, it's like, oh, I don't like that. It's not that we don't like your energy or nothing. It's cool. Your energy is cool. It's just your topics. Motherfucker, my topics are average, everyday topics that everybody could talk about. What was they? I told him he can get Uber Eats. Uh oh, uh oh, what happened? What happened? Oh, New York Time Labs. Some shit happened. Also, you had a dude that would probably want to go get some food. <laughs> yeah. No. Get smart. So, Jeff, I went out to get prepared for drive lip and noticed my account surge bonus was set to low ball. When I seen $1.75, I checked another account, which was mid ball, $4.50, downtown, Dallas, downtown. Wait a minute. Your so you got two accounts and your account was lowballed. It showed you a dollar seventy five when you really had four fifty. That should happen to me, King James, and Juan Vargas one time at the same restaurant. We were all sitting at Fate over in Tempe. It was me, King James. We all opened our phones at the same time. We all had different surges. King James had the highest surge out of everybody. Then was mine. Juan's had the lowest, and he drives a newer car, like a twenty twenty three. Camry, I got the 19 BMW, and Juan's got the S Plaid. He's got, or the just the S, not the Plaid, but the Model S. And he drives like Uber Black, Uber Black, all that shit, like the, all the high tiers. He had the smallest surge out of all of us, and we all sit at the same fucking table. <laughs> we was like, these fucking people, man. These motherfuckers, man. Then at 201, the surge on the low ball went 475, and the mid ball was 1050. Man, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, Joe said, I admit, I profile routers using music. I suspect they like what they like before they get in the car. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, some, some people throw me a loop. Some people throw me a loop. Sometimes I'll be picking up these like these little girls, fucking ASU and shit, and I'll be just bumping whatever I got. I'll be playing some motherfucking 50 Cent, some old shit just cruising, whatever. And they be like, hey, can you play Sexy Red? Uh, Whatever they got. Booty to the coochie, whatever the fuck song they be got. And pink and brown, I don't know. They be playing some weird shit. And I, I'm like, I don't know who Sexy Red is. So I was like, I'll play it. I don't care. That woke me the fuck up. Because I was like, I'm like, Sexy Red, never played it before. And they said, do the pink and the brown or whatever the name of the song is. I don't know because I don't listen to Sexy Red. So I played the shit. Man, the moment I hit that motherfucker, it was like, lick my booty down from the pink to the brown. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? I'm like, hold the fucker. And these are three white girls in the car. They're like, lick my booty down to the pink and the brown. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, hold up for a second. Y'all motherfuckers scaring me and I'm the driver in this bitch. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm about to fucking one star you motherfuckers. I was like, what the hell's going on in this car? And they had the fucking, they were blasting that shit. I was laughing so hard. I had never heard no shit like that. Y'all got to understand, man. I've been in the car playing Michael Jackson. I play motherfucking Earth, Wind, and Fire sometimes. Man, I be playing some cool-ass shit. This motherfucker said sexy red from the pink to the brown, some shit. Boy, that my car was lit like a motherfucker. As soon as they got the fuck out, I had to clear my history. <laughs> I was like, that shit is never playing in my car again. I've had to go wash my car after that fucking song. I fucking fuck park. I put that shit in park and hose that motherfucker down. I was like, this nasty-ass fucking song. <laughs> it's like you can't profile this. I mean, these girls come out, blonde hair, little, you know, all of them blondes, you know, brunettes and shit, black hair. They got a little fucking they ASU students, they got little clothes on and shit. They finna go party and everything. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, play some sexy red. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. We hitting this shit sexy red, cool, cool. All right, play this. I'm like, oh, what's that? It's the pink and the brown. I'm like, all right, let's play the pink and the brown. I'm thinking, you know what? Whatever, it, it could be anything for all I fucking know. These motherfuckers, I'm going to lick my booty from the pink to the brown and all that. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, you nasty motherfuckers, get out of my car. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I've never heard of sex. Me neither. I know, now, now that I've played it in my car, I see sexy red shit in my YouTube list all the time. I'll be like, man, oh, yeah, man. I, I had to play gospel music after that, Tony. I had to. I started playing Amazing Grace like a motherfucker. I'll I'll start singing hymns and all. Oh, amazing! I started playing the piano and every fucking thing. Fuck that shit! You nasty motherfuckers, get out of my car. <laughs> Sexy Red is another Sukiyana. See, I haven't even heard of Sukiyana either. 
But Sexy Red, now she pops up in all my shit all the time. And then a new girl pops up. I had no idea who this fucking was. Uh, what's her name? I don't know. Spice Ice. Some shit like that. Ice Spice, maybe? No. Because it's like Ice Spice Girls? No, Ice Spice or something like that. But it's a song called uh, Munch and Munch. Some weird shit like that. Munch and Munch or something. I don't know. But it's... It's, it's a weird song. It's got a weird beat, all kind of weird. So the girl said, played Munch and Munch or whatever the fuck. So I'm playing this. It's going like, you a Munch, you a Munch. Singers. I was like, what the fuck is going on with these kids singing? It's the same shit over and over. I'm like dying laughing, man. I'm dying laughing. I'm like, yeah, you motherfuckers is weird. Y'all weird. So I'll be just cruising direct. And it's hard for me to know what people are going to listen to now because I'm still stuck in in good music phase, like Don Tyler, you know, Nipsey Hussle, motherfucking, I listen to Buddy, my man Buddy, every once in a while, I jam him for a while, I listen to a lot of good music, a lot of Nas, AZ, I still listen to AZ, AZ got a track out called Goat, man, it's short as a month, I wish Goat was longer, Goat is, man, that's my hit right there, I love Goat, I listen to a lot of motherfucking Dre, Dr. Dre, Eminem, man, I listen, these motherfuckers be like, listen to Munch, listen to, you know, Eminem, I'm like, what the fuck am I listening? Yeah, Pac, man, I listen to all DMX and Pac all the time. I was just playing, uh, I'm slipping, I'm falling, I can't get up. You know, I'm slipping, I'm falling, I got to get up. I was just playing that shit the other night, man. That's, that shit hits in the Jeep. See, I've been driving a Jeep for a few days now, so I can get back to my music again. The BMW got a cool system. I ain't never going to fuck with it. But the Jeep, you can feel that shit, man. I got the Big Ten. I got like fucking four eight-inch subs in that. Now I got five eight-inch subs in there. Five eight-inch subs. One, two, three, yeah. So a couple of six and a halves, four six and a halves, two tweeters, and a big ass 10. When you play music in that fucking Jeep, you feel it. You feel it. So whatever you're doing, you in concert, man. And you play some motherfucking DMX, Hail Mary from Pac. I'm telling you, you feel like you riding around in motherfucking 1999. I'm like, I'm slipping, I'm falling. I got to get up. <laughs> well, Jose Jeff, you might be a better looking version of Dr. Dre, just saying. Oh, I listen to a lot of Dr. Dre, too. Motherfuckers be saying that shit. And it's funny you said that because I'm sitting in the car driving one day and this, these ladies got in and I was playing Eminem, Dr. Dre. Uh, It was some song they got. Man, this girl in the back to my son, you remind me of Dr. Dre. <laughs> I said, you only saying that because I'm playing the music. Says, no, no, you look like Dr. Dre. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm sorry if I offend you. I was like, no, nah, you cool. I said, that's just funny as a motherfucker. She said, that look like Dr. Dre. Boy, I was cracking up laughing. Wait, Bobby Darren. If you want to listen to some really good old school pruning music, check out Bobby Darren. Oh, yeah, Bobby Darren. Oh, hell yeah, man. That dude was a trooper, made albums pretty much in every single genre of pop music you can name. Oh, I know Bobby Darren. Yep, I've heard of him, man. Nickelback for those... <laughs> <laughs> fucking Kevin is stupid. This motherfucker said nickel back with those Canadian writers. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? It was some dude the other day got in the car and we were playing a, a song, a new song, like a newer song. And he said, oh, yeah, this is like an updated version of Nickelback. I fell out laughing. I was like, why do people always fuck with Nickelback, man? I cannot remember what song I was playing. He said, this is like an upgraded version of Nickelback. <laughs> Y'all be fuck with Nickelback all the time, man. That's just funny as a motherfucker. Leave Nickelback alone, man. They, they help bring in a new era. Nickelback, Green Day, all those motherfuckers, man. That was my old era. Police, I listen to a lot of Sting. Sting, Soul Cages, the police. Sting, Soul Cages, I listen to all of that. All of that. And so I've, I've been listening to Sting, Soul Cages since I bought the uh, CD back in the day. Soul Cages. So now it's on Spotify. So I just play Soul front to back all the way down. Love that shit, man. I play classical music in my 15 BMW for my comfort rise. You do not play no classical music. You better quit. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. Jamaica said I play classical music. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you who you could play. Jesse Cook. J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, then Cook. C-O-O-K. Play it. He's got a song called Havana. Play Havana for anybody. Trust me. You play Havana. In the car, oh, you getting it, man. You getting it. Say, we need a parody song for ride share of ambitions of a rider. Like, I won't deny it. I'm an Uber driver. <laughs> you want to fuck with me? <laughs> for real. Let's do that shit. Let's do that shit. 
<laughs> I like that. Ambitious of a ride, a ride, a shit. Ambitious of a no tipping ride, a ride, a motherfucking ass shit. <laughs> These motherfuckers, you want to get a free ride, you motherfucking cheapskate. Change your fucking stops and shit. Edit ride, you raggedy motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, Boston Nova. Mm -mm. Mm. Oh, jazz. I like jazz. I used to have a jazz station I played all the time. I don't remember what it used to be, but I think it was like uh, like contemporary jazz or new jazz or something like that. But it had all fucking hits on that shit. I play a lot of Masego. Masego is about as close to jazz as I get to now, but I love Masego. That dude, he goes, boy. He's got all good ass fucking shit. I don't say many bands suck, but Nickelback is an, is an exception. <laughs> Leave Nickelback alone. <laughs> this motherfucker said, I don't say many bands suck, but Nickelback is an exception. <laughs> oh, man. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Leave Nickelback alone, man. <laughs> they all right. They cool. It's just funny as a motherfucker. It's like, dude, you need to put that shit on that dude that says, uh, I don't always do this, but when I do, I drink those Ekkies or whatever the fuck he be drinking. The most, the world's most, dang, the world's, the world's most adventurous man. That thing. <laughs> I don't say many brands suck, <laughs> but when I do, Nickelback is an exception. <laughs> That's just funny as hell. Nickelback's rich though. They are rich. Yeah, Nickelback's rich, boy. Those motherfuckers. They, my 16 VW Golf. I play Christian rap for my ex rides. No, you don't. No, you don't. Who's that? Uh, Lecrae. Lecrae is a good Christian rapper. I tell you, if you listen to Lecrae, man, that dude, if you listen to Lecrae's Christian rap, Lecrae does not sound like he's doing Christian rap. Lecrae sounds like anything you'd hear, except it's like good music. It's like real adventurous, spiritually adventurous, mentally adventurous music. It's good. I like Lecrae. Lecrae's always been the shit. That motherfucker's always hit it, man. <laughs> that was my tip sign. It said, I don't always tip when I do tip my awesome move driver. But when I do, I tip my awesome move driver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lecrae. All oh, you heard about Lecrae. Lecrae is fire. That motherfucker is shit. I, used, I had a Lecrae CD. I had two Lecrae CDs. And I think one of them still stuck in my damn CD changer in my damn Escalade because the CD changer, he went, rear, rear. it keeps doing that shit every once in a while. My Lecrae CD is stuck in there. But yeah, that motherfucker, man, that shit is the. Whoo. Rice and Gray and Tyson James, best Christian rappers. I'm gonna have to hear that. I'm gonna have to hear that. Wait, is this still live? No, actually, it's not. You're watching a replay right now. Sorry. And we knew you was gonna come back. So I said, I'm gonna say this shit at this point in time, Nicole. <laughs> Will you go for real? No, not for real. We just fucking with you, Nicole. <laughs> no. -uh. Teacher Self said, I'll play the AI version of Spice Girls with Jeff's voiceover. Fuck no. <laughs> Do you want to be my lover? If you want to be my friend. <laughs> Motherfuckers like some fucking Muppets and shit. Sound like the Grover Muppet. If you want to be my lover. Do you want to be my friend? Who the fuck is this Grover? This motherfucking Spice Girls, goddammit. it. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, Wealthy did a, a parody of Lecrae and Andy Man Maneo coming in hot song and made it about his hot dog, hot bags for DoorDash. Check it out. I'm going to have to do that shit. Man, man, that's funny shit. Lord have mercy, man. Yeah, you got to give him a listen, man. Lecrae is all right. Lecrae, he's somebody who can be easy, easy. Uh-oh, that, that's it right there. Is that Wealthy's? Oh, okay, cool, cool. Hold on for a second. Let me see something. Let me see something. Bam. I learned how to pin stuff at the top, man. I'm smart. I learned how to pin. All right, so that's that thing up at the top right there. If people want to hear that shit, that's Wealthy's fucking track right there. So I'm going to put it up there even for myself so I can go back and hit it too. Man. Oh, yeah. September. Man. Back in September. Mm, 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 mm. Say, wait a minute. On USB early morning airport run, girls take pictures of the screen. Flash freaked me out. She said she was born in September. <laughs> That's crazy shit. Nicole, like, wait a minute, it's 2 30 in the morning. Nicole, you should be waking up starting to work pretty soon. You what you doing still awake? She's like, I just had to get up and go to the bathroom. I'm going back to bed. Fuck you, raggedy motherfucker. <laughs> you motherfuckers is too loud on my TV screen. I'm going back to bed. Shit. Man, y'all, man. Man, we just hit five hours. We're done. Five hours and three minutes, man. We do this shit all the time, man. All the time. This shit's crazy. This shit's crazy. 
but definitely though, man, definitely. Like I said, I appreciate you guys rocking me on Friday. I just wanted to give y'all a live stream on Friday night. Nobody ever looks out for the fucking drivers, man. They all just bought wealthy mixtape. I was purchaser number one. There it is. Purchaser number one. Oh, George Benson is good too. Yeah. But I just wanted to give us a, a live stream for night, man. Many of us, you know, we're out here driving in these streets at night. We feel like we out here by ourselves. Like, ain't nobody fucking with us. All Greg, no problem, brother. Don't, this is what we do it for, man. We stay community. And I know it's hard for motherfuckers to stay awake till 2, 3 in the morning, especially here driving in these streets. A lot of us be taking naps, getting out, stretching, yawning and shit. So just, just to chop it up with each other, you know what I'm saying? I don't mind dropping, you know, four or five hours on a live. I really don't mind. And I tell people I'm not driving right now anyways. So what better use of my time than to get down with the fucking drivers? A lot of drivers would probably be trying to get some sleep outside fucking, you know, throwing rocks and shit and stuff like fuck all that. I'll chop it up with the drivers. We got a lot of stuff to talk about all the time. And y'all know me. If I start dropping a live, I do not get them to use the bathroom. We sit down. My eyes, something in my, I will sit here for five, six motherfucking hours. We do this shit in one take, no breaks. That's these live mic drop, baby. One take, no breaks. That's going to be my next shirt. Mic drop, one take, no breaks. <laughs> <laughs> See, I need this shit. I get discouraged, man. I know Greg, man, be rugged out there, rugged out there. All right, Joseph, man, shit. This isn't live. This is Memorex. Hey, Joseph, we do that, man. You have a good night, brother. Have a good night, man. Like I said, I'm glad you guys, like I said, rock with us on that, Alex. No problem, man. Jamaican, you know it. Hey, when that BMW gets my head internal, Dr. Orlando, crank it up. There's a German rap. Hell yeah. <laughs> Jeff's bladder is going to explode one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that dude on Dave Chappelle. You remember on Dave Chappelle, they had Clayton Bixby, the uh the black white supremacist, and the dude's head blew up in the church. They said, Show us your face, Clayton. <laughs> that motherfucker said, You wanna see me? You wanna see me? And the dude was like, No, no, no. He says, You wanna see me? Take it off. <laughs> he took his fucking man, that motherfucker head blew up in the fucking church. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's funny as a motherfucker. Time to wake up. You ain't got no fucking sense, man. You ain't got no sense. Yeah, one break, one take, no breaks, purple drinks. Exactly. That's it. Purple drink. <laughs> that motherfucker Dave Chappelle shit. Purple drink. Man, but no, I just appreciate you guys rocking with me on these lives, man. Because like I said, with ride share drivers, we don't have a lot of people in our industry that's really honestly. I say that shit for real, and I mean that shit. I don't think nobody really looks out for us in the way that we look out for each other. We always trying to, you know, scrap shit together and get together. I don't mind using the channel as that, and a lot of different channels, especially drivers out there that that are doing live streams as they drive. You guys can check those live streams out because as they're driving and as they're working, you guys are keeping them up. They're keeping you up. It's how we do with each other, man. Hopefully, when I be back in a in a car next week, if I can get this shit booked back together, I'll try to do a live, you know, every once in a while late night. But I know it'll be hard as hell for me because I'll be out driving. But man, once again, I appreciate you guys. This has been the funnest five hours. We man, we went from motherfucking Uber donkey to fucking vaccines. <laughs> we, we be covering way too much ground on dumb shit. Way too much ground on dumb shit, man. Exactly. <laughs> man for real it's a late night it's a late night i'm telling you miss kim we on it all right ryan appreciate that bro i'm gonna check out the emails and everything i'm gonna run in here grab me something i can hear dogs at the door they can hear me now i think these motherfuckers know when i'm ending the live stream they start messing with the door but they, they might know english these motherfuckers are like hey man my border collie is that damn smart. he might say hey he says he's ending the live stream like what yeah i heard he but definitely man i'm gonna check y'all motherfuckers out tomorrow morning hopefully i give me some sleep in shit We'll get up and do this shit all over again tomorrow, man. If my part ain't in, I might have to do a midday, a Saturday midday live or something like that, man. You guys get all right. Time to wake up. Hey, love you too, brother, man. We out here trying to do it. We trying to do it with each other. If we gonna make this money. Let's make it. Let's not give up. Excuse me. Shit ain't over until the zeros on the fucking clock. Shit ain't over until the zeros on the clock. So keep fighting for every dime you can get. Get them profits. Stack your money. Get them business cards made up. And start looking at developing private rides. Like I said, Larry out in St. Louis, this motherfucker already got one client, his very first private client, thousand dollars a fucking month, taking the lady to work every day, five days a fucking week. I'm like, dude, you hit the fucking lick with that one. Shit. Hey, much love, Greg. Much love, brother. Man, like I said, I'll check you guys out tomorrow. Hopefully, I do another live stream. We'll see. We'll see. Kim, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're a good woman, Cammy. Absolutely. <laughs>